Chernobyl Nuclear Meltdown. 3 in 1. From Boom to Bust. Written by A.J. Kingston, narrated by A.I. Madison. Introduction. The Chernobyl nuclear disaster of 1986 was a catastrophic event that shook the world and forever changed the lives of those who lived in its wake. The aftermath of the explosion and the subsequent meltdown of the reactor had far-reaching consequences, both immediate and long-term, affecting the lives of millions of people in Ukraine and beyond. In this book bundle, Chernobyl Nuclear Meltdown 3-in-1, From Boom to Bust, we take a comprehensive look at the events leading up to, during, and after the disaster, as well as the impact it had on the lives of those affected. The first book, Before the Meltdown, Life and Industry in Pripyat, explores the history of the city before the disaster, delving into the daily lives of those who lived and worked there, as well as the technological advancements that led to the construction of the nuclear power plant. The second book, The Disaster Unfolds, Eyewitness Accounts of the Chernobyl Explosion, provides a gripping account of the events of April 26, 1986, through the eyes of those who were there, including plant workers, firefighters, and government officials. Finally, the third book, Aftermath and Recovery, Rebuilding a Life in the Shadow of Chernobyl, examines the long-term effects of the disaster, including the ongoing environmental and health concerns, as well as the resilience and hope of the survivors who continue to rebuild their lives in the shadow of the tragedy. This book bundle offers a comprehensive and insightful look at one of the most catastrophic events in human history and its ongoing impact on the world. Through the personal stories and experiences of those affected, we gain a deeper understanding of the complexities of nuclear energy and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. The Chernobyl disaster is one of the most catastrophic man-made disasters in human history. The explosion and subsequent fire that occurred on April 26, 1986, at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine, resulted in the release of an enormous amount of radioactive material into the surrounding environment. This caused widespread contamination, not just in the immediate vicinity of the plant, but also across the whole of Europe. The event had a profound impact on the lives of the people who lived in the region, as well as on the wider world. It led to significant changes in the way nuclear power was regulated and managed, and sparked debates about the safety and sustainability of nuclear energy. In this book bundle, Chernobyl Nuclear Meltdown 3-in-1, From Boom to Bust, we delve into the full story of the Chernobyl disaster, from the life and industry in the town of Pripyat before the meltdown to the aftermath and recovery efforts that followed. Together, these three books offer a comprehensive look at one of the most significant events of the 20th century. They provide a detailed and nuanced understanding of the Chernobyl disaster and its impact on the people who lived through it, as well as on the wider world. If you are interested in history, science, or human stories of resilience and recovery, then this book bundle is a must-read. The Rise of Pripyat A Story of Industry and Innovation Written by A.J. Kingston, narrated by A.I. Madison Chapter 1, Before the Meltdown, Life and Industry in Pripyat In the annals of human history, few events have had as significant an impact on the course of civilization as the development of cities. From the sprawling metropolises of the ancient world to the towering skyscrapers of modern day, cities have been the birthplace of art, culture, commerce, and politics. Yet, as the old adage goes, with great power comes great responsibility, and the development of cities has often come at a heavy cost to both the environment and the people who live in them. Such was the case with Pripyat, a model city built by the Soviet Union in the aftermath of World War II. The origins of Pripyat can be traced back to the post-war reconstruction efforts of the Soviet Union. In the aftermath of the devastating conflict, the Soviet Union found itself in need of a new model city that could serve as a beacon of hope and progress for its citizens. The task fell to architects and urban planners, who were charged with designing a city that would embody the ideals of socialism and modernity. The result was Pripyat a city that was to be a shining example of Soviet engineering and design. Located in northern Ukraine, Pripyat was designed as a model city that would serve as a blueprint 
for the future development of other cities throughout the Soviet Union. The city was designed to be a self-contained, self-sufficient community that would provide its citizens with all of their needs. The development of Pripyat was a massive undertaking that required the construction of a wide range of infrastructure and facilities. The city was to be home to over 50,000 people, and as such, it required a comprehensive transportation system, including a network of roads and highways, a bus terminal, and a train station. Additionally, the city needed a robust healthcare system, with hospitals and clinics scattered throughout the city. Perhaps most impressively, the city was to be home to a range of cultural and educational facilities, including a large central park, a stadium, a cinema, and several schools and universities. The central park was to be the jewel of the city, a sprawling green space that would provide residents with a place to relax and socialize. The stadium was to serve as a venue for sporting events, while the cinema was to provide residents with access to the latest films and cultural events. Despite the lofty goals of its designers, the construction of Pripyat was not without its challenges. The city was built on a marshy area, which made the construction of its infrastructure and buildings more difficult. Additionally, the harsh Ukrainian winters made construction work difficult, and many workers suffered from frostbite and other cold-related illnesses. Despite these challenges, the construction of Pripyat continued, and by the mid-1970s, the city was nearly complete. The city was a marvel of Soviet engineering and design, with wide boulevards, impressive architecture, and a bustling central square. It was a city that embodied the ideals of the Soviet Union, a place where progress, modernity, and socialism were all on display. Yet despite its many achievements, the story of Pripyat is ultimately a tragic one. In 1986, the city was forever changed when the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant experienced a catastrophic meltdown. The resulting explosion and release of radioactive materials rendered the city uninhabitable, and its residents were forced to abandon their homes and flee the area. Today, Pripyat stands as a haunting reminder of the dangers of nuclear power and the high cost of progress. The city, once a bustling metropolis, is now a ghost town, with abandoned buildings and empty streets serving as a silent testament to the hubris of human engineering. In many ways, the story of Pripyat is a cautionary tale about the limits of human ambition. When considering the development of Pripyat, it is impossible to ignore the role played by nuclear power. In the aftermath of World War II, the Soviet Union made a massive investment in nuclear energy, seeing it as a key component of their efforts to modernize the country's economy. Pripyat, in turn, became a hub of nuclear energy production, with the Chernobyl nuclear power plant serving as a cornerstone of the city's economy. The construction of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant was a massive undertaking, requiring the input of thousands of workers and the investment of billions of rubles. Despite the challenges of constructing a nuclear power plant in such a remote location, the Soviet Union was determined to prove their technical prowess and their commitment to nuclear power. The power plant was a marvel of Soviet engineering, with cutting-edge technologies and advanced safety systems designed to prevent accidents and ensure the safe operation of the plant. The plant's four reactors were capable of producing a combined output of over 4,000 megawatts, making it one of the largest nuclear power plants in the world. The success of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant had far-reaching effects on Pripyat's economy. The plant provided thousands of jobs for the city's residents, and its output of electricity powered much of the city's infrastructure and industrial output. Additionally, the plant's output of excess electricity was sold to other parts of the Soviet Union, providing a valuable source of revenue for the country. Beyond its economic impact, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant was also seen as a symbol of Soviet technological prowess and innovation. The plant was a testament to the country's commitment to scientific advancement and its willingness to invest in cutting-edge technologies. For many in the Soviet Union, the plant was a source of pride and a symbol of the country's strength. Despite its many successes, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant was not without its flaws. On April 26, 1986, the plant suffered a catastrophic meltdown, 
resulting in a massive release of radioactive materials into the environment. The disaster had a devastating impact on Pripyat and the surrounding areas, with thousands of people being exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. The disaster at Chernobyl was a wake-up call for the Soviet Union and the rest of the world. It highlighted the dangers of nuclear power and the need for more robust safety measures and regulations. In the aftermath of the disaster, the Soviet Union was forced to reassess its reliance on nuclear power and invest more heavily in alternative forms of energy. Today, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant stands as a haunting reminder of the high cost of progress and the dangers of unchecked technological advancement. While it played a significant role in Pripyat's economy and the broader Soviet Union, its legacy will forever be tarnished by the disaster that occurred within its walls. In many ways, the story of nuclear power in Pripyat is a cautionary tale about the need for careful planning and oversight when it comes to the development of new technologies. While nuclear power has the potential to provide a significant source of energy for the world, it also comes with significant risks that must be carefully managed. The lessons learned from Pripyat's experience with nuclear power are ones that must be taken to heart if we are to continue to develop new technologies in a safe and responsible manner. When one considers the history of cities, it is often the case that social, cultural, and economic dynamics are the driving forces behind their development and success. This was certainly the case with Pripyat, a Soviet model city built in the aftermath of World War II. Despite its ultimate fate, the city was a thriving hub of social, cultural, and economic activity, with a diverse range of industries and facilities that served its residents' needs. At the heart of Pripyat's social and cultural life was its central square, a bustling hub of activity that served as a focal point for the city's residents. Here, residents would gather to socialize, shop, and attend cultural events, including concerts and festivals. The square was also home to several impressive architectural landmarks, including the Palace of Culture, a grand building that served as a venue for concerts, plays, and other cultural events. Pripyat's social and cultural life was further enriched by its wide range of educational and recreational facilities. The city was home to several schools and universities, including a technical university that specialized in nuclear engineering. Additionally, the city was home to several sports facilities, including a large stadium and several athletic fields. The city also boasted a cinema and several parks, providing residents with ample opportunities for leisure and entertainment. Pripyat's economy was driven by a diverse range of industries, including nuclear energy production, agriculture, and manufacturing. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant was the cornerstone of the city's economy, providing thousands of jobs for its residents and generating significant revenue for the Soviet Union. Additionally, the city was home to several manufacturing facilities, including a large shoe factory that produced footwear for the entire Soviet Union. Despite its many successes, Pripyat was not without its challenges. The city's location in northern Ukraine made it vulnerable to harsh winters and other environmental challenges. Additionally, the city's reliance on nuclear power made it vulnerable to the dangers associated with the technology, as was tragically demonstrated by the Chernobyl disaster. Ultimately, the fate of Pripyat serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility of city life. Despite the city's impressive achievements in social, cultural, and economic spheres, its ultimate fate was determined by forces beyond its control. The tragedy of Chernobyl demonstrated the dangers of unchecked technological advancement and the need for careful planning and oversight in the development of new technologies. In the end, the story of Pripyat is one of both triumph and tragedy. The city was a model of Soviet engineering and design, a testament to the country's commitment to progress, modernity, and socialism. Yet in the end, the city was also a victim of the very forces that drove its development, a cautionary tale about the need to balance ambition and progress with careful planning and oversight. As we continue to develop new cities and technologies, the lessons learned from Pripyat's experience remain as relevant today as they were in the past. We must strive to balance social, cultural, and economic considerations with environmental and safety concerns, 
always mindful of the high cost of progress and the dangers of unchecked technological advancement. Only then can we hope to create cities that are truly sustainable, safe, and prosperous for generations to come. When considering the development of cities, it is often the case that education and research are critical factors in their success. This was undoubtedly the case with Pripyat, a Soviet model city built in the aftermath of World War II. The city was a hub of scientific and educational activity, with a wide range of facilities and institutions that contributed to the country's scientific and technological advancements. At the heart of Pripyat's scientific and educational life was its technical university, a world-renowned institution that specialized in nuclear engineering. The university was a key part of the Soviet Union's push for technological advancement, and it attracted some of the country's brightest minds to the city. Graduates of the university went on to make significant contributions to the field of nuclear engineering, playing a critical role in the country's nuclear energy production and defense programs. Beyond its technical university, Pripyat was home to several other educational institutions, including several schools and a range of vocational training centers. The city's commitment to education and training was evident in the range of courses and programs offered, which included everything from engineering and science to art and literature. Additionally, the city was home to several libraries and research institutes, providing residents with access to the latest scientific and academic research. Pripyat's contributions to science and research extended beyond its educational institutions. The city was also home to several research facilities, including a large agricultural research center that specialized in developing new agricultural technologies and practices. The research center played a critical role in the country's agricultural development, helping to improve crop yields and develop new varieties of crops that were better suited to the local climate. Additionally, the city's nuclear power plant played a significant role in the country's scientific and technological advancements. The plant was a hub of research and development, with scientists and engineers constantly working to improve the safety and efficiency of nuclear energy production. The plant's research programs were critical to the country's nuclear energy production and defense programs, providing valuable insights into the technology's potential and limitations. Despite its many achievements, Pripyat scientific and educational institutions were not without their challenges. The city's location in northern Ukraine made it vulnerable to harsh winters and other environmental challenges, which made research and education more difficult. Additionally, the city's reliance on nuclear power made it vulnerable to the dangers associated with the technology, as was tragically demonstrated by the Chernobyl disaster. Ultimately, the fate of Pripyat serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of education and research in the development of cities. The city's commitment to scientific and technological advancement was critical to the country's success, and it played a significant role in shaping the course of the Soviet Union's history. As we look to the future, the lessons learned from Pripyat's experience remain as relevant as ever. We must continue to invest in education and research striving to balance the pursuit of progress with the need for careful planning and oversight. Only then can we hope to create cities that are truly sustainable, safe, and prosperous for generations to come. When considering the history of cities, it is often the case that community and culture are the lifeblood that sustains them. This was certainly the case with Pripyat, a Soviet model city built in the aftermath of World War II. Despite its ultimate fate, the city was a thriving hub of community and cultural activity, with a rich tapestry of traditions, celebrations, and daily life that gave it its unique character. At the heart of Pripyat's community and cultural life were its traditions and celebrations. The city was home to a diverse range of ethnic groups, each with their own unique customs and celebrations. Throughout the year, the city would come alive with a flurry of festivals and celebrations, including traditional holidays such as New Year's Day and May Day, as well as local celebrations that were unique to the city. Pripyat's traditions and celebrations were not just limited to holidays, however. The city was home to a rich tapestry of cultural institutions and events, including theaters, concert halls, and art galleries. 
The Palace of Culture in particular was a hub of cultural activity, hosting everything from ballets and operas to rock concerts and dance parties. Beyond its traditions and celebrations, Pripyat's daily life was characterized by a strong sense of community and camaraderie. The city was designed to be a self-contained, self-sufficient community, and as such, its residents were closely knit and supportive of one another. The central square, in particular, was a hub of social activity, with residents gathering to shop, socialize, and attend cultural events. Pripyat's daily life was also characterized by a strong sense of work ethic and commitment to progress. The city was home to a wide range of industries, including nuclear energy production, agriculture, and manufacturing. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant was the cornerstone of the city's economy, providing thousands of jobs for its residents and generating significant revenue for the Soviet Union. Despite its many successes, Pripyat was not without its challenges. The city's location in northern Ukraine made it vulnerable to harsh winters and other environmental challenges. Additionally, the city's reliance on nuclear power made it vulnerable to the dangers associated with the technology, as was tragically demonstrated by the Chernobyl disaster. Ultimately, the fate of Pripyat serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of community and culture in the development of cities. The city's strong sense of community and commitment to progress were critical to its success, and it played a significant role in shaping the course of the Soviet Union's history. As we look to the future, the lessons learned from Pripyat's experience remain as relevant as ever. We must continue to invest in community and cultural institutions, striving to create cities that are not just prosperous, but also supportive and welcoming to all. Only then can we hope to create cities that are truly sustainable, safe, and prosperous for generations to come. Chapter 2, The People of Pripyat, Life Before the Disaster When considering the history of cities, it is often the case that immigration and diversity are key factors in their development and success. This was certainly the case with Pripyat, a Soviet model city built in the aftermath of World War II. The city was home to a diverse range of immigrants, each with their own unique customs and traditions, that contributed to the city's rich cultural tapestry. Pripyat's immigrant population was drawn from across the Soviet Union, with people from all walks of life and all corners of the country making their home in the city. The city's location in northern Ukraine made it an attractive destination for immigrants, particularly those looking for work in the city's many industries. The city's diverse population was reflected in its many ethnic neighborhoods, each with its unique customs and traditions. The Armenian neighborhood, for example, was known for its delicious cuisine and its lively cultural celebrations. The Georgian neighborhood, on the other hand, was renowned for its music and dance, with residents gathering regularly to play traditional instruments and perform dances that were unique to the region. Pripyat's immigrant population also contributed to the city's vibrant arts and cultural scene. The city was home to several theaters and concert halls, each offering a unique perspective on the country's rich cultural heritage. Additionally, the city's many museums and galleries showcase the works of local artists and artisans, providing a glimpse into the unique cultural traditions of the region. Despite its many successes, Pripyat's immigrant population was not without its challenges. The city's location in northern Ukraine made it vulnerable to harsh winters and other environmental challenges, which made life more difficult for many of its residents. Additionally, the city's reliance on nuclear power made it vulnerable to the dangers associated with the technology, as was tragically demonstrated by the Chernobyl disaster. Ultimately, the fate of Pripyat serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of immigration and diversity in the development of cities. The city's rich cultural tapestry was a source of strength and pride for its residents, and it played a significant role in shaping the course of the Soviet Union's history. As we look to the future, the lessons learned from Pripyat's experience remain as relevant as ever. We must continue to embrace diversity and immigration, striving to create cities that are welcoming to all and that celebrate the unique traditions and customs of their residents. Only then can we hope to create cities that are truly sustainable, safe, and prosperous for generations to come.
When considering the history of cities, it is often the case that economic growth and opportunity are key factors in their development and success. This was certainly the case with Pripyat, a Soviet model city built in the aftermath of World War II. The city was a hub of economic activity, with a wide range of industries and facilities that provided jobs and opportunities for its residents. At the heart of Pripyat's economy was the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, which provided thousands of jobs for the city's residents and generated significant revenue for the Soviet Union. The plant was a key part of the country's push for technological advancement, and it attracted some of the brightest minds to the city. The plant was also a source of pride for the city's residents, who saw it as a symbol of the country's progress and modernity. Beyond its nuclear power plant, Pripyat was home to a diverse range of industries, including agriculture, manufacturing, and construction. The city's location in northern Ukraine made it an attractive destination for many businesses, particularly those looking to take advantage of the city's skilled workforce and strategic location. The city's booming economy was reflected in its many commercial and retail establishments, which catered to the needs of its residents and visitors. The city was home to several large shopping centers, including a massive department store that sold everything from clothing to appliances. Additionally, the city was home to several restaurants, cafes, and bars, providing residents with ample opportunities for dining and entertainment. Pripyat's economy was not without its challenges, however. The city's reliance on nuclear power made it vulnerable to the dangers associated with the technology, as was tragically demonstrated by the Chernobyl disaster. Additionally, the city's location in northern Ukraine made it vulnerable to harsh winters and other environmental challenges, which could impact its industries and businesses. Ultimately, the fate of Pripyat serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of economic growth and opportunity in the development of cities. The city's booming economy was a source of pride and prosperity for its residents, and it played a significant role in shaping the course of the Soviet Union's history. As we look to the future, the lessons learned from Pripyat's experience remain as relevant as ever. We must continue to invest in economic growth and opportunity, striving to create cities that are not just prosperous, but also sustainable, safe, and welcoming to all. Only then can we hope to create cities that are truly prosperous and vibrant for generations to come. When considering the history of cities, it is often the case that politics, ideology, and culture are the driving forces behind their development and success. This was certainly the case with Pripyat, a Soviet model city built in the aftermath of World War II. The city was a hub of political and cultural activity, with a unique blend of ideology and culture that reflected the values of the Soviet Union. At the heart of Pripyat's political life was the Communist Party, which was the ruling political party in the Soviet Union. The party was the driving force behind the country's push for progress and modernity, and it played a critical role in shaping the country's political and cultural landscape. The party's influence could be seen in every aspect of life in Pripyat, from its architecture and design to its education and cultural institutions. The city was also home to several cultural institutions that reflected the values of the Soviet Union. The Palace of Culture, in particular, was a hub of political and cultural activity, hosting everything from lectures and political meetings to ballets and rock concerts. Additionally, the city was home to several museums and galleries that showcased the country's rich cultural heritage and its commitment to progress and modernity. Pripyat's political and cultural life was further reflected in its architecture and design. The city was designed to be a model of Soviet engineering and urban planning, with wide boulevards and grand public buildings that were meant to symbolize the country's progress and modernity. The city's apartment buildings were designed to be efficient and functional, providing residents with all the amenities they needed to live a comfortable and modern life. Despite its many successes, Pripyat's political and cultural life was not without its challenges. The city's reliance on nuclear power made it vulnerable to the dangers associated with the technology, as was tragically demonstrated by the Chernobyl disaster. Additionally, 
the city's commitment to communist ideology and culture was not always well received by its residents, some of whom felt stifled by the party's strict control over every aspect of life in the city. Ultimately, the fate of Pripyat serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of politics, ideology, and culture in the development of cities. The city's unique blend of Soviet ideology and culture was a source of pride and identity for its residents, and it played a significant role in shaping the course of the Soviet Union's history. As we look to the future, the lessons learned from Pripyat's experience remain as relevant as ever. We must strive to create cities that are not just prosperous and sustainable, but also reflective of the values and aspirations of their residents. Only then can we hope to create cities that are truly vibrant, inclusive and welcoming to all. When considering the history of cities, it is often the case that family, community and social life are critical factors in their development and success. This was undoubtedly the case with Pripyat a Soviet model city built in the aftermath of World War II. The city was home to a tight-knit community, with a rich tapestry of family and social life that gave it its unique character. At the heart of Pripyat's social fabric were its families, which formed the bedrock of the city's community. The city was designed to be a family-friendly environment, with ample green spaces, playgrounds and community centers that catered to the needs of families with children. Additionally, the city's schools and educational institutions were designed to be inclusive and welcoming to all, providing children with the skills and knowledge they needed to succeed in life. Beyond its families, Pripyat was home to a vibrant community of social organizations and clubs. The city was a hub of cultural and sporting activity, with residents gathering regularly to play sports, attend concerts and festivals, and engage in a range of other leisure activities. The city's central square was a popular gathering place, with residents gathering to shop, socialize and attend cultural events. Pripyat's social life was also characterized by a strong sense of community and camaraderie. The city was designed to be a self-contained, self-sufficient community, and as such, its residents were closely knit and supportive of one another. The city's many green spaces and parks provided residents with ample opportunities to relax and unwind and the city's cultural institutions and events provided a sense of identity and pride for its residents. Despite its many successes, Pripyat's social fabric was not without its challenges. The city's location in northern Ukraine made it vulnerable to harsh winters and other environmental challenges, which made life more difficult for many of its residents. Additionally, the city's reliance on nuclear power made it vulnerable to the dangers associated with the technology as was tragically demonstrated by the Chernobyl disaster. Ultimately, the fate of Pripyat serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of family, community and social life in the development of cities. The city's strong sense of community and commitment to family and social life were critical to its success, and it played a significant role in shaping the course of the Soviet Union's history. As we look to the future, the lessons learned from Pripyat's experience remain as relevant as ever. We must continue to invest in family, community and social life, striving to create cities that are not just prosperous and sustainable, but also supportive and welcoming to all. Only then can we hope to create cities that are truly vibrant, inclusive and welcoming to all. When considering the history of cities, it is often the case that education, arts and leisure are the driving forces behind their cultural and intellectual life. This was certainly the case with Pripyat, a Soviet model city built in the aftermath of World War II. The city was a hub of intellectual and cultural activity, with a unique blend of education, arts and leisure that reflected the values of the Soviet Union. At the heart of Pripyat's cultural and intellectual life was its education system, which was designed to be inclusive and accessible to all. The city was home to several schools and educational institutions, each offering a unique perspective on the country's rich cultural heritage and its commitment to progress and modernity. Additionally, the city was home to several libraries and cultural centers, providing residents with ample opportunities for learning and personal growth. Pripyat's intellectual and cultural life was further reflected in its art and entertainment scene. The city was home to several theaters and concert halls, 
each offering a unique perspective on the country's rich cultural heritage. Additionally, the city was home to several museums and galleries that showcased the works of local artists and artisans, providing a glimpse into the unique cultural traditions of the region. Pripyat's cultural and intellectual life was not just limited to formal institutions, however. The city was home to several leisure and recreational facilities, providing residents with ample opportunities for relaxation and fun. The city's many green spaces and parks provided residents with ample opportunities to unwind and connect with nature, while its sports facilities and leisure centers offered a range of activities for residents of all ages. Despite its many successes, Pripyat's cultural and intellectual life was not without its challenges. The city's location in northern Ukraine made it vulnerable to harsh winters and other environmental challenges, which could impact its cultural and recreational facilities. Additionally, the city's reliance on nuclear power made it vulnerable to the dangers associated with the technology, as was tragically demonstrated by the Chernobyl disaster. Ultimately, the fate of Pripyat serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of education, arts, and leisure in the development of cities. The city's unique blend of intellectual and cultural life was a source of pride and identity for its residents, and it played a significant role in shaping the course of the Soviet Union's history. As we look to the future, the lessons learned from Pripyat's experience remain as relevant as ever. We must strive to create cities that are not just prosperous and sustainable, but also reflective of the values and aspirations of their residents. Only then can we hope to create cities that are truly vibrant, inclusive and welcoming to all. Chapter 3 – The Chernobyl Incident – A Catastrophe That Changed the World The Chernobyl disaster was one of the most catastrophic nuclear accidents in history and its impact on the surrounding area and the world at large cannot be overstated. The disaster occurred in the early hours of April 26, 1986, at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, located just outside the city of Pripyat in northern Ukraine. The events leading up to the disaster were the result of a series of mistakes and misjudgments by the plant's operators and managers. On the night of April 25, a group of operators were performing a routine test on one of the plant's reactors, in which they were trying to simulate a power failure and determine whether the plant's backup systems were working correctly. However, a combination of human error and design flaws in the reactor led to a chain reaction that quickly spiraled out of control. The first sign of trouble occurred when the reactor's power level began to rise unexpectedly despite the fact that the control rods, which are used to regulate the reactor's power output, had been inserted. This was followed by a sudden explosion, which caused a massive release of radioactive material into the surrounding area. The explosion was so powerful that it destroyed the reactor building and released an estimated 100 times more radiation than the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In the aftermath of the explosion, the immediate priority was to contain the spread of radiation and prevent further damage to the surrounding area. A team of firefighters and emergency responders was dispatched to the scene, but many of them were not equipped with adequate protective gear and were exposed to high levels of radiation. The area around the plant was evacuated, and a 30-kilometer exclusion zone was established to prevent people from entering the area. The causes of the disaster were the result of a combination of technical, human, and organizational factors. The reactor design itself was flawed and prone to accidents, while the operators who were responsible for running the plant were not adequately trained or prepared for emergencies. Additionally, the Soviet Union's bureaucratic and secretive approach to safety and regulation made it difficult for information to be shared and for problems to be addressed in a timely manner. The Chernobyl disaster had far-reaching consequences, both for the people living in the surrounding area and for the world at large. In the years following the disaster, thousands of people died as a result of radiation exposure, and many more were forced to abandon their homes and livelihoods. The disaster also highlighted the dangers of nuclear power and the need for better safety and regulatory measures to prevent similar accidents in the future. In summary, 
the Chernobyl disaster was a tragic event that had profound consequences for the people of the surrounding area and for the world at large. The causes of the disaster were the result of a combination of technical, human, and organizational factors, and it serves as a reminder of the importance of safety and regulation in the operation of complex and potentially dangerous technologies. The Chernobyl disaster was one of the most catastrophic nuclear accidents in history, and its impact on the surrounding area and the world at large cannot be overstated. The events of that fateful night in April 1986 resulted in a massive release of radioactive material into the surrounding area, and the immediate priority for emergency responders was to contain the spread of radiation and prevent further damage to the surrounding area. The initial response to the disaster was hampered by a lack of information and a lack of preparedness for a crisis of this magnitude. The Soviet Union's bureaucratic and secretive approach to safety and regulation made it difficult for information to be shared and for problems to be addressed in a timely manner. Additionally, the severity of the situation was not immediately recognized, as the extent of the damage and the potential for long-term consequences was not fully understood. The first responders to the scene were a group of firefighters who were dispatched to the plant in the early hours of the morning. They were not aware of the full extent of the situation, and many of them were not equipped with adequate protective gear. As a result, they were exposed to high levels of radiation, which had severe consequences for their health in the years to come. As the scale of the disaster became apparent, a team of emergency responders was assembled to contain the spread of radiation and prevent further damage to the surrounding area. This included the construction of a concrete sarcophagus to enclose the damaged reactor and prevent further radiation from escaping into the environment. Additionally, a 3-0-kilometer exclusion zone was established around the plant to prevent people from entering the area and potentially exposing themselves to radiation. The response to the disaster was not without its challenges, however. The sheer scale of the incident made it difficult to coordinate a response, and the lack of information and preparedness made it difficult for emergency responders to understand the full extent of the situation. Additionally, the long-term consequences of the disaster, including the effects of radiation exposure on human health and the environment, would continue to be felt for decades to come. Despite these challenges, the response to the Chernobyl disaster was a testament to the bravery and dedication of the emergency responders who risked their lives to contain the spread of radiation and prevent further damage to the surrounding area. Their heroic efforts, often at great personal risk, prevented the disaster from being even more catastrophic than it already was. In summary, the response to the Chernobyl disaster was an important reminder of the importance of emergency preparedness and the need for better safety and regulatory measures to prevent similar accidents in the future. The response was not without its challenges, but the bravery and dedication of the emergency responders who risked their lives to contain the spread of radiation and prevent further damage to the surrounding area was nothing short of heroic. The Chernobyl disaster was one of the most catastrophic nuclear accidents in history, and its impact on the surrounding area and the world at large cannot be overstated. The disaster resulted in a massive release of radioactive material into the surrounding environment, and the immediate priority for emergency responders was to contain the spread of radiation and prevent further damage to the area. The effort to control the spread of radiation began immediately after the disaster, as emergency responders worked to prevent the release of further radioactive material from the damaged reactor. The first step in this process was to establish a 30-kilometer exclusion zone around the plant, which prevented people from entering the area and potentially exposing themselves to radiation. Additionally, a team of workers was assembled to begin the process of cleaning up the radioactive material that had already been released into the environment. This process was extremely dangerous and required workers to wear protective gear and take extreme precautions to avoid exposure to radiation. The cleanup effort was a massive undertaking, involving the removal of contaminated soil, debris, 
and other materials from the surrounding area. This material was then stored in sealed containers and transported to specialized facilities for disposal. Additionally, the damaged reactor was enclosed in a concrete sarcophagus to prevent further radiation from escaping into the environment. The containment and cleanup effort was not without its challenges, however. The scale of the disaster was enormous, and the amount of radioactive material that had been released into the environment was staggering. Additionally, the highly radioactive nature of the material made cleanup efforts extremely dangerous for workers, who had to take extreme precautions to avoid exposure to radiation. Despite these challenges, the containment and cleanup effort was ultimately successful in preventing further damage to the surrounding environment and limiting the spread of radiation. The exclusion zone established around the plant prevented people from entering the area and potentially exposing themselves to radiation, and the cleanup effort ensured that the contaminated material was safely removed from the environment. The long-term consequences of the disaster, however, continue to be felt to this day. The effects of radiation exposure on human health and the environment have been severe, and the cleanup effort will need to continue for many years to come to ensure that the area is safe for future generations. In summary, the containment and cleanup effort following the Chernobyl disaster was a massive undertaking that required the bravery and dedication of countless workers. The effort was successful in preventing further damage to the surrounding environment and limiting the spread of radiation, but the long-term consequences of the disaster will continue to be felt for many years to come. The Chernobyl disaster serves as a reminder of the importance of safety and regulation in the operation of complex and potentially dangerous technologies, and the need for emergency preparedness in the event of a crisis. The Chernobyl disaster was one of the most catastrophic nuclear accidents in history, and its impact on the surrounding area and the world at large cannot be overstated. One of the most devastating consequences of the disaster was the impact on human health, as the release of radioactive material into the environment had severe and long-lasting effects on the people living in the surrounding area. The immediate health effects of the disaster were felt by the emergency responders who were dispatched to the scene in the aftermath of the explosion. Many of these workers were not equipped with adequate protective gear and were exposed to high levels of radiation in the course of their work. As a result, many of them suffered from acute radiation sickness, which can cause nausea, vomiting, and other symptoms. Some of these workers ultimately died as a result of their exposure to radiation. In the years following the disaster, the long-term health effects of radiation exposure became increasingly apparent. Studies have shown that exposure to high levels of radiation can cause a variety of health problems, including cancer, birth defects, and other serious medical conditions. The impact of the disaster on human health was felt most acutely by the people living in the surrounding area. The release of radioactive material into the environment contaminated the soil, water, and food supply, exposing people to radiation in their daily lives. As a result, many people living in the surrounding area suffered from a variety of health problems, including cancer, thyroid disorders, and other serious medical conditions. Additionally, the impact of the disaster on human health was felt across generations. Studies have shown that exposure to radiation can cause genetic mutations that can be passed down to future generations potentially causing health problems for years to come. The human toll of the Chernobyl disaster is difficult to quantify, but it is clear that the impact on human health was severe and long-lasting. The disaster serves as a reminder of the importance of safety and regulation in the operation of complex and potentially dangerous technologies, and the need for emergency preparedness in the event of a crisis. In summary, the human toll of the Chernobyl disaster was severe and long-lasting, with devastating consequences for the people living in the surrounding area. The immediate health effects of the disaster were felt by the emergency responders who were dispatched to the scene, many of whom suffered from acute radiation sickness. In the years following the disaster, the long-term health effects of radiation exposure became increasingly apparent 
with many people suffering from a variety of health problems as a result of their exposure to radiation. The Chernobyl disaster serves as a stark reminder of the importance of safety and regulation in the operation of complex and potentially dangerous technologies, and the need for emergency preparedness in the event of a crisis. The Chernobyl disaster was one of the most catastrophic nuclear accidents in history, and its impact on the world at large cannot be overstated. The disaster not only had devastating consequences for the people living in the surrounding area, but it also had a profound impact on nuclear energy policy and public perception of nuclear power. Following the disaster, there was a widespread backlash against nuclear energy, with many people questioning the safety and viability of nuclear power. This led to a slowdown in the construction of new nuclear power plants, as many governments and energy companies became wary of investing in a technology that was seen as inherently dangerous. The impact of the Chernobyl disaster on nuclear energy policy was felt across the globe. In the wake of the disaster, many countries began to reevaluate their nuclear energy policies, with some choosing to phase out nuclear power entirely. This was particularly true in Europe, where the disaster had the most direct impact and where many countries had significant nuclear power programs. The disaster also had an impact on public perception of nuclear power. Prior to the disaster, nuclear power was seen as a promising source of clean energy that could help meet growing energy demands around the world. However, the disaster changed this perception, with many people now viewing nuclear power as a risky and potentially dangerous technology. Despite the concerns about the safety of nuclear power, some countries continued to invest in the technology, seeing it as an important source of energy that could help meet growing energy demands. This was particularly true in developing countries, where energy demand was growing rapidly and there were few viable alternatives to nuclear power. In response to the concerns about the safety of nuclear power, governments and energy companies around the world began to invest in new safety measures and regulatory frameworks designed to prevent similar accidents from happening in the future. This included improvements in reactor design, emergency response plans, and safety training for plant operators and emergency responders. The impact of the Chernobyl disaster on nuclear energy policy and public perception of nuclear power is still felt to this day. Despite the improvements in safety measures and regulatory frameworks, many people remain wary of nuclear power and its potential risks. However, others see nuclear power as an important source of energy that can help meet growing energy demands while reducing reliance on fossil fuels. In summary, the Chernobyl disaster had a profound impact on nuclear energy policy and public perception of nuclear power. The disaster led to a widespread backlash against nuclear power with many countries re-evaluating their nuclear energy policies and phasing out nuclear power entirely. However, others continued to invest in the technology, seeing it as an important source of energy that could help meet growing energy demands. The disaster also led to improvements in safety measures and regulatory frameworks designed to prevent similar accidents from happening in the future. The impact of the Chernobyl disaster on nuclear energy policy and public perception of nuclear power is still felt to this day. Chapter 4, Behind the Scenes, Uncovering the Secrets of the Nuclear Industry Nuclear energy is a controversial and often divisive topic, with strong opinions on both sides of the debate. However, the history of nuclear energy is a fascinating one, filled with innovation, progress and controversy. The story of nuclear energy begins in the early 20th century, when scientists first began to explore the potential of atomic energy. In 1939, German scientists discovered the process of nuclear fission, which would become the basis for the development of nuclear energy. The first nuclear reactor was built in 1942 as part of the Manhattan Project, a top-secret government program to develop nuclear weapons. This reactor, located at the University of Chicago, was used to produce the plutonium that was used in the first atomic bomb. After World War II, the focus of nuclear energy shifted from military applications to peaceful uses. In 1951, 
the first commercial nuclear power plant was built in Idaho, using the newly developed pressurized water reactor technology. This plant, called the Experimental Breeder Reactor, was designed to produce electricity using nuclear energy. Over the next few decades, nuclear energy grew in popularity as a source of clean, efficient energy. In the 1960s and 1970s, hundreds of nuclear power plants were built around the world, as governments and energy companies saw nuclear power as a promising solution to growing energy demands. However, the development of nuclear energy was not without its controversies. One of the most significant concerns was the potential for accidents and the release of radioactive material into the environment. This concern was highlighted by a number of high-profile accidents, including the Three Mile Island accident in 1979 and the Chernobyl disaster in 1986. These accidents led to a widespread backlash against nuclear energy, with many people questioning the safety and viability of nuclear power. This led to a slowdown in the construction of new nuclear power plants, as many governments and energy companies became wary of investing in a technology that was seen as inherently dangerous. Despite the concerns about the safety of nuclear power, some countries continued to invest in the technology, seeing it as an important source of energy that could help meet growing energy demands while reducing reliance on fossil fuels. Today, nuclear energy is still used around the world, with over 400 nuclear power plants in operation. However, the debate over the future of nuclear energy continues to rage on. While some see nuclear power as an important source of clean, efficient energy, others see it as a dangerous and potentially catastrophic technology that should be phased out in favor of renewable energy sources. In summary, the history of nuclear energy is a complex and controversial one, filled with innovation, progress, and controversy. While nuclear energy has been a promising source of clean, efficient energy, it has also been the subject of significant concerns about safety and the potential for accidents. The debate over the future of nuclear energy is likely to continue for years to come, as governments and energy companies grapple with the challenge of meeting growing energy demands while reducing reliance on fossil fuels. The development of nuclear energy has been closely tied to politics and government policy from its inception. Governments around the world have played a significant role in the development of nuclear energy, both in terms of funding and regulation. One of the most significant examples of government involvement in nuclear energy was the Manhattan Project, a top-secret government program to develop nuclear weapons during World War II. The Manhattan Project was one of the most ambitious and expensive scientific projects in history, and it laid the groundwork for the development of nuclear energy as a peaceful source of energy. After the war, many governments saw the potential of nuclear energy as a source of clean, efficient energy, and began to invest in nuclear power plants and research. However, the development of nuclear energy was not without its controversies and governments played a significant role in regulating and managing the risks associated with nuclear energy. One of the key challenges in the development of nuclear energy has been the potential for accidents and the release of radioactive material into the environment. Governments around the world have established regulatory frameworks to manage these risks, including safety standards for nuclear power plants and emergency response plans in the event of an accident. However, the relationship between governments and corporations in the development of nuclear energy has not always been straightforward. While governments have provided significant funding and support for the development of nuclear energy, corporations have often been the primary beneficiaries of this investment, using government funding to build and operate nuclear power plants. This has led to concerns about the influence of corporations on government policy, and the potential for corporate interests to override concerns about safety and the environment. This concern was highlighted by the Fukushima disaster in 2011, when a massive earthquake and tsunami caused a nuclear meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan. The disaster raised serious questions about the safety of nuclear power and about the relationship between government and corporate interests in the development of nuclear energy.
Many people criticize the Japanese government for its handling of the disaster and for its close ties to the corporations that operated the nuclear power plant. The politics of nuclear energy are complex and multifaceted, with governments and corporations both playing significant roles in the development of the technology. While nuclear energy has been a promising source of clean, efficient energy, it has also been the subject of significant concerns about safety and the potential for accidents. As governments around the world grapple with the challenge of meeting growing energy demands while reducing reliance on fossil fuels, the role of nuclear energy in the energy mix is likely to continue to be a subject of debate and controversy. The challenge for policymakers will be to balance the potential benefits of nuclear energy with the risks associated with its development and to ensure that the interests of the public are not outweighed by the interests of corporations. The science and engineering of nuclear reactors is a complex and fascinating field filled with innovation and progress. At its core, a nuclear reactor is a device that uses nuclear reactions to generate heat, which can then be used to produce electricity. The process of generating electricity using nuclear energy begins with the fuel typically uranium or plutonium, which is placed in the reactor. When a uranium atom is hit by a neutron, it undergoes nuclear fission, releasing energy in the form of heat and more neutrons. These neutrons can then hit other uranium atoms, setting off a chain reaction that generates a significant amount of heat. This heat is used to generate steam, which drives a turbine, generating electricity. However, the process of generating electricity using nuclear energy is not without its risks, as the release of radioactive material into the environment can have severe and long-lasting consequences. As a result, the design and engineering of nuclear reactors is a critical aspect of their operation. The goal of nuclear reactor design is to maximize efficiency and safety, while minimizing the risks associated with nuclear energy. One of the key challenges in nuclear reactor design is managing the heat generated by the nuclear reactions. If the reactor becomes too hot, it can damage the fuel and release radioactive material into the environment. To prevent this, nuclear reactors are designed with a variety of safety features, including coolant systems that circulate water or other materials to keep the reactor cool. Another challenge in nuclear reactor design is managing the potential for accidents and the release of radioactive material. To prevent accidents, nuclear reactors are designed with multiple layers of safety features, including containment structures that can prevent the release of radioactive material in the event of a meltdown. In recent years, advances in technology have led to significant improvements in nuclear reactor design and engineering. New reactor designs, such as the integral pressurized water reactor and the high temperature gas cooled reactor are designed to be safer and more efficient than traditional nuclear reactors. Additionally, new materials and manufacturing techniques are being developed to improve the safety and efficiency of nuclear reactors. For example, researchers are exploring the use of new materials such as advanced ceramics and metal alloys which can withstand high temperatures and radiation exposure without breaking down or degrading. The science and engineering of nuclear reactors is a complex and challenging field, but it is also one that is filled with innovation and progress. As the world grapples with the challenge of meeting growing energy demands while reducing reliance on fossil fuels, nuclear energy is likely to play an increasingly important role. The challenge for scientists and engineers in the field of nuclear reactor design and engineering will be to continue to develop new and innovative solutions that maximize efficiency and safety, while minimizing the risks associated with nuclear energy. The safety and regulation of nuclear power plants is one of the most important and challenging aspects of the nuclear energy industry. Due to the potential risks associated with nuclear energy, Ensuring the safety of nuclear power plants is critical to protecting the health and well-being of both the workers at the plants and the surrounding communities. To ensure the safety of nuclear power plants, governments around the world have established regulatory frameworks designed to manage the risks associated with nuclear energy. 
These regulatory frameworks include safety standards for nuclear power plants, emergency response plans in the event of an accident, and regulatory bodies responsible for overseeing the operation of nuclear power plants. One of the key safety measures in nuclear power plants is the use of multiple layers of containment structures. These structures are designed to prevent the release of radioactive material in the event of an accident and include thick concrete walls and airtight seals. Another important safety measure is the use of backup systems, which are designed to ensure the continued operation of critical systems even in the event of a power outage or other emergency. These backup systems include diesel generators and battery backups, which can provide power to critical systems until the plant can be safely shut down. In addition to these physical safety measures, nuclear power plants are also subject to extensive regulation and oversight. Regulatory bodies, such as the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in the United States and the International Atomic Energy Agency, are responsible for ensuring that nuclear power plants operate safely and in compliance with applicable regulations and safety standards. These regulatory bodies are also responsible for monitoring nuclear power plants for any signs of safety or security issues and for taking action to address these issues if they arise. This can include imposing fines or other penalties on operators who violate safety standards or requiring operators to make changes to their plant design or operation to address safety concerns. In recent years, advances in technology have led to significant improvements in nuclear plant safety. New reactor designs, such as the Integral Pressurized Water Reactor and the High Temperature Gas Cooled Reactor, are designed to be safer and more efficient than traditional nuclear reactors. Additionally, new materials and manufacturing techniques are being developed to improve the safety and efficiency of nuclear reactors. Despite these improvements, however, concerns about the safety of nuclear power plants remain. Accidents such as the Fukushima disaster in 2011 and the Chernobyl disaster in 1986 highlight the potential risks associated with nuclear energy and have led to increased scrutiny of nuclear power plants and the regulatory frameworks that oversee their operation. As the world continues to grapple with the challenge of meeting growing energy demands while reducing reliance on fossil fuels, the safety and regulation of nuclear power plants will remain a critical issue. The challenge for governments, regulatory bodies, and operators of nuclear power plants will be to continue to develop and implement new safety measures and regulatory frameworks designed to manage the risks associated with nuclear energy while also ensuring the continued operation of these critical sources of energy. The production of nuclear energy has had significant ecological and societal consequences throughout its history. While nuclear energy is often touted as a clean and efficient source of energy, it also poses significant risks to the environment and public health. One of the most significant environmental impacts of nuclear energy is the production of radioactive waste. Nuclear power plants generate large amounts of radioactive waste, which can remain hazardous for hundreds of thousands of years. This waste must be stored and disposed of in a way that minimizes the risk of exposure to humans and the environment, a challenge that has yet to be fully addressed. Another significant environmental impact of nuclear energy is the potential for accidents and the release of radioactive material into the environment. Accidents at nuclear power plants, such as the Chernobyl disaster in 1986 and the Fukushima disaster in 2011, have had devastating consequences for the environment and public health, contaminating large areas with radioactive material and causing widespread environmental damage. In addition to the potential for accidents, the process of mining and processing uranium for use in nuclear power plants can also have significant environmental impacts. Uranium mining can lead to the contamination of water sources and the destruction of natural habitats, and the process of enriching uranium for use in nuclear reactors requires large amounts of energy, contributing to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. Beyond the environmental impacts, the production of nuclear energy also has significant societal consequences. The risks associated with nuclear energy, 
can lead to significant public opposition, as seen in the anti-nuclear movements of the 1970s and 1980s. In addition, the development of nuclear power plants can also lead to displacement of local communities and disruption of traditional ways of life. Despite these significant risks and impacts, nuclear energy continues to play an important role in the world's energy mix. Proponents of nuclear energy point to its potential as a clean and efficient source of energy and argue that the risks associated with nuclear energy can be managed through strict regulation and safety measures. However, as the world grapples with the challenge of meeting growing energy demands while reducing reliance on fossil fuels, the environmental and societal impacts of nuclear energy production will continue to be a critical issue. The challenge for policymakers will be to balance the potential benefits of nuclear energy with the risks and impacts associated with its production, and to ensure that the interests of public health and the environment are protected. Chapter 5, Living in the Shadow of the Reactor, The Daily Reality of Pripyat Residents The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 had far-reaching consequences, not just for the workers at the nuclear power plant, but for the entire surrounding region. The city of Pripyat, located just a few miles from the Chernobyl reactor, was particularly hard hit by the disaster, as residents were forced to evacuate and leave their homes and belongings behind. Living in proximity to a nuclear power plant can be a challenging experience, as residents must contend with the potential risks and consequences associated with the production of nuclear energy. The residents of Pripyat knew this all too well, as they lived in close proximity to the Chernobyl reactor for many years prior to the disaster. Despite the risks, many residents of Pripyat chose to live and work in the city, drawn by the promise of good jobs and a high quality of life. The city was home to a number of amenities, including parks, theaters, and shopping centers, and offered a high standard of living for its residents. However, the events of April 26, 1986, changed everything. The explosion at the Chernobyl reactor led to a release of radioactive material that contaminated the surrounding area, including Pripyat. Residents were evacuated from the city and the surrounding region, leaving behind their homes and belongings. In the years since the disaster, the city of Pripyat has become a symbol of the risks and consequences associated with nuclear energy production. The abandoned city stands as a stark reminder of the potential dangers of living in proximity to a nuclear power plant and the long-term consequences of nuclear accidents. Despite the risks associated with living in proximity to a nuclear power plant, many communities around the world continue to do so, drawn by the promise of good jobs and economic opportunities. However, the events of Chernobyl and other nuclear accidents serve as a reminder of the potential risks and consequences associated with nuclear energy production and the importance of rigorous safety measures and regulation. The challenge for policymakers and communities living near nuclear power plants will be to balance the potential benefits of nuclear energy with the risks and consequences associated with its production and to ensure that the interests of public health and the environment are protected. Working in the nuclear energy industry is a unique and challenging experience, as employees must contend with the potential risks and consequences associated with the production of nuclear energy. While the industry offers good jobs and the promise of career advancement, it also poses significant risks to the health and well-being of workers. One of the key challenges of working in the nuclear energy industry is managing the risks associated with radiation exposure. Workers at nuclear power plants are exposed to higher levels of radiation than workers in other industries and must take strict precautions to protect themselves from exposure. This can include wearing protective clothing and equipment and working in areas that are shielded from radiation. Despite these precautions, however, the potential risks of radiation exposure remain a constant concern for nuclear plant employees. Exposure to radiation can have long-term health effects, including an increased risk of cancer and other diseases. In addition to managing the risks associated with radiation exposure, workers in the nuclear energy industry must also contend with the challenges of working in a highly regulated and safety-conscious environment. 
Nuclear power plants are subject to strict safety standards and regulatory oversight, and employees must adhere to strict procedures and protocols in order to maintain safety and compliance. This can lead to a high pressure and stressful work environment, as employees must constantly be vigilant and aware of potential safety hazards. However, it also offers opportunities for career advancement and professional development, as employees must undergo extensive training and education in order to work in the industry. Despite the challenges and risks associated with working in the nuclear energy industry, many workers are drawn to the industry by the promise of good jobs and the opportunity to work in a dynamic and high-tech field. The industry offers a wide range of career opportunities, from engineers and scientists to technicians and support staff. Overall, working in the nuclear energy industry is a challenging and complex experience, filled with both risks and opportunities. The challenge for employers and regulators will be to continue to develop and implement measures to manage the risks associated with the production of nuclear energy, while also ensuring that workers are able to work in a safe and healthy environment. The impact of radiation exposure on the daily lives of Pripyat residents was profound and long-lasting, following the Chernobyl disaster of 1986. The explosion at the Chernobyl reactor released a massive amount of radioactive material into the surrounding environment, contaminating the air, soil, and water. For residents of Pripyat, this contamination had immediate and severe consequences. Many residents experienced symptoms of radiation sickness, including nausea, vomiting, and fatigue. Others developed more serious health problems, such as cancer and other diseases, as a result of long-term exposure to radiation. In addition to the health impacts, the contamination also had significant economic and social consequences for the residents of Pripyat. The evacuation of the city and the surrounding region led to the loss of homes, jobs, and personal possessions for many residents and forced them to start anew in other parts of the country. The evacuation also had a profound impact on the social fabric of the community, as families and friends were separated and the bonds that had held the community together were fractured. In the years since the disaster, many residents have struggled with the emotional and psychological effects of the evacuation, including feelings of isolation and loss. Despite these challenges, however, the residents of Pripyat have shown resilience and determination in the face of adversity. Many have worked to rebuild their lives and their communities, and have sought to raise awareness of the long-term health and environmental impacts of the Chernobyl disaster. The impact of radiation exposure on the daily lives of Pripyat residents serves as a stark reminder of the potential risks and consequences associated with the production of nuclear energy. While nuclear energy offers many benefits, including the potential to provide clean and efficient energy, it also poses significant risks to public health and the environment. As the world continues to grapple with the challenge of meeting growing energy demands while reducing reliance on fossil fuels, the safety and regulation of nuclear power plants will remain a critical issue. The challenge for governments, regulatory bodies, and operators of nuclear power plants will be to continue to develop and implement new safety measures and regulatory frameworks designed to manage the risks associated with nuclear energy, while also ensuring the continued operation of these critical sources of energy. Overall, the impact of radiation exposure on the daily lives of Pripyat residents serves as a cautionary tale of the potential consequences of nuclear accidents and underscores the importance of rigorous safety measures and regulation in the nuclear energy industry. The risks associated with nuclear power have long been a source of fear and uncertainty for communities living near nuclear power plants. While nuclear energy offers many benefits, including the potential to provide clean and efficient energy, it also poses significant risks to public health and the environment. For residents living near nuclear power plants, the potential risks of radiation exposure can be a constant source of anxiety and fear. The events of the Chernobyl disaster in 1986 and the Fukushima disaster in 2011 serve as stark reminders of the potential consequences of nuclear accidents and have led many to question the safety and reliability of nuclear power. 
Despite these concerns, however, many communities have continued to support the development and operation of nuclear power plants, drawn by the promise of good jobs and economic opportunities. Others have organized and mobilized to oppose the development of nuclear power plants in their communities, citing concerns about the potential risks and consequences. For those living near nuclear power plants, coping with the fear and uncertainty associated with the potential risks of radiation exposure can be a difficult and complex experience. Some have sought to educate themselves about the risks and consequences of nuclear power and have taken steps to prepare for potential emergencies, such as stockpiling supplies and developing emergency evacuation plans. Others have turned to activism and advocacy, working to raise awareness of the potential risks and consequences of nuclear power and pushing for increased safety standards and regulation. Still others have simply learned to live with the uncertainty and anxiety, trusting in the safety measures and protocols in place at nuclear power plants and the regulatory bodies charged with overseeing their operation. Overall, the response of residents to the risks of nuclear power has been complex and multifaceted reflecting the diverse and varied experiences and perspectives of communities living near nuclear power plants. While some have embraced the potential benefits of nuclear energy, others have raised concerns about the potential risks and consequences and have sought to advocate for increased safety measures and regulation. As the world continues to grapple with the challenge of meeting growing energy demands while reducing reliance on fossil fuels, the safety and regulation of nuclear power plants will remain a critical issue. The challenge for governments, regulatory bodies, and operators of nuclear power plants will be to balance the potential benefits of nuclear energy with the risks and consequences associated with its production, and to ensure that the interests of public health and the environment are protected. A company town is a community that is owned and operated by a single company or corporation often established to support a specific industry or economic activity. While these towns offer many benefits, including access to good jobs and economic stability, they also pose unique challenges and limitations for their residents. One of the key strengths of living in a company town is the sense of community and shared identity that can develop among its residents. These towns are often closely knit communities with strong social bonds and shared experiences. Residents may participate in company-sponsored events and activities and may feel a sense of pride and ownership in their community. However, living in a company town can also pose significant challenges and limitations for residents. Because the town is owned and operated by a single company or corporation, residents may have limited options for employment and may be subject to the whims of the company in terms of wages, benefits, and working conditions. In addition, company towns may lack the diversity and cultural amenities found in larger cities, leading to a sense of isolation and limited opportunities for personal and professional growth. Residents may also be subject to restrictions and regulations imposed by the company, limiting their freedom and autonomy. Despite these challenges, however, the residents of company towns have shown resilience and adaptability in the face of adversity. Many have formed strong social networks and support systems within their communities and have worked to address the challenges and limitations posed by living in a company town. In some cases, residents have also organized and mobilized to advocate for their rights and interests, pushing for improved working conditions, wages and benefits, and seeking greater autonomy and control over their communities. Overall, the experience of living in a company town is complex and multifaceted reflecting the unique strengths and challenges posed by these communities. While they offer many benefits, including economic stability and a strong sense of community, they also pose significant limitations and restrictions on residents' autonomy and freedom. The challenge for residents of company towns will be to balance the potential benefits of living in a tightly knit and supportive community with the need for greater autonomy and diversity of opportunity. Chapter 6, Heroes and Villains, The Role of Individuals in the Chernobyl Disaster The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 was one of the most catastrophic nuclear accidents in history, 
releasing a massive amount of radioactive material into the surrounding environment and posing significant risks to public health and safety. In the immediate aftermath of the explosion, a team of first responders worked tirelessly to contain the damage and prevent further harm to the surrounding community. These first responders, including firefighters, engineers, and emergency workers, were the first line of defense against the potential risks and consequences of the Chernobyl disaster. Despite the risks and dangers associated with radiation exposure, they worked tirelessly to contain the damage and mitigate the impacts of the disaster. Their bravery and sacrifice cannot be overstated. Many of these first responders were exposed to high levels of radiation during their efforts to contain the explosion and prevent further harm to the surrounding community. Some suffered immediate health effects, including radiation sickness and burns, while others developed long-term health problems, including an increased risk of cancer and other diseases. Despite these risks, however, the first responders continued to work tirelessly, often putting their own safety and health on the line in order to protect others. Their bravery and dedication serve as a testament to the courage and selflessness of those who serve in emergency response roles. In addition to their immediate response efforts, many of these first responders continued to work tirelessly in the years following the disaster, conducting cleanup and remediation efforts, and working to monitor and manage the long-term health impacts of the radiation exposure. Their sacrifices and dedication have not gone unnoticed. In the years since the Chernobyl disaster, the bravery and selflessness of these first responders have been celebrated and honored, and their contributions have served as a reminder of the importance of emergency response and preparedness. Overall, the sacrifices of first responders in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster serve as a testament to the courage and dedication of those who serve in emergency response roles. Their bravery and selflessness in the face of significant risks and challenges remind us of the importance of emergency preparedness and response, and the critical role that first responders play in protecting public health and safety. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 was caused by a combination of human error, design flaws, and a lack of safety protocols and procedures. At the heart of this disaster were the workers and engineers who operated the Chernobyl reactor and who made the decisions that ultimately led to the explosion and subsequent release of radioactive material. While the exact sequence of events that led to the explosion is still a matter of debate and investigation, it is clear that the workers and engineers responsible for operating the reactor were faced with a number of critical decisions and responsibilities that ultimately contributed to the disaster. One of the key challenges faced by these workers and engineers was the need to balance the demands of production and efficiency with the need for safety and caution. Nuclear power plants are complex and demanding systems, requiring precise control and management in order to function properly. However, the pressure to produce energy quickly and efficiently can often lead to shortcuts and compromises that increase the risks of accidents and disasters. In addition to these challenges, the workers and engineers operating the Chernobyl reactor were also faced with a number of design flaws and safety issues that contributed to the disaster. These flaws included a lack of adequate safety measures and protocols, as well as a design that made the reactor particularly susceptible to explosions and other disasters. Despite these challenges, however, the workers and engineers responsible for operating the reactor had a critical responsibility to ensure the safety and well-being of the surrounding community. Their decisions and actions had significant consequences, both in terms of the immediate impact of the explosion and the long-term health and environmental consequences of the radiation release. In the aftermath of the disaster, many of these workers and engineers faced significant criticism and scrutiny for their roles in the accident. Some were even charged with criminal negligence and other charges, reflecting the significant responsibility and accountability that comes with operating a nuclear power plant. However, it is also important to recognize the complexities and challenges faced by those who operate nuclear power plants and the need for robust safety protocols and procedures to mitigate the risks and consequences of disasters like Chernobyl. The challenge for workers and engineers operating nuclear power plants 
will be to balance the demands of production and efficiency with the need for safety and caution, and to continue to improve safety measures and protocols in order to mitigate the risks of accidents and disasters. Overall, the workers and engineers responsible for operating the Chernobyl reactor had a critical role to play in the events leading up to the disaster, and their decisions and actions had significant consequences for the surrounding community and the world as a whole. The lessons learned from this disaster will serve as a reminder of the importance of safety and caution in the operation of nuclear power plants and the need for continued vigilance and improvements in safety protocols and procedures. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 was not only a technological and environmental disaster, but also a political and administrative one. The response of leaders, both within the Soviet Union and in the international community, was critical in shaping the immediate and long-term response to the disaster and its aftermath. At the time of the disaster, the Soviet Union was under the leadership of Mikhail Gorbachev, who was responsible for overseeing the response to the crisis. Gorbachev initially downplayed the severity of the disaster, and it was not until several days after the explosion that the Soviet government acknowledged the scale of the disaster and began to take action. Despite the delay in the Soviet response, however, the government ultimately took a number of significant steps to contain the damage and prevent further harm to the surrounding community. These steps included evacuating residents from the surrounding area, establishing a 30-kilometer exclusion zone around the reactor, and mobilizing resources and personnel to contain the radiation and manage the long-term health impacts of the disaster. In addition to the Soviet response, the international community also played a critical role in responding to the Chernobyl disaster. The United Nations and other international organizations provided significant resources and assistance to support the Soviet response, including sending experts and resources to help contain the radiation and manage the long-term health impacts of the disaster. Despite these efforts, however, the response to the Chernobyl disaster was not without its criticisms and controversies. Some have argued that the Soviet government downplayed the severity of the disaster and failed to provide adequate support and assistance to the affected communities. Others have criticized the international response for being slow and inadequate, and for failing to adequately address the long-term health and environmental consequences of the disaster. Ultimately, the response to the Chernobyl disaster serves as a reminder of the critical role that leaders play in shaping the response to disasters and crises. The decisions and actions of leaders, both within the affected country and in the international community, can have significant consequences for the response to a crisis and for the long-term recovery and mitigation efforts. Moving forward, the challenge for leaders will be to continue to improve disaster preparedness and response measures, to prioritize the health and well-being of affected communities, and to work collaboratively with the international community to mitigate the risks and consequences of disasters like Chernobyl. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 was one of the most catastrophic nuclear accidents in history, with significant and far-reaching impacts on the surrounding environment, public health, and the nuclear industry as a whole. In the years since the disaster, the lessons learned from Chernobyl have shaped the way we think about nuclear energy and its potential risks and benefits. One of the key lessons of Chernobyl is the critical importance of safety and caution in the operation of nuclear power plants. The disaster was caused by a combination of human error, design flaws, and a lack of adequate safety protocols and procedures. As a result, the nuclear industry has implemented a number of significant changes and improvements in safety measures and protocols to mitigate the risks of similar disasters. Another lesson of Chernobyl is the importance of transparency and accountability in the operation of nuclear power plants. In the aftermath of the disaster, there was significant criticism and scrutiny of the Soviet government's response, particularly in terms of its failure to provide accurate and timely information to the public. Today, there is a greater emphasis on transparency and public engagement in the operation of nuclear power plants with increased efforts to ensure that information about plant operations and safety measures 
is readily available to the public. The disaster also had significant impacts on public perception of nuclear energy, with many people becoming increasingly skeptical and fearful of the potential risks associated with nuclear power. In the years since the disaster, there has been a greater emphasis on public education and engagement in the nuclear industry, with efforts to address concerns about safety and promote greater awareness and understanding of the benefits and risks of nuclear energy. Despite these efforts, however, the Chernobyl disaster remains a cautionary tale about the potential risks and consequences of nuclear energy. While nuclear energy can provide a number of benefits, including clean and reliable energy, the risks associated with nuclear accidents and disasters cannot be overlooked. Moving forward, the challenge for the nuclear industry will be to continue to prioritize safety and transparency in the operation of nuclear power plants, while also addressing public concerns and promoting greater awareness and understanding of the benefits and risks of nuclear energy. The lessons of Chernobyl will continue to shape the way we think about nuclear energy and its potential impact on society and the environment, and will serve as a reminder of the critical importance of responsible and sustainable energy production. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 was a tragedy that had significant and far-reaching impacts on the surrounding environment, public health, and the lives of countless individuals. Today, more than 35 years later, the legacy of Chernobyl continues to affect people and the environment in a variety of ways. One of the most significant impacts of the Chernobyl disaster has been on public health. The radiation released during the disaster has been linked to a number of health problems, including an increased risk of cancer, thyroid disease, and other chronic illnesses. The long-term health impacts of the disaster are still being studied and it is likely that we will continue to see the effects of the disaster on public health for many years to come. The disaster also had significant environmental impacts, both in the immediate aftermath and in the years since. The surrounding area remains contaminated with radiation, and efforts to clean up and mitigate the environmental impacts of the disaster continue to this day. The exclusion zone around the reactor remains in place, and access to the area is highly restricted to prevent further harm to people and the environment. In addition to these direct impacts, the legacy of Chernobyl also continues to affect people in more indirect ways. The disaster has had significant psychological impacts on the surrounding communities and on the individuals who were directly affected by the disaster. Many people who were evacuated from the area have had to rebuild their lives elsewhere, while others have chosen to remain in the affected area, despite the risks. The legacy of Chernobyl has also had significant impacts on the nuclear industry and public perception of nuclear energy. The disaster was a wake-up call for the industry and led to significant improvements in safety measures and protocols to prevent similar disasters from occurring. However, the disaster also contributed to increased skepticism and fear of nuclear energy and continues to shape public perception and attitudes towards nuclear power. Overall, the legacy of Chernobyl serves as a reminder of the far-reaching and long-lasting impacts that disasters can have on people and the environment. While significant progress has been made in mitigating the effects of the disaster, the legacy of Chernobyl continues to affect people and the environment in a variety of ways. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to prioritize safety and environmental sustainability in all forms of energy production and to work towards a more resilient and sustainable future for all. Chapter 7, From Boom to Bust, The Collapse of Pripyat's Industrial Economy Pripyat, a city located in the northern Ukraine, was built in the 1970s as a model city for Soviet workers who were involved in the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The city was designed to be a modern, thriving metropolis with all the amenities necessary to support the nuclear industry, including schools, hospitals, cultural centers, and housing for workers and their families. The economic foundations of Pripyat were firmly rooted in the nuclear industry, with the city serving as a hub for the workers and support staff who were involved in the operation of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The plant was a major source of employment for the city, 
with many of its residents working as engineers, technicians, and other professionals in the nuclear industry. The city was also designed to be self-sufficient, with a variety of amenities and services available to its residents. In addition to schools and hospitals, the city also boasted a number of recreational facilities, including a stadium, a cinema, and a large park. The city's infrastructure was also designed to be highly efficient, with a modern transportation system and a well-maintained road network. However, the economic foundations of Pripyat were also its greatest weakness. The city was heavily dependent on the nuclear industry, and the success of the city was closely tied to the success of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. When the disaster occurred in 1986, the economic foundations of the city were shaken to their core. Following the disaster, the city was evacuated, and the economic activity that had once sustained the city came to a halt. The nuclear industry that had once been the lifeblood of the city was now seen as a potential threat, and the future of the industry was called into question. Despite these challenges, however, the legacy of Pripyat lives on. The city's modern infrastructure and well-designed urban planning continue to inspire urban planners and architects, and the city remains an important case study in the development of company towns and the role of the nuclear industry in shaping economic development. Today, the ruins of Pripyat remain a haunting reminder of the dangers of nuclear power and the importance of responsible and sustainable energy production. The economic foundations of Pripyat were built on the promise of nuclear power, but ultimately, the disaster at Chernobyl demonstrated the risks associated with this technology. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to prioritize safety and sustainability in all forms of energy production and to learn from the lessons of Pripyat and Chernobyl. While the economic foundations of Pripyat may have been built on nuclear power, the legacy of the city serves as a reminder that true economic resilience and sustainability require a diverse and well-rounded economy that is not solely reliant on any one industry or technology. The decline of the Soviet Union had a significant impact on the economy of Pripyat a city that was built to support the Soviet nuclear industry. The city's economic foundations were firmly rooted in the nuclear industry, with many of its residents working in the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant. However, as the Soviet Union began to crumble, the economic stability of the city began to erode. The Soviet Union was facing a number of economic and political challenges in the 1980s, including a stagnant economy increasing political unrest, and a growing sense of dissatisfaction among its citizens. These challenges were particularly acute in the Ukraine, which was one of the most economically and politically important regions of the Soviet Union. As the Soviet Union began to unravel, the economic foundations of Pripyat were put to the test. The city's heavy reliance on the nuclear industry left it vulnerable to the fluctuations of the national economy and the declining fortunes of the Soviet Union began to take their toll on the city's economic stability. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986, which had a significant impact on the economic fortunes of the city, was a turning point in the history of Pripyat. The disaster led to the evacuation of the city, and the economic activity that had once sustained the city came to a halt. Following the disaster, the economic foundations of the city were further undermined by the declining fortunes of the Soviet Union. The economic instability of the national economy made it difficult for the city to attract investment or develop new industries, and the decline of the nuclear industry left many residents without work. Despite these challenges, however, the legacy of Pripyat continues to inspire urban planners and architects, and the city remains an important case study in the development of company towns and the role of the nuclear industry in shaping economic development. Today, the ruins of Pripyat stand as a haunting reminder of the decline of the Soviet Union and the risks associated with nuclear power. The economic foundations of the city were built on the promise of nuclear power, but ultimately, the decline of the Soviet Union and the disaster at Chernobyl demonstrated the risks associated with this technology. Moving forward, 
it will be important to continue to prioritize safety and sustainability in all forms of energy production and to learn from the lessons of Pripyat and the decline of the Soviet Union. While the economic foundations of Pripyat may have been built on the promise of nuclear power, the legacy of the city serves as a reminder that true economic resilience and sustainability require a diverse and well-rounded economy that is not solely reliant on any one industry or technology. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 had a profound impact on the city of Pripyat and its economic future. The city, which was built to support the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant, was heavily reliant on the nuclear industry, and the disaster had significant economic consequences for the city. In the immediate aftermath of the disaster, the city was evacuated, and the economic activity that had once sustained the city came to a halt. The nuclear industry that had once been the lifeblood of the city was now seen as a potential threat, and the future of the industry was called into question. The economic impact of the disaster was felt not only in Pripyat, but throughout the region. The disaster had a significant impact on agricultural production, as the land around the reactor was contaminated with radiation, and food production was severely disrupted. The impact of the disaster was also felt in the broader economy of the Soviet Union. The disaster occurred at a time when the Soviet economy was already struggling, and the economic cost of the disaster was significant. The cost of the cleanup and mitigation efforts was estimated to be in the billions of dollars, and the economic impact of the disaster was felt for many years after the event. Despite these challenges, however, the legacy of Pripyat and the disaster at Chernobyl continues to influence economic development and planning. The disaster led to significant improvements in safety measures and protocols in the nuclear industry, and the lessons learned from the disaster continue to inform environmental and safety regulations in industries around the world. The legacy of Pripyat also serves as a reminder of the importance of economic diversification and resilience. The heavy reliance of Pripyat on the nuclear industry made the city vulnerable to economic shocks, and the disaster at Chernobyl highlighted the risks associated with over-reliance on any one industry or technology. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to prioritize safety and sustainability in all forms of energy production, and to work towards a more diverse and resilient economy. While the legacy of Chernobyl and the economic impact on Pripyat are tragic reminders of the risks associated with nuclear power, they also serve as a catalyst for continued improvement and innovation in energy production and economic planning. The shift towards renewable energy sources in recent years has had a profound impact on energy production and economic development around the world and has had significant consequences for the city of Pripyat. The city, which was built to support the Soviet nuclear industry, was heavily reliant on this industry for economic growth and stability. However, the growing popularity of renewable energy sources has led to a significant shift in the energy industry and has had a significant impact on the economic future of Pripyat. One of the primary drivers of the shift towards renewable energy sources has been a growing awareness of the risks associated with nuclear power, particularly in the wake of the Chernobyl disaster. The disaster had a profound impact on the global perception of nuclear power and led to a greater focus on the development of alternative sources of energy. The development of renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, and hydropower has led to a significant shift in the global energy industry and has had a significant impact on the economic future of Pripyat. The shift towards renewable energy sources has led to a significant decline in the demand for nuclear power and has resulted in the closure of many nuclear power plants around the world. For Pripyat, the shift towards renewable energy sources has had significant economic consequences. The city was built to support the nuclear industry, and the decline of this industry has led to significant economic challenges. The closure of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, which was once the economic engine of the city, has led to a decline in economic activity and has resulted in significant job losses. However, 
the shift towards renewable energy sources has also created new opportunities for economic development and growth in Pripyat. The city has a number of natural resources that could be harnessed for the development of renewable energy sources, including wind and hydropower. The development of these sources could create new job opportunities and stimulate economic growth in the city. The shift towards renewable energy sources has also led to significant improvements in environmental sustainability and public health. Renewable energy sources produce less pollution and emissions than traditional sources of energy and can have significant benefits for public health and the environment. Moving forward, it will be important for Pripyat to adapt to the changing energy landscape and to develop new industries and economic opportunities. While the shift towards renewable energy sources may have had significant consequences for the city's economy, it also presents new opportunities for growth and development. By embracing the development of renewable energy sources, Pripyat can position itself as a leader in the transition towards a more sustainable and resilient global economy. The economic changes and challenges faced by Pripyat in the wake of the Chernobyl disaster and the decline of the Soviet Union had a profound impact on the city and its residents. However, in the years since the disaster, the city has demonstrated resilience and adaptability and has worked to develop new industries and economic opportunities. One of the primary challenges faced by the city was the decline of the nuclear industry. The closure of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, which had once been the economic engine of the city, left many residents without work and created significant economic challenges. To address these challenges, the city worked to develop new industries and economic opportunities. The city has a number of natural resources that could be harnessed for the development of renewable energy sources, including wind and hydropower. The development of these sources could create new job opportunities and stimulate economic growth in the city. In addition to the development of renewable energy sources, the city has also worked to develop new industries and attract investment in other areas. The city has a number of unique cultural and historical attractions that could be developed for tourism, and the city has worked to attract investment in these areas. The city has also focused on developing a skilled workforce that can adapt to changing economic conditions. The city has invested in education and training programs and has worked to attract new businesses and industries that can benefit from the city's skilled workforce. The resilience and adaptability of the city in the face of economic challenges can be attributed in part to the strong sense of community and identity that exists within the city. The city has a rich cultural history and a strong sense of pride in its identity as a company town built to support the nuclear industry. This sense of community has helped the city to weather economic challenges and to develop new opportunities for growth and development. Moving forward, it will be important for Pripyat to continue to adapt to changing economic conditions and to embrace new industries and opportunities. The city has demonstrated resilience and adaptability in the wake of the Chernobyl disaster and the decline of the nuclear industry and has the potential to continue to grow and develop in the years ahead. In summary, the economic changes and challenges faced by Pripyat in the wake of the Chernobyl disaster and the decline of the Soviet Union had a significant impact on the city and its residents. However, the city has demonstrated resilience and adaptability and has worked to develop new industries and economic opportunities. The city's strong sense of community and identity has helped it to weather economic challenges and to position itself for continued growth and development in the future. Chapter 8 The Aftermath Coping with the Fallout of the Chernobyl Disaster The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 had a profound impact on the health of the individuals who were exposed to radiation in the aftermath of the event. The disaster led to a significant increase in cases of radiation sickness, and medical professionals were faced with the challenge of treating and managing these cases. Radiation sickness, also known as acute radiation syndrome, is a condition that occurs when an individual is exposed to high levels of radiation. 
Symptoms of radiation sickness include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever, and in severe cases, can lead to death. In the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, medical professionals were faced with a significant number of cases of radiation sickness. The severity of these cases varied, depending on the level of exposure, with individuals who were closer to the reactor experiencing more severe symptoms. The medical response to the disaster involved a number of different strategies, including the use of medication to manage symptoms and the administration of bone marrow transplants to individuals with severe cases of radiation sickness. One of the primary medications used to manage symptoms of radiation sickness is potassium iodide. This medication works by blocking the uptake of radioactive iodine in the thyroid gland, reducing the risk of thyroid cancer. Other medications, such as anti-nausea medication and pain relievers, were also used to manage symptoms. In severe cases of radiation sickness, bone marrow transplants were used to replace damaged bone marrow cells. This treatment involves the infusion of healthy bone marrow cells into the bloodstream and can help to restore the immune system and prevent life-threatening infections. The medical response to the Chernobyl disaster was complicated by a number of factors, including the lack of information about the long-term health effects of radiation exposure and the limited resources available to medical professionals in the region. In addition, the psychological impact of the disaster on medical professionals cannot be underestimated. Medical professionals were faced with the challenge of treating patients with a condition that was relatively new and poorly understood, and were often working under extremely difficult conditions. Despite these challenges, the medical response to the Chernobyl disaster provided important lessons for managing the health impacts of radiation exposure. The development of new treatments and medications, as well as improvements in understanding of the long-term health effects of radiation exposure, have helped to improve medical responses to similar disasters in the years since. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to invest in research and development of treatments for radiation sickness and to improve our understanding of the long-term health impacts of radiation exposure. While the medical response to the Chernobyl disaster was challenging, it also demonstrated the importance of investing in medical research and preparedness to mitigate the impact of future disasters. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 had a profound impact on the lives of the individuals who lived in the surrounding areas. In the aftermath of the disaster, the Soviet government implemented a massive evacuation and relocation effort aimed at protecting the health and safety of individuals living in the affected areas. The evacuation and relocation effort involved the evacuation of approximately 116,000 people from the city of Pripyat and the surrounding areas, and the relocation of many of these individuals to new homes and communities. This process was difficult and traumatic for many individuals, as they were forced to leave behind their homes, communities, and way of life. The process of evacuation and relocation was complex and difficult, and was made more challenging by the lack of information and resources available to individuals at the time. Many individuals were unsure about where they would be relocated, and were concerned about the impact that the relocation would have on their families, their jobs, and their way of life. In addition, the relocation effort was complicated by the fact that many individuals were exposed to high levels of radiation, and were concerned about the long-term health effects of this exposure. The process of decontamination and monitoring was time-consuming and challenging, and added to the stress and uncertainty faced by individuals who had been displaced by the disaster. Despite these challenges, many individuals who were affected by the Chernobyl disaster were able to adapt and cope with their displacement and loss. Communities came together to support one another, and individuals found ways to rebuild their lives in new homes and communities. For some individuals, the experience of displacement and loss was transformative. Many individuals who were relocated as a result of the Chernobyl disaster found new opportunities and experiences in their new homes and communities and were able to build new lives and forge new connections. However, for many individuals, the experience of displacement and loss was traumatic and difficult, 
and had long-lasting impacts on their lives and their health. The process of relocation was complicated by the lack of resources and support available to individuals, and many individuals struggled with the loss of their homes, communities, and way of life. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to learn from the experiences of those who were affected by the Chernobyl disaster and to develop strategies to better support individuals who are displaced by similar disasters in the future. By investing in preparedness and response strategies, and by providing resources and support to individuals who are affected by these disasters, we can help to mitigate the impacts of displacement and loss, and support individuals in rebuilding their lives and communities. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 had a profound impact not only on the physical health of individuals exposed to radiation, but also on their psychological well-being. The traumatic nature of the event and the loss of homes, communities, and way of life had a lasting impact on many individuals who were affected by the disaster. The psychological impact of the disaster was felt not only by those who were directly exposed to radiation, but also by individuals who were displaced by the evacuation and relocation efforts. The trauma of leaving behind their homes and communities and the uncertainty about their future left many individuals struggling with feelings of grief, anxiety, and depression. In addition, the psychological impact of the disaster was compounded by the lack of information and support available to individuals at the time. Many individuals were left with a sense of isolation and helplessness as they struggled to cope with the psychological and emotional impacts of the disaster. The psychological impacts of the Chernobyl disaster varied depending on a number of factors, including the level of exposure to radiation, the extent of the loss experienced, and individual factors such as age, gender, and personal resilience. However, there were a number of common experiences shared by many individuals who were affected by the disaster. One of the most common psychological impacts of the disaster was a sense of grief and loss. Many individuals were forced to leave behind their homes and communities and were unable to return due to the ongoing risks associated with radiation exposure. This loss of home and community had a profound impact on many individuals and left them struggling with feelings of sadness and grief. Another common psychological impact of the disaster was anxiety and fear. The uncertainty about the long-term health impacts of radiation exposure and the lack of information and support available to individuals left many people feeling anxious and fearful about their future. In addition, many individuals who were affected by the disaster struggled with feelings of guilt and shame. These feelings were often rooted in a sense of responsibility for the disaster, and a sense that they should have been able to prevent or mitigate its impacts. Despite these challenges, many individuals were able to find ways to cope with the psychological impacts of the disaster. Communities came together to support one another, and individuals found ways to rebuild their lives in new homes and communities. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to invest in resources and support for individuals who are affected by similar disasters in the future. By providing access to mental health services, community support, and information about the long-term health impacts of radiation exposure, we can help individuals to cope with the psychological impacts of these disasters and to rebuild their lives and communities. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 not only had a profound impact on the physical and psychological well-being of individuals who were exposed to radiation, but it also led to widespread discrimination and prejudice against those who were affected by the disaster. The stigma associated with radiation exposure left many individuals struggling with feelings of isolation, shame, and discrimination. One of the primary sources of stigma associated with radiation exposure was the fear and misunderstanding about the long-term health impacts of exposure. Many individuals who were exposed to radiation were viewed with suspicion and fear, as others worried about the potential risks of being in close proximity to them. In addition, the stigma associated with radiation exposure was often compounded by broader societal prejudices and discrimination. Many individuals who were exposed to radiation 
were from marginalized or minority communities and were already facing discrimination and marginalization prior to the disaster. The stigma associated with radiation exposure had a profound impact on the lives of individuals who were affected by the disaster. Many individuals were ostracized from their communities and faced difficulties finding work, housing, and social support. Despite these challenges, many individuals were able to navigate the stigma associated with radiation exposure and find ways to rebuild their lives. Communities came together to support one another, and individuals found ways to advocate for their rights and challenge discrimination. One of the most effective ways that individuals coped with the stigma of radiation exposure was through education and advocacy. By educating others about the realities of radiation exposure and advocating for their rights and the rights of others who were affected by the disaster, individuals were able to challenge discrimination and stigma. In addition, many individuals found strength in community support and solidarity. By coming together with others who had experienced similar challenges, individuals were able to build networks of support and find a sense of belonging and connection. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to address the stigma associated with radiation exposure and support individuals who are affected by similar disasters in the future. By investing in education, advocacy, and community support, we can help individuals to navigate the challenges of stigma and discrimination and rebuild their lives and communities. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 had a profound and lasting impact on the lives of individuals who were affected by the disaster. The long-term health and environmental consequences of the disaster continue to be felt to this day and have had a lasting impact on the lives of those who were exposed to radiation. One of the most significant long-term effects of the disaster was the impact on the health of individuals who were exposed to radiation. The long-term health effects of radiation exposure can be difficult to predict and can manifest in a range of ways. Many individuals who were exposed to radiation have experienced a range of health problems, including cancers, cardiovascular disease, and thyroid disorders. In addition to the long-term health effects of radiation exposure, the Chernobyl disaster also had a significant impact on the environment. The release of radioactive materials into the atmosphere and the surrounding area led to significant environmental contamination and had a lasting impact on the ecosystem and wildlife in the area. Despite these challenges, many individuals who were affected by the disaster have found ways to cope with the long-term effects of radiation exposure and environmental contamination. Communities have come together to support one another, and individuals have found ways to rebuild their lives and communities in the wake of the disaster. One of the most effective ways that individuals have coped with the long-term effects of the disaster is through education and advocacy. By advocating for their rights and the rights of others who were affected by the disaster, individuals have been able to challenge discrimination and stigma and to promote greater awareness about the long-term health and environmental consequences of radiation exposure. In addition, many individuals have found strength in community support and solidarity. By coming together with others who have experienced similar challenges, individuals have been able to build networks of support and find a sense of belonging and connection. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to address the long-term effects of the Chernobyl disaster and support individuals who are affected by similar disasters in the future. By investing in education, advocacy, and community support, we can help individuals to navigate the challenges of long-term health and environmental consequences and rebuild their lives and communities. Chapter 9, Memories of Pripyat, Reflections from Former Residents Pripyat, the model Soviet city built to house workers and families associated with the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant, provided a unique childhood experience for its residents. The city was designed to provide a high standard of living for its inhabitants, with modern amenities and services, as well as access to cultural and educational opportunities. For children growing up in Pripyat, the city offered a unique and privileged childhood experience, 
with opportunities for education, recreation, and socialization. One of the key features of childhood in Pripyat was the emphasis on education and intellectual development. The city had a well-developed system of schools and educational programs, with a particular focus on science and technology. Children were encouraged to pursue careers in science and engineering, and many went on to work at the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant. In addition to education, childhood in Pripyat was marked by a range of recreational and cultural activities. The city had a number of parks and public spaces, as well as cultural institutions, such as theaters and museums. Children were encouraged to participate in extracurricular activities, such as sports and music, and many developed skills and interests that they carried with them throughout their lives. The sense of community and socialization was also a key aspect of childhood in Pripyat. The city was designed to encourage interaction and socialization among its residents, with public spaces and services that brought people together. Children had many opportunities to interact with their peers, and friendships formed in childhood often lasted a lifetime. Despite these positive aspects of childhood in Pripyat, the city was not without its challenges. The emphasis on science and technology, for example, could be limiting for children who were interested in other fields. Additionally, the city's isolation and distance from other communities could be a source of frustration for some children. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 had a profound impact on the childhood experiences of those who were living in Pripyat at the time. The evacuation and relocation efforts left many children struggling with feelings of loss and uncertainty as they were forced to leave behind their homes, communities, and way of life. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to study and understand the unique childhood experiences of those who grew up in Pripyat. By understanding the strengths and challenges of childhood in a model Soviet city, we can learn from the past and work to create more equitable and fulfilling childhood experiences for future generations. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 had a profound impact on the lives of the engineers and technicians who worked at the nearby nuclear power plant in Pripyat. For many of these individuals, working in the nuclear industry was a source of pride and accomplishment, as they contributed to the development of an important technology that was seen as critical to the future of Soviet society. However, the disaster also highlighted the dangers and risks associated with working in the nuclear industry and left many of these individuals struggling with feelings of guilt and trauma. Working in the nuclear industry required a high level of technical expertise and training. Engineers and technicians at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant were responsible for the operation and maintenance of the plant's reactors, as well as the safety and security of the plant and its workers. These individuals were highly skilled and committed to their work and saw themselves as playing an important role in the development of a new and important industry. However, the Chernobyl disaster revealed the dangers and risks associated with working in the nuclear industry. The explosion and release of radioactive materials had a profound impact on the health and safety of those who were working at the plant, as well as the surrounding community. Many of the engineers and technicians who were working at the plant at the time of the disaster were exposed to high levels of radiation and faced significant health risks as a result. In addition to the physical risks associated with working in the nuclear industry, the disaster also had a profound impact on the psychological well-being of those who were involved. Many engineers and technicians struggled with feelings of guilt and responsibility for the disaster and felt that they had failed in their duties to ensure the safety and security of the plant and its workers. Despite these challenges, many engineers and technicians who worked in the nuclear industry continued to see themselves as contributing to an important technology that had the potential to revolutionize society. They saw themselves as playing a critical role in ensuring the safety and security of the plant and its workers, and remained committed to their work despite the risks and challenges. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to study and understand the experiences of engineers and technicians who work in the nuclear industry. By understanding the strengths and challenges of this industry, we can work to develop safer and more sustainable technologies that benefit society as a whole. Additionally, 
by supporting and advocating for the health and well-being of those who work in the nuclear industry, we can help to ensure that this important industry is able to thrive in a safe and responsible manner. Daily life in Pripyat was structured around a variety of routines and rituals that reflected the unique culture and values of this model Soviet city. The city was designed to provide a high standard of living for its residents, with modern amenities and services that were meant to promote health, happiness, and productivity. These amenities and services, as well as the social and cultural institutions that they supported, played a significant role in shaping the daily lives of Pripyat residents. One of the most important routines in Pripyat was work. The city was built to house workers associated with the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant, and many residents spent their days working in the plant or in related industries. The work was demanding and required a high level of technical expertise, but was also seen as a source of pride and accomplishment for many residents. In addition to work, daily life in Pripyat was structured around a variety of leisure activities and social events. The city had a number of parks and public spaces that were used for recreation and exercise, and many residents participated in sports teams and other organized activities. The city also had a number of cultural institutions, including theaters and museums, that provided opportunities for artistic and intellectual development. Social events and celebrations also played an important role in the daily life of Pripyat residents. The city had a number of festivals and events throughout the year, including May Day celebrations and the City Day Festival. These events provided opportunities for socialization and community building and helped to create a sense of identity and belonging among city residents. Daily life in Pripyat was also marked by a strong sense of community and social support. The city was designed to promote interaction and socialization among its residents, with public spaces and services that brought people together. This sense of community was reinforced by the fact that many residents had moved to the city from other parts of the Soviet Union and had formed close bonds with their neighbors and co-workers. Despite the many positive aspects of daily life in Pripyat, the city was not without its challenges. The isolation and distance from other communities could be a source of frustration for some residents, and the emphasis on science and technology could be limiting for those who were interested in other fields. Additionally, the Chernobyl disaster of 1986 had a profound impact on the daily lives of Pripyat residents, leaving many struggling with feelings of loss, trauma, and uncertainty. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to study and understand the daily routines and rituals of life in Pripyat. By understanding the strengths and challenges of this unique city, we can learn from its successes and failures, and work to create more equitable and fulfilling daily lives for people around the world. Additionally, by supporting and advocating for the health and well-being of those who have been affected by the Chernobyl disaster, we can help to ensure that the legacy of this important city lives on. The evacuation and relocation of Pripyat residents following the Chernobyl disaster of 1986 was a difficult and emotional decision that had a profound impact on the lives of thousands of people. The decision to leave behind their homes, jobs and communities was not taken lightly and was made with the understanding that the risks posed by the disaster were simply too great to ignore. The evacuation of Pripyat was carried out in a highly organized and systematic manner, with authorities working to ensure the safety and security of residents as they left the city. Buses and other transportation were provided to help people leave the city, and residents were given instructions on what to do and where to go in the event of an emergency. Despite these efforts, the evacuation was a chaotic and confusing process, with many residents unsure of what was happening or where they were going. For many residents, the decision to leave Pripyat was a deeply emotional one. The city had been their home for many years, and they had built close relationships with their neighbors and co-workers. Leaving behind these relationships and the sense of community that had been created in Pripyat was a difficult and painful experience, and many residents struggled with feelings of loss and grief as they left the city. In addition to the emotional toll of the evacuation, the relocation process was also marked by a number of practical challenges. 
Many residents were forced to leave behind their belongings and personal possessions, and were unsure of where they would be living or what their future held. The relocation process was also complicated by the fact that many residents had been exposed to high levels of radiation and needed to undergo medical screenings and treatment before they could be relocated to a new community. Despite these challenges, the evacuation and relocation of Pripyat residents was ultimately necessary to ensure their safety and security. The risks posed by the disaster were simply too great to ignore, and it was clear that the long-term health and well-being of the city's residents would be put in danger if they remained in Pripyat. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to support and advocate for the health and well-being of those who were impacted by the evacuation and relocation of Pripyat residents. By understanding the challenges and difficulties that these individuals faced, we can work to create more effective and compassionate emergency response systems that prioritize the safety and security of all people. Additionally, by studying the legacy of the Chernobyl disaster and its impact on the lives of Pripyat residents, we can work to create more sustainable and resilient communities that are better equipped to face the challenges of the future. As the years have passed since the evacuation of Pripyat following the Chernobyl disaster, former residents have had time to reflect on their experiences living in the city and the impact that its legacy has had on their lives. For many, their time in Pripyat was marked by a strong sense of community and social support, as well as a deep appreciation for the city's modern amenities and services. However, the disaster itself and the subsequent evacuation and relocation have left a lasting mark on the lives of those who were impacted, with many struggling to come to terms with the trauma and loss that they experienced. For some former residents, their time in Pripyat was defined by the sense of community and social support that was cultivated within the city. Pripyat was designed to promote interaction and socialization among its residents, with public spaces and services that brought people together. This sense of community was reinforced by the fact that many residents had moved to the city from other parts of the Soviet Union and had formed close bonds with their neighbors and co-workers. Even today, former residents continue to reflect on the strong relationships that they built while living in Pripyat and the sense of belonging and identity that they derived from their time in the city. Others, however, have struggled with the trauma and loss that they experienced as a result of the Chernobyl disaster and the subsequent evacuation and relocation. For many, the sudden and unexpected nature of the disaster left them struggling to cope with feelings of fear, grief, and uncertainty. The evacuation and relocation process was also fraught with difficulties, with many residents forced to leave behind their homes, belongings, and communities. For some, the experience was so traumatic that they continue to struggle with the physical and emotional effects of the disaster to this day. Despite the challenges and difficulties that they faced, former residents continue to reflect on the legacy of Pripyat and the important role that the city played in their lives. Many view the city as a symbol of hope and progress, with its modern amenities and services representing the best of Soviet innovation and industry. Others, however, are more ambivalent about the legacy of Pripyat, recognizing the important contributions that the city made to Soviet society while also acknowledging the devastating impact of the Chernobyl disaster. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to listen to and support the perspectives of former Pripyat residents. By understanding the unique challenges and opportunities that the city presented, we can work to create more equitable and fulfilling daily lives for people around the world. Additionally, by advocating for the health and well-being of those who were impacted by the Chernobyl disaster, we can help to ensure that the legacy of Pripyat lives on, even as we work to prevent future disasters and promote a more sustainable and resilient future. Chapter 10, Lessons Learned, The Legacy of Chernobyl for Nuclear Safety The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 had a profound impact on the global nuclear industry, changing the way that engineers, scientists, and policymakers think about safety and risk management in the development and operation of nuclear facilities. Prior to the disaster, there was a prevailing attitude among many in the industry that accidents were unlikely to occur, 
and that the risks associated with nuclear energy were manageable. However, the disaster at Chernobyl shattered this complacency, revealing the devastating consequences of inadequate safety culture and the dangers of taking risks with complex and powerful technologies. One of the most important lessons of the Chernobyl disaster was the critical role that safety culture plays in ensuring the safe and effective operation of nuclear facilities. Safety culture refers to the attitudes, beliefs, and values that shape the behavior of those who work in the nuclear industry, as well as the policies and procedures that govern their activities. At Chernobyl, the lack of a strong safety culture contributed to the disaster, with engineers and operators failing to recognize and respond to warning signs and risks associated with the reactor's operation. Following the disaster, there was a renewed emphasis on safety culture within the nuclear industry, with policymakers and industry leaders recognizing the importance of creating a culture of safety that prioritized risk management, transparency, and accountability. This involved developing new regulations and standards for nuclear facility design and operation, as well as investing in training and education programs to promote a strong safety culture among workers and management. One of the key ways that the industry has worked to improve safety culture in the wake of Chernobyl is through the development of rigorous risk management protocols and procedures. This involves identifying potential risks and hazards associated with nuclear facility operation and implementing controls and safeguards to mitigate these risks and prevent accidents from occurring. This approach emphasizes the importance of continuous monitoring and evaluation of safety performance with a focus on identifying and addressing potential issues before they become critical. Another important aspect of safety culture in the nuclear industry is the promotion of transparency and communication. This involves creating an environment in which workers and management are encouraged to report safety concerns and near-miss incidents without fear of reprisal or retaliation. By creating a culture of openness and accountability, the industry can work to identify potential safety issues early and implement appropriate measures to mitigate risk and prevent accidents from occurring. Despite the progress that has been made in improving safety culture in the nuclear industry since the Chernobyl disaster, there are still ongoing challenges and concerns. The Fukushima disaster in 2011 highlighted the continued risks associated with nuclear energy and raised questions about the effectiveness of safety culture and risk management protocols in preventing accidents. Additionally, concerns about the long-term environmental and health impacts of nuclear energy continue to drive public debate and discussion about the future of the industry. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to prioritize safety culture in the development and operation of nuclear facilities and to work to build public trust and confidence in the industry's ability to manage risk and prevent accidents. By promoting a strong safety culture that emphasizes risk management, transparency, and accountability, the industry can work to ensure that the legacy of the Chernobyl disaster is one of lessons learned rather than tragedy repeated. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 was a stark reminder of the dangers of nuclear power and it highlighted the critical importance of transparency and accountability in the operation of nuclear facilities. The disaster was caused in part by a lack of openness and communication between engineers and operators at the reactor, as well as by a failure of oversight and accountability on the part of government regulators and industry leaders. As a result, the Chernobyl disaster had a profound impact on the way that the nuclear industry thinks about transparency communication, and oversight. One of the most important lessons of the Chernobyl disaster was the need for transparency and openness in the operation of nuclear facilities. Prior to the disaster, there was a prevailing attitude among many in the industry that accidents were unlikely to occur and that the risks associated with nuclear energy were manageable. However, the disaster at Chernobyl shattered this complacency revealing the devastating consequences of inadequate communication and openness in the management of nuclear facilities. Following the disaster, there was a renewed emphasis on transparency and accountability in the nuclear industry, 
with policymakers and industry leaders recognizing the critical importance of open communication and oversight in ensuring the safe and effective operation of nuclear facilities. This involved developing new regulations and standards for nuclear facility design and operation, as well as investing in training and education programs to promote a culture of openness and accountability among workers and management. One of the key ways that the industry has worked to improve transparency and accountability in the wake of Chernobyl is through the development of rigorous oversight and regulatory frameworks. This involves creating independent regulatory bodies that are responsible for monitoring and enforcing safety regulations, as well as promoting transparency and accountability in the industry. By creating an independent oversight framework, the industry can work to ensure that safety concerns are identified and addressed, and that the public can have confidence in the safety and effectiveness of nuclear energy. Another important aspect of transparency and accountability in the nuclear industry is the need for open communication between engineers, operators, regulators, and the public. This involves creating an environment in which workers and management are encouraged to report safety concerns and near-miss incidents, and in which regulators are able to share information and collaborate with industry leaders to promote safety and accountability. By promoting open communication and collaboration, the industry can work to identify potential safety issues early and implement appropriate measures to mitigate risk and prevent accidents from occurring. Despite the progress that has been made in improving transparency and accountability in the nuclear industry since the Chernobyl disaster, there are still ongoing challenges and concerns. The Fukushima disaster in 2011 highlighted the continued risks associated with nuclear energy and raised questions about the effectiveness of regulatory oversight and accountability in preventing accidents. Additionally, concerns about the long-term environmental and health impacts of nuclear energy continue to drive public debate and discussion about the future of the industry. Moving forward, it will be important to continue to prioritize transparency and accountability in the development and operation of nuclear facilities and to work to build public trust and confidence in the industry's ability to manage risk and prevent accidents. By promoting a culture of openness and accountability that emphasizes communication, collaboration, and oversight, the industry can work to ensure that the legacy of the Chernobyl disaster is one of lessons learned rather than tragedy repeated. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 was a tragic reminder of the critical importance of human factors in the operation of nuclear facilities. While the accident was caused in part by design flaws and technical failures, it was ultimately the result of human errors and poor decision-making on the part of operators and engineers at the reactor. The disaster highlighted the crucial role that human performance and decision-making play in nuclear safety, and it underscored the need for ongoing investment in training, education, and research to promote safe and effective human performance in nuclear operations. One of the key lessons of the Chernobyl disaster was the importance of human performance in ensuring the safety and effectiveness of nuclear operations. Prior to the disaster, there was a prevailing attitude among many in the industry that technology alone could manage the risks associated with nuclear energy, and that human error was an inevitable but manageable part of the equation. However, the disaster at Chernobyl revealed the devastating consequences of poor human performance and decision-making in the operation of nuclear facilities and it highlighted the need for ongoing investment in training and education to promote safe and effective human performance. Following the disaster, there was a renewed emphasis on the role of human factors in nuclear safety, with policymakers and industry leaders recognizing the importance of promoting a culture of safety that emphasizes human performance and decision-making. This involved investing in training and education programs to promote safe and effective human performance, as well as conducting research to better understand the factors that contribute to human error and poor decision-making. One of the key challenges in promoting safe and effective human performance in the nuclear industry is the complexity and high-stress nature of nuclear operations. Nuclear facilities are highly regulated, 
and workers are required to navigate a complex web of rules and procedures in order to ensure safety and compliance. Additionally, workers must often perform their duties under high-pressure conditions, with little room for error or delay. These factors can contribute to fatigue, stress, and poor decision-making, all of which can increase the risk of accidents and errors. To address these challenges, the industry has focused on developing strategies and tools to support safe and effective human performance in nuclear operations. This includes the development of human factors engineering approaches that take into account the needs and limitations of human operators, as well as the implementation of training and education programs that emphasize the importance of human performance and decision-making. Additionally, the industry has invested in research to better understand the factors that contribute to human error and poor decision-making, and to develop strategies for mitigating these risks. Despite the progress that has been made in promoting safe and effective human performance in the nuclear industry since the Chernobyl disaster, there are still ongoing challenges and concerns. The Fukushima disaster in 2011 highlighted the continued risks associated with nuclear energy and raised questions about the effectiveness of human performance and decision-making in preventing accidents. Additionally, concerns about the impact of automation and digitalization on human performance in nuclear operations continue to drive debate and discussion about the future of the industry. Moving forward, it will be critical to continue to prioritize human factors in the development and operation of nuclear facilities, and to work to build a culture of safety that emphasizes the importance of safe and effective human performance and decision-making. By investing in training, education and research that promotes safe and effective human performance, the industry can work to ensure that the legacy of the Chernobyl disaster is one of lessons learned, rather than tragedy repeated. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 brought into sharp relief the complex and contentious debate surrounding the use of nuclear energy as a source of power. While nuclear energy offers a number of benefits, including its high energy density, low carbon emissions, and potential to provide stable and reliable power, it also presents a number of drawbacks, including the risk of accidents and the challenge of disposing of radioactive waste. The disaster at Chernobyl highlighted both the potential benefits and drawbacks of nuclear energy and contributed to a global conversation about the role of nuclear power in the future of energy production. One of the primary benefits of nuclear energy is its high energy density, which allows for the production of large amounts of electricity with relatively small amounts of fuel. This makes nuclear energy an attractive option for meeting growing energy demand, particularly in areas where other sources of energy may be limited or unreliable. Additionally, nuclear energy produces very low levels of carbon emissions, making it an appealing option for countries seeking to reduce their carbon footprint and mitigate the effects of climate change. However, the benefits of nuclear energy must be weighed against its potential drawbacks which include the risk of accidents and the challenge of disposing of radioactive waste. The disaster at Chernobyl highlighted the very real risks associated with nuclear energy, including the potential for catastrophic accidents that can have devastating consequences for human health and the environment. Additionally, the long-term storage and disposal of radioactive waste presents a significant challenge, with no clear solution currently available. In the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, the global conversation about the role of nuclear energy shifted, with many countries reconsidering their reliance on nuclear power and pursuing alternative sources of energy. Some countries, such as Germany, have committed to phasing out nuclear energy altogether, while others, such as China and India, have continued to invest in nuclear power as a source of energy, citing the need for reliable and stable sources of power to meet growing energy demand. The debate surrounding nuclear energy remains contentious, with advocates and detractors on both sides of the issue. Proponents of nuclear energy argue that it represents a safe, reliable, and carbon-free source of power that can help to meet growing energy demand and mitigate the effects of climate change. They point to improvements in technology and safety measures, as well as the potential for nuclear energy to reduce dependence on fossil fuels 
and provide energy security. Critics of nuclear energy, however, argue that the risks associated with nuclear power, including the potential for catastrophic accidents and the challenge of radioactive waste disposal, outweigh the benefits. They also point to the high cost of nuclear energy, as well as the potential for nuclear power to divert resources away from more sustainable and renewable sources of energy. The debate over nuclear energy is likely to continue for years to come, with no clear resolution in sight. However, the legacy of the Chernobyl disaster serves as a reminder of the very real risks associated with nuclear energy and underscores the importance of ongoing investment in safety and regulatory measures to minimize those risks. As the world continues to grapple with the challenge of meeting growing energy demand while mitigating the effects of climate change, the role of nuclear energy will undoubtedly remain a topic of intense debate and scrutiny. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 remains one of the most catastrophic events in modern history, with far-reaching consequences that continue to be felt today. The disaster not only had a profound impact on the lives of those who were directly affected by it, but also fundamentally transformed the global conversation about nuclear safety and the risks associated with nuclear energy. One of the most significant legacies of the Chernobyl disaster is its ongoing impact on nuclear safety policy and practice. In the wake of the disaster, there was a renewed focus on the need for robust safety measures and rigorous regulatory oversight of nuclear power plants. The lessons learned from Chernobyl led to significant changes in nuclear safety policy and practice including improvements in reactor design, enhanced safety protocols, and greater emphasis on emergency preparedness and response. One of the key changes that occurred in the aftermath of Chernobyl was a shift toward a more proactive approach to nuclear safety. Prior to the disaster, the prevailing approach to nuclear safety had been largely reactive, with regulatory agencies primarily focused on responding to incidents after they occurred. However, the Chernobyl disaster highlighted the need for a more proactive approach to safety, with greater emphasis on risk assessment, accident prevention, and continuous improvement. Another important legacy of Chernobyl has been the increased focus on transparency and open communication in the nuclear industry. In the aftermath of the disaster, there was widespread criticism of the Soviet Union's handling of the incident with many arguing that the lack of transparency and openness contributed to the severity of the disaster. This led to a greater emphasis on transparency and open communication in the nuclear industry, with a growing recognition of the importance of public trust and confidence in the safety of nuclear power. The legacy of the Chernobyl disaster has also been felt in the realm of international cooperation and collaboration on nuclear safety. In the aftermath of the disaster, there was a growing recognition of the need for international cooperation and collaboration on nuclear safety, particularly in the sharing of information and best practices. This led to the development of a number of international initiatives and organizations focused on nuclear safety, including the International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA, and the Convention on Nuclear Safety. Today, the legacy of Chernobyl continues to shape nuclear safety policy and practice around the world. The disaster remains a potent reminder of the risks associated with nuclear power and has spurred ongoing efforts to improve safety and mitigate those risks. In recent years, there has been renewed interest in nuclear power as a source of clean energy, particularly in the context of efforts to mitigate the effects of climate change. However, the legacy of Chernobyl serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of safety and regulatory oversight in the nuclear industry, and underscores the ongoing need for vigilance and continuous improvement in the pursuit of nuclear safety. In summary, the Chernobyl disaster of 1986 remains a seminal event in the history of nuclear power, with far-reaching consequences that continue to be felt today. The disaster fundamentally transformed the global conversation about nuclear safety and led to significant changes in nuclear safety policy and practice around the world. Today, the legacy of Chernobyl serves as a powerful reminder of the risks associated with nuclear power, 
and underscores the ongoing need for vigilance, transparency, and continuous improvement in the pursuit of nuclear safety. Chapter 11, Reclaiming the Land, Environmental Remediation Efforts in Pripyat The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 not only had a profound impact on human life and health, but also had significant consequences for the environment. The explosion and subsequent radiation release at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant resulted in the contamination of vast areas of land, water, and air, with long-lasting effects on the ecosystems and wildlife of the region. One of the most significant environmental consequences of the Chernobyl disaster was the contamination of soil and water with radioactive isotopes, particularly cesium-137 and strontium-90. These isotopes have a half-life of approximately 30 years, meaning that they will continue to emit radiation for many decades to come. As a result, vast areas of land in the vicinity of the Chernobyl plant remain contaminated and uninhabitable. The contamination of soil and water has also had a significant impact on the local ecosystem. In the immediate aftermath of the disaster, many species of wildlife were killed or forced to flee the contaminated area. Those that remained were exposed to high levels of radiation, which led to a range of health problems and reproductive abnormalities. For example, Studies have shown that birds and insects living in the contaminated areas had significantly lower fertility rates and higher rates of genetic mutations. The long-term impact of radiation exposure on the local ecosystem is still not fully understood, but there are concerns that it may have significant consequences for the health and survival of many species. For example, studies have shown that populations of some species, such as the European bison, have declined significantly in the years following the disaster. There are also concerns that radiation exposure may increase the risk of cancer and other health problems in animals living in the contaminated areas. The impact of the Chernobyl disaster on the environment has not been limited to the immediate vicinity of the nuclear power plant. The explosion and subsequent release of radioactive materials led to the deposition of contaminated particles over a wide area, including parts of Europe and Asia. This led to the contamination of soil and water in many areas, with significant consequences for the health and well-being of people and wildlife living in those regions. The environmental consequences of the Chernobyl disaster have been felt in many different ways, including the loss of biodiversity, the contamination of water and soil, and the disruption of ecosystem processes. However, there have also been some unexpected and positive outcomes. For example, the exclusion zone around the Chernobyl plant has become a unique laboratory for studying the long-term effects of radiation exposure on wildlife and ecosystems. This has led to important insights into the ways in which radiation affects different species and has helped to inform conservation efforts in other parts of the world. Despite these positive outcomes, the legacy of the Chernobyl disaster remains a profound and enduring tragedy. The contamination of vast areas of land and water with radioactive materials has had a significant impact on the environment and the health and well-being of people and wildlife living in the region. Today, the legacy of Chernobyl serves as a powerful reminder of the potential consequences of nuclear accidents and underscores the ongoing need for vigilance and precaution in the pursuit of nuclear safety. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 left behind a legacy of radioactive contamination that has endured for decades. One of the most pressing challenges facing authorities in the aftermath of the disaster was the task of cleaning up the contaminated site and disposing of the vast quantities of radioactive debris and waste that had accumulated in the area. The first phase of the cleanup effort involved the removal of the most highly contaminated materials from the immediate vicinity of the reactor. This included the removal of soil and vegetation, as well as the dismantling of the reactor itself and the surrounding infrastructure. This work was carried out by a team of workers who were exposed to high levels of radiation and worked under extremely hazardous conditions. As the cleanup effort progressed, the focus shifted to the management and disposal of the vast quantities of radioactive waste that had accumulated at the site. 
This included a wide range of materials, including contaminated soil, debris, and equipment. The waste was transported to specially designed storage facilities, where it was carefully monitored and managed to prevent further contamination of the environment. One of the most challenging aspects of the cleanup effort was the removal of the reactor's highly radioactive fuel rods. These were located in the reactor's core and were extremely hot and dangerous. The task of removing the fuel rods was carried out using remotely controlled equipment and required the development of new technologies and techniques to ensure the safety of the workers involved. The cleanup effort at Chernobyl was a massive and complex undertaking, requiring the mobilization of vast resources and the development of new technologies and techniques. It also required the cooperation of numerous agencies and organizations, both within the Soviet Union and internationally. Despite the efforts of the cleanup teams, however, significant areas of the site remain contaminated and uninhabitable to this day. The long-term impact of the disaster on the environment and the health of people and wildlife in the region is still not fully understood, and the legacy of Chernobyl serves as a powerful reminder of the potential consequences of nuclear accidents. In the years since the disaster, there have been significant efforts to improve nuclear safety and prevent similar accidents from occurring in the future. The cleanup effort at Chernobyl played an important role in highlighting the importance of safety culture, transparency, and accountability in the nuclear industry, and underscored the need for ongoing vigilance and precaution in the pursuit of nuclear safety. Today, the legacy of Chernobyl continues to be felt around the world, and the lessons learned from the disaster continue to inform efforts to improve nuclear safety and prevent similar accidents from occurring in the future. Despite the challenges and difficulties of the cleanup effort, the dedication and bravery of the workers involved have left a lasting legacy of hope and perseverance in the face of adversity. The radioactive contamination that resulted from the Chernobyl disaster of 1986 left behind a legacy of soil contamination that has persisted for decades. Removing radioactive materials from the soil is a complex and challenging task that requires specialized techniques and technologies. The first step in decontaminating soil is to identify the extent and nature of the contamination. This is typically done through a combination of field surveys and laboratory analyses. Once the contamination has been identified, a range of different techniques can be employed to remove the radioactive materials from the soil. One of the most common techniques for decontaminating soil is soil washing. This involves excavating contaminated soil and washing it with water or other solutions that dissolve the radioactive materials. The resulting solution is then treated to remove the radioactive materials and the clean soil is returned to the site. Another technique is bioremediation, which uses microorganisms to break down the radioactive materials in the soil. This involves introducing bacteria or fungi to the contaminated soil which then break down the radioactive materials into harmless substances. Phytoremediation is another technique that involves the use of plants to remove radioactive materials from the soil. This can be done through the use of plants that are naturally able to absorb radioactive materials or by genetically engineering plants to be better suited to this task. Chemical treatments can also be used to decontaminate soil. This involves the use of chemicals that bind to the radioactive materials in the soil, making them less mobile and less likely to spread. These treatments can be effective in reducing the amount of radioactive materials in the soil, but can also have negative environmental impacts if not carefully managed. The most challenging aspect of soil decontamination is dealing with highly contaminated areas that are difficult or impossible to access. In these cases, Specialized equipment and techniques are needed to excavate the contaminated soil and remove it from the site. This can involve the use of robots or remote-controlled equipment, as well as specialized protective gear for workers. The decontamination of soil is a complex and challenging process that requires specialized knowledge and expertise. Despite the difficulties, however, the techniques and technologies for soil decontamination continue to improve offering hope for the restoration of contaminated areas 
and the mitigation of the long-term effects of nuclear accidents. The legacy of the Chernobyl disaster serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of ongoing vigilance and precaution in the pursuit of nuclear safety. It also underscores the need for continued research and development of new techniques and technologies for the decontamination of soil and the mitigation of the environmental and health impacts of nuclear accidents. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 left behind a contaminated zone that was thought to be uninhabitable for decades, if not centuries. However, over the past few decades, scientists have observed an unexpected resurgence of plant and animal life in the area, offering hope for the restoration of the ecosystem and the mitigation of the long-term effects of nuclear accidents. One of the most surprising observations has been the return of large mammals such as wolves, elk, and wild boar to the Chernobyl zone. This is thought to be due in part to the absence of human activity in the area, which has allowed these animals to thrive without the usual pressures of hunting and habitat destruction. In addition, the radioactive contamination has led to the abandonment of farmland and other human settlements, creating new habitat for these and other animals. Despite the presence of radioactive contamination, plant life has also been observed to be flourishing in the Chernobyl zone. Some researchers have suggested that the radioactive materials may actually be providing a benefit to certain plants, as they can stimulate growth and development. Others have suggested that the absence of human activity and the reduction in agricultural practices may also be contributing to the resurgence of plant life. Scientists have also observed a wide variety of insects and other invertebrates in the Chernobyl zone, indicating a thriving ecosystem despite the presence of radioactive contamination. In fact, some researchers have suggested that the radiation may actually be serving as a form of natural selection, favoring species that are more resistant to the effects of radiation. While the resurgence of plant and animal life in the Chernobyl zone is encouraging, it is important to note that the area is still contaminated with radioactive materials and that the long-term effects on the ecosystem and human health are not yet fully understood. In addition, there are concerns about the potential for radiation to accumulate in the food chain, leading to health risks for animals and humans who consume contaminated plants or animals. Despite these concerns, the resurgence of plant and animal life in the Chernobyl zone offers hope for the restoration of the ecosystem and the mitigation of the long-term effects of nuclear accidents. Scientists continue to study the area and the plants and animals that inhabit it, seeking to better understand the complex interactions between radiation and the environment. These efforts are essential for developing strategies for the restoration of contaminated areas and the protection of human health and the environment in the aftermath of nuclear accidents. The Chernobyl disaster serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of ongoing vigilance and precaution in the pursuit of nuclear safety. It also underscores the need for continued research and development of new techniques and technologies for the restoration of contaminated areas and the mitigation of the environmental and health impacts of nuclear accidents. Only through such efforts can we hope to minimize the risks of nuclear energy production and ensure the safety and well-being of current and future generations. Environmental remediation refers to the process of restoring ecosystems that have been damaged by human activities or natural disasters. The goal of environmental remediation is to return ecosystems to their pre-damaged state or to improve the ecological health of an area. The long-term impact of environmental remediation can be seen in the recovery and thriving of land and wildlife that have been restored to their natural state. Environmental remediation efforts can take many forms, including the removal of pollutants or contaminants, the restoration of habitats, and the reintroduction of native species. These efforts can be time-consuming and costly, but they can also have a significant impact on the health and well-being of ecosystems and the species that inhabit them. One example of successful environmental remediation is the restoration of wetlands in the United States. Wetlands play a critical role in filtering water and providing habitat for a variety of species. However, many wetlands have been drained or filled in for development, 
leading to a loss of habitat and increased flooding. In response, environmental remediation efforts have focused on restoring wetlands by reintroducing native vegetation and controlling water flow. The long-term impact of wetland restoration efforts has been significant. Wetland restoration has led to improved water quality, increased habitat for wildlife, and reduced flooding in surrounding areas. In addition, the restoration of wetlands has also provided economic benefits through increased tourism and recreational opportunities. Another example of successful environmental remediation is the cleanup of contaminated sites. Contaminated sites can pose significant health risks to humans and wildlife, and the process of cleaning up these sites can be complex and challenging. However, successful environmental remediation efforts have led to the removal of contaminants and the restoration of ecosystems to their natural state. One example of successful cleanup is the restoration of the Hudson River in New York State. The Hudson River was contaminated with polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, from industrial activity, leading to health risks for humans and wildlife. In response, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, launched a cleanup effort that involved the removal of contaminated sediment and the reintroduction of native fish species. The long-term impact of the cleanup effort has been significant. The removal of PCBs from the Hudson River has led to improved water quality, increased fish populations, and reduced health risks for humans and wildlife. In addition, the restoration of the river has also provided economic benefits through increased tourism and recreational opportunities. Environmental remediation efforts can also have a significant impact on the recovery and thriving of wildlife populations. For example, the reintroduction of wolves in Yellowstone National Park has led to a resurgence of plant and animal life in the area. The wolves have helped to control populations of deer and elk, which in turn has allowed vegetation to recover and provide habitat for a variety of species. The long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts on the recovery and thriving of ecosystems and wildlife cannot be overstated. Successful remediation efforts can lead to improved ecological health, increased biodiversity, and economic benefits. However, environmental remediation is a complex and ongoing process that requires ongoing research and development of new techniques and technologies. In summary, the long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts can be seen in the recovery and thriving of land and wildlife that have been restored to their natural state. Successful remediation efforts have led to improved ecological health, increased biodiversity, and economic benefits. However, ongoing research and development of new techniques and technologies are essential for continued success in environmental remediation efforts. By investing in these efforts, we can ensure the health and well-being of ecosystems and the species that inhabit them for generations to come. Despite the initial devastation caused by the explosion and release of radioactive materials, the land and wildlife in the affected area have shown remarkable resilience and recovery in the decades since the incident. This is in large part due to the extensive efforts of scientists and environmentalists to mitigate the effects of the disaster and promote the restoration of the local ecosystem. One of the primary methods of environmental remediation was the decontamination of the soil. This was done through a variety of techniques, including the removal and disposal of contaminated topsoil, the use of chemical additives to neutralize the radioactivity of the soil, and the planting of vegetation that can absorb and store radioactive particles. Over time, these methods have helped to reduce the levels of radiation in the soil, allowing plants and animals to gradually return to the area. Another key aspect of environmental remediation has been the reintroduction of wildlife to the region. This has been accomplished through a combination of natural recolonization and intentional efforts to bring back species that were severely impacted by the disaster. For example, scientists have worked to breed and release populations of endangered species like the Shavalsky horse and the European bison, which had been driven to the brink of extinction in the area. As a result of these efforts, both of these species have now made a comeback in the region and can be seen roaming the fields and forests of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. 
In addition to these specific efforts, there has been a broader shift in the way that the local ecosystem is managed and protected. Following the disaster, many of the traditional practices of agriculture and forestry that had been in place in the area were abandoned or radically altered, as they were deemed too risky in light of the ongoing radiation contamination. Instead, new approaches have been developed that focus on sustainable land use and habitat preservation. For example, there has been an increased emphasis on organic farming methods and the use of alternative energy sources like solar and wind power. Overall, the long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts has been significant, and the land and wildlife of the Chernobyl exclusion zone continue to recover and thrive. While there are still challenges and uncertainties associated with the ongoing presence of radioactivity in the area, the resilience of the local ecosystem is a testament to the power of human ingenuity and the ability of nature to rebound from even the most devastating events. In addition to the efforts to remediate the soil and reintroduce wildlife, there have also been numerous studies conducted to assess the long-term impact of the disaster on the ecosystem of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. These studies have provided valuable insights into the ways that the local flora and fauna have adapted to the presence of radiation, as well as the broader ecological effects of the disaster. One of the most interesting findings of these studies has been the ways in which some species have actually thrived in the wake of the disaster. For example, researchers have noted that certain plants have developed the ability to absorb and store radioactive particles, effectively using them as a source of energy. This has led to the growth of a unique and diverse ecosystem in the exclusion zone, with species that are not found anywhere else in the world. Similarly, some animals have been observed to be more resilient to the effects of radiation than others. For example, researchers have found that some bird species have actually increased in population in the exclusion zone, while others have declined. This has led to a shifting balance of species in the area, as some are better equipped to survive in the radioactive environment than others. Despite these positive developments, there are still ongoing concerns about the long-term impact of radiation on the environment and the health of the people and animals that live in the area. For example, there is evidence to suggest that radiation exposure can increase the risk of cancer and other health problems, even at low levels. This has led to ongoing monitoring and research efforts to better understand the potential risks and develop effective strategies for mitigating them. Overall, the long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts in the wake of the Chernobyl disaster has been significant, but there is still much work to be done to ensure the ongoing health and sustainability of the local ecosystem. By continuing to monitor and study the effects of radiation, and by developing innovative and sustainable approaches to land use and conservation, it is possible to create a more resilient and thriving environment for both wildlife and people in the years to come. Another notable aspect of the long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts in the Chernobyl exclusion zone is the role of humans in the recovery process. While the disaster was caused by human error and negligence, it has also been human efforts that have played a crucial role in mitigating the effects and supporting the recovery of the ecosystem. One example of this is the role of local communities in the recovery efforts. Despite the ongoing risks posed by radiation exposure, many people have returned to their homes in the exclusion zone and continue to live and work in the area. These communities have played an important role in supporting the recovery of the local ecosystem, through activities such as planting trees, maintaining wildlife habitats, and monitoring radiation levels. Another important factor in the recovery of the ecosystem has been the development of innovative technologies and approaches to land use and conservation. For example, researchers have developed new methods for measuring radiation levels in soil and water, which can help to identify areas of contamination and target remediation efforts more effectively. Similarly, there has been a growing focus on sustainable land use practices, such as agroforestry and sustainable agriculture, which can help to promote the recovery of the ecosystem while also providing economic benefits for local communities. Overall, 
the long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts in the Chernobyl exclusion zone has been complex and multifaceted, with both positive and negative consequences for the local ecosystem and the people who live and work in the area. However, by continuing to support ongoing research and monitoring efforts, and by developing innovative and sustainable approaches to land use and conservation, it is possible to create a more resilient and thriving environment for both wildlife and people in the years to come. In addition to the role of human efforts, there are also several key factors that have contributed to the long-term recovery of the ecosystem in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. One of the most significant of these is the absence of human interference in the area, which has allowed the local flora and fauna to reclaim the land in a way that is largely undisturbed. Without human activity and development, the area has become a unique and thriving habitat for a wide variety of wildlife species. In recent years, researchers have documented a resurgence in populations of large mammals such as wolves, elk, and lynx, as well as an abundance of smaller species like birds, rodents, and insects. This recovery has been particularly striking in light of the ongoing risks posed by radiation exposure, which can cause mutations and genetic abnormalities in local wildlife. Another important factor in the recovery of the ecosystem has been the implementation of targeted remediation efforts in areas of particularly high radiation contamination. These efforts have included measures such as the removal of contaminated soil, and the planting of new vegetation, as well as the construction of physical barriers to prevent further contamination of nearby areas. Overall, the long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts in the Chernobyl exclusion zone has been largely positive, with the local ecosystem demonstrating a remarkable resilience in the face of ongoing radiation exposure. However, there is still much that remains unknown about the long-term effects of radiation on both the local ecosystem and the people who continue to live and work in the area. As ongoing research and monitoring efforts continue, it is important to prioritize sustainable and innovative approaches to land use and conservation in order to ensure the continued recovery and thriving of the local ecosystem for generations to come. The long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts in the Chernobyl exclusion zone extends beyond the immediate recovery of the ecosystem. In addition to restoring the local habitat, these efforts have also had a significant impact on broader scientific understanding of the effects of radiation exposure on the environment and on human health. Studies conducted in the years since the disaster have revealed the complexity of the interactions between radiation exposure and ecological systems. For example, Researchers have documented how radiation can cause genetic mutations in wildlife, but also how some species have adapted to the presence of radiation, potentially developing new genetic traits that enable them to thrive in the contaminated environment. The recovery of the local ecosystem has also highlighted the importance of preserving and protecting wilderness areas in general. With so much of the planet's landmass already degraded or destroyed by human activity, the success of the Chernobyl remediation effort provides an important example of how restoration and conservation efforts can help to sustain and protect biodiversity. In addition to its impact on the environment, the long-term recovery of the Chernobyl exclusion zone has also had important social and cultural implications. As the area has gradually become less of a symbol of disaster and more of a unique and thriving ecosystem, it has attracted increased interest from researchers, tourists, and even filmmakers and artists. Perhaps most importantly, the recovery of the Chernobyl exclusion zone has provided a source of hope and inspiration for those who have been affected by environmental disasters around the world. By demonstrating that it is possible to recover and restore even in the face of such profound environmental challenges, the Chernobyl remediation effort serves as a reminder of the resilience and adaptability of the natural world. The restoration of the Chernobyl exclusion zone has also had a profound impact on the local community. Despite the ongoing stigma and fear surrounding the area, some residents have chosen to return and rebuild their lives in the shadow of the reactor. For these individuals, 
the success of the remediation efforts has provided a sense of hope and a renewed connection to the land they call home. Over time, the recovery of the ecosystem has also begun to attract a growing number of visitors, including tourists, researchers, and scientists. In recent years, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone has become a hub of scientific activity, with researchers studying everything from the behavior of wildlife to the effects of radiation exposure on human health. This has led to new discoveries and insights into the long-term effects of radiation exposure and has helped to shape our understanding of how ecosystems can recover and adapt in the face of environmental challenges. In addition to its scientific value, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone has also become an important cultural and artistic destination. The area has been the subject of numerous books, films, and documentaries, and has even inspired a popular HBO television series. The stark contrast between the abandoned buildings and thriving wilderness has also attracted artists and photographers seeking to capture the unique beauty and resilience of the area. Overall, the long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts in the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone serves as a powerful testament to the resilience of the natural world. Despite the devastating effects of the nuclear disaster, the local ecosystem has shown that it is capable of recovering and thriving over time. At the same time, the recovery effort has provided important lessons and insights into the importance of environmental preservation and restoration, and the need to protect and sustain the planet's precious biodiversity. The recovery of the ecosystem in the Chernobyl exclusion zone is an ongoing process, and scientists continue to study the long-term effects of radiation exposure on both the environment and human health. However, there is growing evidence that the remediation efforts have had a positive impact on the area's wildlife and natural habitats. One of the most significant changes has been the resurgence of native plant species. The lack of human activity in the exclusion zone has allowed for the natural regeneration of forests and meadows, and many of the area's native species have rebounded in number. In particular, the wild boar population has exploded, with estimates suggesting that there are now more than 10 times the number of boars in the area compared to before the disaster. Other species, such as wolves, lynx, and beavers, have also made a comeback, and bird populations have increased as well. Interestingly, scientists have observed that many of the animals in the exclusion zone appear to be healthier and more robust than their counterparts in other areas. This has been attributed to the fact that the area is largely free from human interference and the associated pollution and environmental stressors. In addition to the recovery of the natural environment, the remediation efforts have also had a positive impact on the health and well-being of the local population. While some areas of the exclusion zone remain highly contaminated, the radiation levels in many parts have decreased significantly allowing for a limited return of residents to the area. This has given some former residents the opportunity to reconnect with their homes and the land they love, and has provided a sense of closure and healing for those who were forced to flee in the aftermath of the disaster. Overall, the recovery of the Chernobyl exclusion zone serves as a powerful reminder of the resilience of the natural world and the importance of environmental preservation and restoration. While the disaster was a tragic and devastating event, the remediation efforts have provided hope and a renewed sense of optimism for the future of the area and its inhabitants. With ongoing research and continued efforts to monitor and mitigate the effects of radiation exposure, the legacy of the disaster may ultimately be one of resilience, recovery, and hope. Despite the ongoing impact of radiation, the long-term effects of environmental remediation have been largely positive for the land and wildlife in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Over the past few decades, nature has slowly but surely been reclaiming the abandoned city of Pripyat and the surrounding areas, with a resurgence of wildlife and a flourishing ecosystem. One of the most significant steps in the remediation process was the decontamination of soil and removal of radioactive debris, which helped to reduce the levels of radiation in the environment. Over time, the vegetation has grown back, and in some areas, it has even become more abundant than it was before the disaster. 
As a result, the forest has once again become home to a variety of animals, including wolves, deer, boar, lynx, and even rare species like the European bison and Chevalsky horse. In addition to the recovery of the natural environment, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone has become a unique and valuable research site for scientists studying the long-term effects of radiation exposure on wildlife. While the radiation levels in some areas remain too high for human habitation, many animals have adapted to living in these contaminated areas and are being studied to understand how radiation affects their health, reproduction, and behavior. One example of the resilience of wildlife in the Chernobyl exclusion zone is the case of the European gray wolf. Before the disaster, wolves were rare in the region due to hunting and habitat destruction. However, in the absence of humans, the wolf population in the exclusion zone has grown significantly, and the animals have been found to be thriving despite exposure to high levels of radiation. While the recovery of the natural environment in the Chernobyl exclusion zone is an ongoing process, the efforts to remediate the area have led to a surprising outcome. The disaster that was once seen as an environmental catastrophe has become a unique opportunity to study how wildlife adapts and thrives in a contaminated environment. It is a reminder that nature has an incredible capacity for recovery and that even in the face of such a devastating event, the resilience of the natural world can inspire hope for the future. Despite the devastating effects of the Chernobyl disaster, the long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts has been remarkable. Today, more than three decades after the disaster, the Chernobyl exclusion zone has become a unique and thriving ecosystem. One of the key factors contributing to the restoration of the area is the exclusion of human activity. With the evacuation of the surrounding towns and villages, the land has been allowed to heal without human interference. In addition, the decontamination efforts have significantly reduced the levels of radiation in the soil, water, and air, which has allowed wildlife to return and flourish. In the early days following the disaster, many animals in the area died or suffered from radiation sickness. However, in the years since, many species have rebounded, including deer, elk, boar, wolves, lynx, and even bears. The absence of human activity has allowed many of these species to reclaim their natural habitats, leading to a resurgence in biodiversity. One of the most remarkable stories of recovery in the Chernobyl exclusion zone is the return of the European bison. In the years following the disaster, the species was nearly extinct in the region. However, in the 1990s, a group of conservationists brought several bison from outside the exclusion zone and released them into the area. Today, the population has grown to more than 100 individuals, with more births each year. In addition to animal life, the vegetation in the exclusion zone has also rebounded. Many of the abandoned farmlands have been taken over by wild plants, creating new habitats for insects and other animals. Researchers have also observed that certain types of fungi in the area have adapted to the high levels of radiation and are breaking down the radioactive materials in the soil. While the Chernobyl disaster was a tragedy of epic proportions, the environmental remediation efforts that followed have had a significant impact on the area's recovery. Today, the Chernobyl exclusion zone stands as a testament to the resilience of nature and the power of human intervention to help heal the wounds of the past. Despite the ongoing impact of the Chernobyl disaster, the long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts has been significant. The land and wildlife in the exclusion zone have continued to recover and thrive in the decades since the disaster, with some species even returning to the area after being absent for years. One notable success story has been the return of the European bison to the area. Prior to the disaster, the species had been extinct in the region for over 100 years. In the years since the accident, however, a herd of bison was released into the exclusion zone and has since flourished. The herd has grown to over 100 individuals and has become a symbol of the resilience of nature in the face of adversity. Other species have also returned to the area, including wolves, lynx, and brown bears. The absence of human activity in the area has allowed these animals to thrive, and they have become an important part of the ecosystem.
efforts to clean up the contaminated soil have also been successful, with topsoil being removed and replaced with clean soil in many areas. This has allowed plants to grow without being contaminated by radioactive materials, further supporting the return of wildlife to the area. However, despite the progress made in environmental remediation, the long-term effects of radiation exposure on human health and the ecosystem remain a concern. It is still unclear how the exposure to radiation will impact the area in the coming years and whether the environmental recovery will continue or be hindered by the ongoing presence of radioactive materials. In summary, the long-term impact of environmental remediation efforts following the Chernobyl disaster has been significant, with the return of species like the European bison and other animals being a testament to nature's resilience. However, the ongoing presence of radioactive materials means that the impact of the disaster will continue to be felt for many years to come. Despite the success of the environmental remediation efforts in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, there is still much work to be done to fully restore the ecosystem to its pre-disaster state. The long-term impact of radiation exposure on wildlife and the environment is still being studied, and the effects of climate change on the area are also a concern. However, some species have been observed to thrive in the absence of human activity. For example, the wolf population in the area has grown significantly since the disaster, and they are now a common sight in the zone. Other species that have made a comeback include bison, lynx, and even some endangered species like the Shabalski horse. The restoration of the ecosystem in the zone has also had positive effects on the surrounding areas. The lack of human activity in the exclusion zone has allowed for the preservation of rare and endangered plant species, which has resulted in the expansion of their range outside of the zone. Additionally, the restoration efforts have helped to improve the overall health of the surrounding ecosystems, as the contaminated soil and water that once flowed into nearby rivers and lakes has been significantly reduced. While the restoration of the Chernobyl exclusion zone is an ongoing process, the progress made so far is a testament to the resilience of the natural world. The lessons learned from the disaster have also led to improved safety measures in the nuclear industry with a greater emphasis on prevention and preparedness for potential accidents. Overall, the long-term impact of environmental remediation in the Chernobyl exclusion zone has been a mixed bag of successes and challenges. However, the efforts made to restore the ecosystem and the continued study of the effects of radiation exposure on wildlife and the environment have provided valuable insights and lessons that can be applied to future disaster response and environmental restoration efforts. Chapter 12, Looking to the Future, Rebuilding and Reimagining Life in Pripyat The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 left the city of Pripyat in ruins. The once thriving Soviet model city, built to support the nearby nuclear power plant, was now a desolate ghost town, abandoned by its residents and left to decay. But even in the face of such destruction, a small group of determined individuals refused to give up on Pripyat. They embarked on a quest to rebuild and repopulate the city, to return it to its former glory and make it a symbol of hope and resilience. The first step in this effort was to assess the damage and devise a plan for rebuilding. Experts in radiation cleanup and construction were brought in to assess the levels of contamination and determine the best methods for decontamination and restoration. The work was painstaking and dangerous, as the workers had to carefully remove and dispose of contaminated materials while protecting themselves from radiation exposure. Over time, the efforts paid off. The levels of radiation decreased, and the infrastructure of the city began to be restored. Roads were repaired, buildings were cleaned and renovated, and the electrical and plumbing systems were upgraded. The workers labored tirelessly, driven by a sense of duty and a belief in the importance of restoring Pripyat to its former glory. But rebuilding the physical infrastructure of the city was only one part of the equation. The next challenge was to attract new residents to repopulate the city. This was no easy task, as the stigma of the disaster still hung over Pripyat, and many people were hesitant to return to an area that had been so severely affected by radiation. To overcome this obstacle, the rebuilding effort
focused on promoting the safety and security of the city. New monitoring systems were installed to track radiation levels, and strict safety protocols were put in place to protect residents from exposure. Public education campaigns were launched to dispel myths and misinformation about the risks of living in the city. And gradually, as people began to see the progress that was being made and the dedication of those who were rebuilding the city, the population began to grow. The new residents of Pripyat were a diverse group, drawn to the city by a variety of factors. Some were former residents who had been displaced by the disaster and were eager to return to their homes. Others were scientists, researchers, and workers who saw opportunities in the rebuilding effort. And still others were attracted by the unique history and character of the city, with its striking Soviet-era architecture and its rich cultural heritage. The city began to thrive once again, with new businesses and industries springing up to support the growing population. A vibrant cultural scene emerged, with theaters, museums and galleries showcasing the best of Ukrainian art and culture. And perhaps most importantly, the residents of Pripyat developed a strong sense of community, united by their shared experiences and their determination to rebuild and thrive. Of course, the road to recovery was not without its challenges. The long-term effects of radiation exposure were still a concern, and scientists and medical professionals worked tirelessly to monitor the health of the population and minimize the risks. And there were occasional setbacks and setbacks, such as when a minor radiation leak occurred in the power plant in 1991, causing renewed fears and concerns. But overall, the rebuilding effort was a remarkable success. Today, Pripyat stands as a testament to the resilience and determination of its residents, and as a symbol of the power of human ingenuity and cooperation. The city has become a model for disaster recovery and rebuilding, inspiring communities around the world to take up the challenge of rebuilding after a catastrophe. The effort to rebuild and repopulate Pripyat was not an easy task. Despite the extensive efforts to contain and clean up the site of the disaster, the psychological impact of the incident remained deeply ingrained in the minds of those who had lived through it. The notion of returning to the site of such a catastrophic event was, understandably, a daunting prospect for many. Despite this, however, there were those who remained determined to restore the city and bring it back to life. In the years following the disaster, there were numerous efforts made to repopulate the area and revive the local economy. One of the key initiatives was the establishment of a special economic zone within the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, which aimed to attract investors and encourage economic growth in the region. The Ukrainian government also launched a number of initiatives to encourage people to return to the area. One of the most notable was a scheme that offered free housing to anyone who was willing to move back to Pripyat. While this offer attracted some interest, it was not enough to entice large numbers of people back to the area. Perhaps the most significant challenge facing those who sought to rebuild and repopulate Pripyat was the issue of radiation. While extensive efforts had been made to decontaminate the area, the threat of radiation exposure remained a very real concern. As a result, many people were understandably reluctant to return to the area, especially if they had children or other vulnerable family members to consider. Despite these challenges, however, there were those who remained committed to rebuilding the city and restoring it to its former glory. Many former residents of Pripyat remained deeply attached to the city and were eager to see it restored to its former vibrancy. Over time, these efforts began to pay off and the city slowly began to see signs of renewed life. One of the key factors in the city's gradual recovery was the gradual reduction in radiation levels in the area. As the years passed, the levels of radiation in the area began to decline, thanks in large part to the efforts of scientists and engineers who had been working to decontaminate the area. This, in turn, made it possible for more people to return to the area and for the local economy to begin to recover. Another important factor in the city's recovery was the establishment of a number of new businesses and enterprises in the area. In the years following the disaster, a number of entrepreneurs began to establish new businesses in the region, ranging from small restaurants and cafes 
to larger manufacturing facilities. These businesses provided much-needed employment opportunities for the local population and helped to breathe new life into the city. Perhaps the most significant factor in the city's recovery, however, was the resilience and determination of the local population. Despite the many challenges they faced, the people of Pripyat remained committed to rebuilding their city and restoring it to its former glory. Over time, they were able to overcome many of the obstacles that had initially seemed insurmountable and to create a thriving community in the heart of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Today, Pripyat stands as a testament to the resilience and strength of the human spirit. Despite the devastating impact of the Chernobyl disaster, the city has managed to overcome its challenges and rebuild itself into a thriving community. While the legacy of the disaster will always be present, the people of Pripyat have shown that it is possible to move forward from even the darkest of tragedies and to create a brighter future for themselves and their families. In the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, Pripyat was left as a ghost town, a haunting reminder of the dangers of nuclear energy. The city's once thriving economy and way of life were forever changed, leaving many wondering what the future held for this abandoned community. As the years passed, however, new possibilities emerged. Advances in renewable energy technology, combined with a growing awareness of the need for more sustainable forms of energy, have led some to consider the possibility of a new future for Pripyat, one that is not dependent on nuclear power. The potential for renewable energy in Pripyat is vast. The city is located in a region with abundant wind and solar resources, and there is ample space for the installation of wind turbines and solar panels. Additionally, the proximity of the city to rivers and lakes makes hydropower a possibility as well. Some have proposed the creation of a renewable energy park in Pripyat, featuring a variety of renewable energy technologies. This could not only provide a new source of energy for the region, but also create new jobs and opportunities for the community. However, the transition to renewable energy is not without its challenges. The existing infrastructure in Pripyat was designed for nuclear energy, and retrofitting it to accommodate renewable sources would require significant investment and effort. Additionally, there are still questions about the reliability and efficiency of renewable energy technologies, particularly in extreme weather conditions. Despite these challenges, many believe that the potential benefits of transitioning to renewable energy in Pripyat are too great to ignore. In addition to reducing the risk of another nuclear disaster, renewable energy would help to mitigate the effects of climate change and create a more sustainable future for the community. The transition to renewable energy would also require a shift in mindset and culture. For decades, nuclear energy was seen as the only viable option for powering the city. Breaking free from this mindset and embracing the possibilities of renewable energy would require a significant change in the way people think about energy and its role in their lives. Education and public outreach will be crucial in this process. The community must be informed about the benefits and challenges of renewable energy and involved in the decision-making process. The government and industry leaders must also work together to create policies and incentives that encourage the adoption of renewable energy technologies. The transition to renewable energy in Pripyat is not a simple task, but it is one that is necessary for the long-term well-being of the community. It will require a concerted effort from all stakeholders, including government officials, industry leaders, and the community itself. However, if successful, it could create a new future for Pripyat, one that is sustainable, resilient, and free from the risks of nuclear energy. In summary, the Chernobyl disaster was a tragedy that left Pripyat forever changed. However, the potential for a new future for the city exists through the adoption of renewable energy technologies. This would not only reduce the risk of another disaster, but also create new opportunities for the community and create a more sustainable and resilient future. It will require a shift in mindset and a concerted effort from all stakeholders, but the potential benefits are too great to ignore. Pripyat, a city that was once synonymous with nuclear energy, 
could be on the verge of a new energy revolution. While the city was devastated by the Chernobyl disaster, the tragedy has also provided an opportunity to reevaluate the role of nuclear energy in our world and explore alternative energy sources that are both sustainable and environmentally friendly. The shift towards renewable energy has been gathering momentum in recent years, with many countries committing to reducing their reliance on fossil fuels and investing heavily in wind, solar, and hydroelectric power. The potential for renewable energy in Pripyat is particularly significant, given the abundance of open land and sunlight that the area enjoys. One of the most promising renewable energy sources for Pripyat is solar power. The city's location in the Ukrainian countryside provides ample sunlight, making it an ideal candidate for solar farms. The government has already taken steps in this direction, with a solar power plant being constructed near the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The plant is expected to generate up to one megawatt of power, and there are plans to expand it in the future. Wind power is another viable option for Pripyat. The city's flat terrain and location in the path of the westerly winds make it an ideal location for wind turbines. Ukraine already has several wind farms in operation, and it is likely that Pripyat could support additional facilities. Hydroelectric power is another possibility, particularly given the abundance of rivers and streams in the region. While large-scale hydroelectric power plants may not be feasible in the immediate vicinity of Pripyat, smaller installations could be constructed in nearby waterways. The transition to renewable energy would not only benefit the environment, but also the economy. As traditional energy sources become increasingly scarce, the demand for renewable energy is likely to rise, creating new jobs and opportunities for investment. This could help to revitalize the local economy, which has struggled since the Chernobyl disaster. However, the transition to renewable energy is not without its challenges. One of the main obstacles is the initial cost of investment, which can be high for renewable energy projects. While the long-term benefits of renewable energy are clear, there may be a short-term economic impact on the region as traditional energy sources are phased out. Another challenge is the need for infrastructure to support renewable energy. New transmission lines and energy storage facilities may be required to fully harness the potential of renewable energy sources in Pripyat. Despite these challenges, the potential for renewable energy in Pripyat is vast. The city has already shown that it is possible to transition from a reliance on one form of energy to another, with the abandonment of nuclear energy after the Chernobyl disaster. As the world continues to shift towards renewable energy, Pripyat has the opportunity to be at the forefront of this change, providing a model for sustainable energy production that can be replicated elsewhere. In summary, the potential for renewable energy in Pripyat is significant, and the transition to sustainable energy sources could provide both environmental and economic benefits for the region. While the shift towards renewable energy is not without its challenges, the potential rewards make it a worthy investment. As the world continues to grapple with the challenges of climate change and energy security, Pripyat could provide a valuable example of how renewable energy can be harnessed to power a city and build a more sustainable future for generations to come. In the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, the city of Pripyat faced a long road to recovery. The once thriving model city was left in ruins, with its buildings and infrastructure contaminated by radiation. But despite the challenges, there were those who believed that Pripyat could rise again. Plans and proposals for the reconstruction of Pripyat came from a variety of sources. Some came from the Ukrainian government, which was eager to restore the city to its former glory. Others came from architects and urban planners, who saw the opportunity to create a new, more sustainable Pripyat. One of the most prominent proposals for the new Pripyat was to turn it into a hub for renewable energy. The site of the Chernobyl disaster was seen as a powerful symbol of the dangers of nuclear power, and many believed that a shift toward renewable energy would be both necessary and appropriate. Several renewable energy projects were proposed for the Pripyat region. 
Some suggested building solar farms on the contaminated land, while others proposed using the abandoned buildings as sites for wind turbines. One ambitious proposal even called for the construction of a massive hydroelectric dam across the Dnieper River, which would have provided clean energy for the entire region. These proposals were met with enthusiasm by some, but skepticism by others. Critics pointed out that renewable energy projects could be expensive to build and maintain, and that they might not provide enough energy to meet the needs of the region. Some also questioned whether Pripyat would be an appropriate site for such projects, given the legacy of the Chernobyl disaster. Despite the challenges, some progress was made in implementing renewable energy projects in the Pripyat region. In 2018, the Ukrainian government completed the construction of a 1 megawatt solar power plant in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. The plant was built on contaminated land that had been deemed unsuitable for other uses and was seen as a symbolic gesture of the country's commitment to clean energy. Other projects have also been proposed, including plans to build a large wind farm in the exclusion zone. However, these projects face significant logistical and financial challenges and it remains to be seen whether they will be successful in the long term. Beyond renewable energy, there were also proposals to redesign Pripyat as a more sustainable city. Some architects and planners suggested that the city should be rebuilt with a focus on energy efficiency and green spaces. This could include the construction of passive houses that require minimal heating and cooling, as well as the planting of trees and the creation of parks. Other proposals called for the development of ecotourism in the region, which would allow visitors to experience the natural beauty of the area while also supporting the local economy. This could include hiking and cycling trails, as well as educational programs that focus on the history and ecology of the region. While these proposals for a new Pripyat are promising, they also face significant challenges. The cost of rebuilding the city would be astronomical and it remains unclear whether there is enough political will to undertake such a project. Furthermore, the legacy of the Chernobyl disaster means that many people are still hesitant to return to the region, and it remains to be seen whether ecotourism will be enough to support a full-scale reconstruction. Despite these challenges, there are those who remain hopeful about the future of Pripyat. The city's tragic history has left an indelible mark on the world and its potential as a site for sustainable development is undeniable. Whether or not Pripyat can be rebuilt remains to be seen, but its legacy as a symbol of both tragedy and hope will endure for generations to come. After the Chernobyl disaster, the city of Pripyat became a ghost town, abandoned by its residents and left to decay for years. However, in recent years, there have been discussions and proposals about redesigning the city and potentially repopulating it. These plans and proposals vary in scope and detail, but they all share a common goal, to create a new Pripyat that is safe, sustainable, and resilient. One proposal that has gained traction is to transform Pripyat into a center for renewable energy research and development. The city could serve as a hub for testing and implementing new technologies, such as wind and solar power, that could help reduce reliance on nuclear energy. The site of the Chernobyl reactor could be repurposed as a research facility for the study of nuclear energy, radiation, and environmental remediation. Another idea is to turn Pripyat into a model city for sustainable living. The city could be rebuilt using eco-friendly materials and designed to minimize energy consumption and waste. Green spaces and urban agriculture could be incorporated into the city's layout providing residents with access to fresh produce and recreational areas. Community gardens and public parks could also be used to promote social cohesion and interaction among residents. A more ambitious proposal involves transforming Pripyat into a smart city that uses advanced technology to improve the quality of life for its residents. The city could be equipped with sensors and data analytics tools to monitor energy use, traffic flow, and air quality. Smart transportation systems, such as electric or autonomous vehicles, could reduce congestion and emissions. A network of high-speed internet and communication infrastructure could enable remote work and e-learning, making Pripyat an attractive location for digital nomads and entrepreneurs. Of course, these plans and proposals face many challenges and obstacles. 
The issue of radiation exposure remains a significant concern, as does the question of whether repopulating the city is feasible or desirable. Some argue that the cost of rebuilding and redesigning the city outweighs any potential benefits and that the resources would be better spent on other priorities. Despite these challenges, the idea of rebuilding and repopulating Pripyat continues to generate interest and debate. It represents a symbol of resilience and hope in the face of disaster, as well as a reminder of the importance of innovation, sustainability, and safety in shaping the future of our cities and our planet. In the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, the area around the power plant became known as the Exclusion Zone, a vast area spanning over 2,600 square kilometers where access was restricted due to high levels of radiation. However, in recent years, a new form of tourism has emerged, offering visitors the chance to explore the eerie abandoned city of Pripyat and the surrounding wilderness. This form of tourism, known as ecotourism, promises to promote sustainable development in the region while raising awareness about the disaster and its ongoing impact on the environment and local communities. Ecotourism in the Chernobyl zone is a relatively new concept. It was only in 2011 that the Ukrainian government officially opened the area to tourists. Since then, the number of visitors has been steadily increasing, with an estimated 70,000 people visiting the exclusion zone in 2019. Many of these visitors are drawn to the area's unique history and eerie beauty, as well as the opportunity to witness firsthand the ongoing efforts to restore the natural environment. However, Ecotourism in the Chernobyl zone also poses a number of challenges. One of the most pressing issues is the potential risk to visitors' health due to the presence of radiation. While the risk of radiation exposure is low, visitors are required to follow strict safety protocols, such as wearing protective clothing and staying within designated areas. There is also a risk that tourism could disrupt the natural environment and wildlife particularly if the number of visitors continues to increase. Despite these challenges, ecotourism in the Chernobyl zone has the potential to promote sustainable development in the region. By supporting local businesses and promoting responsible tourism practices, it can provide economic opportunities for the communities affected by the disaster. Additionally, it can raise awareness about the ongoing environmental and social impacts of nuclear energy and the importance of investing in renewable energy sources. There are also opportunities to use ecotourism to support ongoing efforts to restore the natural environment in the exclusion zone. For example, the Ukrainian government has launched a project to reintroduce endangered Chevalsky horses to the area, and ecotourism could provide an important source of funding for these efforts. Similarly, there are plans to establish a solar energy plant within the exclusion zone, which would not only provide a source of renewable energy but also promote sustainable development in the region. However, to fully realize the potential of ecotourism in the Chernobyl zone, it is important to ensure that it is done in a responsible and sustainable manner. This means developing tourism infrastructure that minimizes the impact on the natural environment and wildlife as well as ensuring that the health and safety of visitors and local communities are protected. It also means working closely with local communities to ensure that they are involved in the development and management of ecotourism initiatives. In summary, ecotourism in the Chernobyl zone offers a unique opportunity to promote sustainable development in the region while raising awareness about the ongoing impact of the disaster. While there are challenges and risks associated with this form of tourism, with careful planning and management, it has the potential to provide economic opportunities for local communities and support ongoing efforts to restore the natural environment. As the world seeks to transition to renewable energy sources, ecotourism in the Chernobyl zone could serve as a model for sustainable development in other areas affected by nuclear disasters. The story of Pripyat is not only about the tragedy of the Chernobyl disaster, but also about the people who lived and worked in the city, their memories, and the legacy they left behind. As time passes, the city has become a symbol of the consequences of nuclear power 
and a warning of the risks associated with it. However, it is also a place where people can reconnect with the past, remember those who suffered, and learn lessons that could shape the future. One of the ways in which Pripyat's memory is being preserved is through commemoration. Every year, on the anniversary of the disaster, people gather to remember the victims and honor the heroes who risked their lives to contain the radiation and save others. In recent years, there has been a growing movement to recognize the contributions of the liquidators, the workers who cleaned up the site and prevented further disaster. Monuments, memorials and museums have been erected to commemorate their sacrifice and educate future generations about the dangers of nuclear power. Another way in which Pripyat's memory is being preserved is through art and media. The city has become a subject of fascination for filmmakers, writers and artists who seek to capture the essence of life in a city that was abruptly abandoned. The documentary Chernobyl and the television series Chernobyl have brought the story of the disaster to a global audience and sparked renewed interest in the events that took place. In literature, Pripyat has been the subject of numerous books and poems, exploring the human side of the disaster and its impact on people's lives. In addition to commemoration and art, there are also efforts to turn Pripyat into a site for eco-tourism. While the city remains a highly contaminated area, there are parts of the exclusion zone where radiation levels are low enough to allow for safe visits. Companies are offering guided tours of the site, allowing visitors to see the abandoned buildings, the overgrown streets, and the haunting landscapes. The hope is that ecotourism will bring much-needed revenue to the region, while also promoting sustainable development and educating people about the risks and benefits of nuclear power. However, Ecotourism in the Chernobyl zone is not without its challenges. The health risks associated with radiation exposure remain a concern, and there are questions about the ethics of turning a disaster site into a tourist attraction. Critics argue that the commercialization of the disaster is insensitive to the victims and their families, and that it trivializes the tragedy. Furthermore, there are concerns that the influx of tourists could further damage the fragile ecosystem of the exclusion zone and disrupt the efforts to restore the natural environment. In summary, Pripyat's legacy is a complex one shaped by tragedy, resilience and hope. The city is a testament to the dangers of nuclear power, the sacrifices made by those who worked to contain the disaster, and the resilience of the human spirit. It is also a place of memory and commemoration where people can learn from the past and envision a better future. Whether through ecotourism, art and media, or commemoration, Pripyat's legacy continues to shape the world we live in today. This has been The Rise of Pripyat, a story of industry and innovation. Written by A.J. Kingston, narrated by A.I. Madison, copyright 2023 by A.J. Kingston, production copyright 2023 by A.J. Kingston. The disaster unfolds. Eyewitness accounts of the Chernobyl explosion. Written by A.J. Kingston, narrated by A.I. Madison. Chapter 1 The Countdown to Disaster, Anticipation and Tension in Chernobyl. The Soviet nuclear program was a feat of scientific and technological ingenuity, one that was born out of the ashes of the Second World War. In the aftermath of the war, the Soviet Union sought to establish itself as a superpower on the global stage, and the development of nuclear weapons was seen as a crucial part of this strategy. The origins of the Soviet nuclear program can be traced back to the late 1940s, when Soviet scientists and engineers began to experiment with nuclear technology. The Soviet Union was initially lagging behind the United States in this field, but by the early 1950s, it had caught up and was even surpassing its Western rival in certain areas. One of the most significant achievements of the Soviet nuclear program was the development of the Chernobyl reactor, which was intended to be a showcase of Soviet technological prowess. Construction on the Chernobyl reactor began in the early 1970s, and it was commissioned in 1983. The Chernobyl reactor was a remarkable achievement, both in terms of its design and its capabilities. It was a type of reactor known as a RBMK, which was designed to produce both electricity and plutonium for nuclear weapons. 
The reactor was incredibly complex, with thousands of moving parts and a labyrinthine network of pipes and valves. The goals of the Chernobyl reactor were multiple. First and foremost, it was designed to be a symbol of Soviet technological progress and to demonstrate to the world the superiority of the Soviet system. The reactor was intended to be a showpiece of Soviet engineering, and it was hoped that it would help to enhance the reputation of the Soviet Union on the global stage. But the Chernobyl reactor was also part of a broader strategic plan. The Soviet Union was heavily reliant on fossil fuels for its energy needs, and the development of nuclear power was seen as a way to reduce this dependence. The Soviet leadership hoped that the Chernobyl reactor, along with other nuclear power plants, would help to provide a reliable source of electricity for the country and reduce the need for imports of fossil fuels. Finally, the Chernobyl reactor was also seen as a crucial part of the Soviet nuclear weapons program. Plutonium produced by the reactor could be used to manufacture nuclear weapons, and the reactor was seen as a vital component of the Soviet nuclear arsenal. However, the Chernobyl reactor was not without its flaws, and on April 26, 1986, disaster struck. A catastrophic explosion at the reactor led to a fire that burned for 10 days, releasing large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere. The disaster was the worst nuclear accident in history and it had far-reaching consequences for the Soviet Union and the world. The causes of the Chernobyl disaster were many and varied. A combination of human error, technical faults and design flaws all played a role in the disaster. But perhaps the most significant factor was the culture of secrecy and censorship that pervaded the Soviet system. In the Soviet Union, the truth was often sacrificed for the sake of propaganda and political expediency. The Chernobyl disaster was no exception, and in the aftermath of the accident, the Soviet leadership sought to downplay the severity of the disaster and keep the full extent of the damage from the public. The consequences of this approach were disastrous. The delayed response to the disaster and the inadequate measures taken to contain the spread of radiation led to a much wider contamination than would have been the case if the Soviet authorities had been more open and honest about the situation. The Chernobyl disaster was a wake-up call for the Soviet Union, highlighting the dangers of a system that placed propaganda and political considerations above scientific and technical expertise. The RBMK reactor, the type of reactor used in the Chernobyl power plant, was an engineering marvel that represented a significant achievement in the field of nuclear energy. However, it was also a reactor with several design flaws that contributed to the disaster that occurred on April 26, 1986. The RBMK reactor was developed in the Soviet Union in the late 1960s and early 1970s. It was designed to produce both electricity and plutonium for nuclear weapons and it was intended to be a versatile and cost-effective reactor that could be used for a variety of purposes. One of the key features of the RBMK reactor was its use of graphite as a moderator. Graphite is an excellent moderator because it slows down neutrons and allows them to interact more easily with other nuclei. This increases the efficiency of the reactor and makes it possible to use natural uranium as fuel. However, the use of graphite as a moderator also had several drawbacks. For one, graphite is flammable and can ignite if exposed to air at high temperatures. This was a significant factor in the Chernobyl disaster, as the graphite in the reactor caught fire after the explosion. Another issue with the RBMK reactor was its control system. The reactor had a positive void coefficient, which meant that as steam was generated in the reactor, the reactivity of the core increased. This was a design flaw that made the reactor unstable and difficult to control. Furthermore, the RBMK reactor had a number of design features that made it vulnerable to accidents. For example, the reactor had a large number of control rods, which were used to regulate the reactor's power output. However, these control rods were made of graphite and boron, which made them slow to react and less effective in an emergency. Additionally, the RBMK reactor had a pressure tube design that made it difficult to detect and repair leaks. 
The reactor had 1,600 pressure tubes that housed the fuel rods, and any leaks in these tubes could lead to the release of radioactive material. Another factor that contributed to the disaster was the culture of secrecy and censorship that existed in the Soviet Union. The Soviet authorities were reluctant to share information about the RBMK reactor and its design, even with their own nuclear scientists and engineers. This meant that many of the technical factors that contributed to the disaster were not fully understood or appreciated by those working at the Chernobyl power plant. Despite these flaws, the RBMK reactor was still considered to be a safe and reliable design by the Soviet authorities. However, the disaster at Chernobyl revealed the shortcomings of this assessment and highlighted the need for greater transparency and openness in the field of nuclear energy. In the aftermath of the disaster, significant changes were made to the RBMK reactor design. The positive void coefficient was eliminated and the control rods were replaced with more effective ones made of materials such as boron carbide. The design of the pressure tubes was also modified to make them easier to detect and repair. Additionally, the Soviet Union embarked on a program of nuclear safety improvements that included better training for operators, increased inspection and maintenance procedures, and the establishment of an independent regulatory agency to oversee the country's nuclear industry. The RBMK reactor was a remarkable achievement in the field of nuclear energy, but it was also a reactor with several significant design flaws. The disaster at Chernobyl was a tragic reminder of the dangers of nuclear energy and the importance of robust safety measures and regulatory oversight. However, it was also a catalyst for change, leading to significant improvements in the RBMK reactor design and the Soviet Union's nuclear safety protocols. The Chernobyl disaster was not just a technical failure of the RBMK reactor and its design. It was also a failure of the Soviet political system. The Soviet Union was a highly centralized state, with the government and the Communist Party controlling all aspects of society, including the energy sector. Political pressure and the drive to meet production targets played a significant role in the events that led to the disaster. The Soviet Union had set ambitious production targets for the energy sector, and the Chernobyl power plant was no exception. The plant was under intense pressure to produce large amounts of electricity, and this pressure led to a disregard for safety procedures and protocols. The plant's operators were under strict orders to maintain a high level of production, even at the cost of safety. This pressure came from the highest levels of the Soviet government, which saw the energy sector as a key driver of economic growth and national power. Additionally, there was a culture of fear and intimidation in the Soviet Union that made it difficult for workers to speak out about safety concerns. Workers who raised concerns about safety were often seen as troublemakers and could face punishment, including dismissal or even imprisonment. The combination of political pressure and a culture of fear and intimidation made it difficult for the workers at Chernobyl to raise concerns about safety or to challenge the orders they were given. This led to a situation where safety was sacrificed for the sake of meeting production targets. Furthermore, the Soviet Union had a system of production quotas that were imposed on all industries, including the energy sector. These quotas were set by the government and were often unrealistic and difficult to meet. Failure to meet these quotas could result in punishment for the workers and managers involved. In the case of the Chernobyl power plant, the production quotas were particularly high, and this put additional pressure on the workers to push the reactor to its limits. The plant's operators were under strict orders to maintain high levels of production, even if it meant bypassing safety procedures or taking risks. This pressure to meet production quotas also had an impact on the maintenance and repair of the reactor. The plant's managers were reluctant to shut down the reactor for maintenance, as this would have meant a loss of production and a failure to meet the quotas set by the government. The combination of political pressure and production quotas created a situation where safety was sacrificed for the sake of meeting production targets. This led to a disregard for safety procedures and protocols and contributed to the disaster at Chernobyl. In the aftermath of the disaster, 
there was a significant shift in the Soviet Union's approach to safety and regulation in the energy sector. The government introduced new regulations and safety protocols and established an independent regulatory agency to oversee the country's nuclear industry. However, the Chernobyl disaster was a stark reminder of the dangers of political pressure and the drive to meet production targets in the energy sector. It was a failure not just of technology and design, but of the political system that created the conditions for the disaster to occur. In summary, the Chernobyl disaster was a tragic reminder of the dangers of political pressure and the drive to meet production targets in the energy sector. The Soviet Union's centralized political system and culture of fear and intimidation created a situation where safety was sacrificed for the sake of meeting production targets, leading to a disregard for safety procedures and protocols, and ultimately contributing to the disaster at Chernobyl. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, and safety and regulation in the energy sector have been significantly improved, but the disaster remains a cautionary tale of the dangers of political pressure and the need to prioritize safety in the energy sector. The Chernobyl disaster was not only a failure of technology and design, but also a failure of communication and coordination. Tension and communication breakdowns between the plant's operators, managers, and government officials contributed significantly to the disaster. The Soviet Union was a highly centralized state, with power concentrated in the hands of the Communist Party and the government. This centralization created a situation where communication between different levels of the hierarchy was often slow and ineffective. At the Chernobyl power plant, communication breakdowns were a significant problem. The plant's operators and managers often had different priorities and goals, and there was a lack of clear communication channels between them. Furthermore, there was a culture of fear and intimidation in the Soviet Union that made it difficult for workers to speak out about safety concerns or to challenge the orders they were given. This fear and intimidation made it challenging to establish open lines of communication between workers and managers. Additionally, there were power struggles between different levels of the hierarchy at the plant. The plant's operators were under strict orders to maintain high levels of production, even if it meant bypassing safety procedures or taking risks. This pressure came from the highest levels of the Soviet government, which saw the energy sector as a key driver of economic growth and national power. This pressure to meet production targets created tension and conflict between the plant's operators and managers, who were responsible for ensuring the safety of the reactor. The managers were often reluctant to shut down the reactor for maintenance, as this would have meant a loss of production and a failure to meet the quotas set by the government. These tension and communication breakdowns contributed to a situation where safety was sacrificed for the sake of meeting production targets. The operators and managers were not working together effectively, and this led to a disregard for safety procedures and protocols. The disaster was also exacerbated by miscommunication between the plant's operators and government officials. In the aftermath of the explosion, there was confusion about the severity of the situation, and the plant's managers were slow to report the accident to the relevant authorities. This miscommunication and delay in reporting the accident meant that emergency response measures were slow to be put in place. The authorities were not fully aware of the extent of the damage until several hours after the explosion, and this delayed the response to the disaster. Furthermore, there was a lack of international communication and cooperation in the aftermath of the disaster. The Soviet authorities were slow to inform other countries of the extent of the damage, and this delayed international efforts to assist with the cleanup and containment of the radioactive material. In the aftermath of the disaster, there were significant efforts to improve communication and coordination in the Soviet Union's nuclear industry. The government introduced new regulations and safety protocols and established an independent regulatory agency to oversee the country's nuclear industry. However, the disaster at Chernobyl remains a cautionary tale of the dangers of miscommunication, tension, and power struggles in the energy sector. The disaster was not just a technical failure, 
but a failure of communication and coordination, and it highlights the importance of effective communication and cooperation in ensuring the safety of nuclear facilities. In summary, tension and communication breakdowns between different levels of the hierarchy, miscommunication between the plant's operators and government officials, and a lack of international cooperation contributed significantly to the disaster at Chernobyl. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, and significant efforts have been made to improve communication and coordination in the nuclear industry. However, the disaster remains a stark reminder of the dangers of miscommunication and power struggles in the energy sector. The Chernobyl disaster was not an isolated incident, but rather the culmination of a series of warnings and premonitions that were ignored or dismissed by those in positions of power. The signs of trouble were there for all to see, but a failure to respond adequately led to one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. There were several warnings in the months leading up to the disaster that should have been taken seriously. For example, there were reports of leaks in the reactor and problems with the control rods, which were crucial to regulating the reactor's power output. These warning signs were not acted upon, and the problems were not adequately addressed. Furthermore, there was a lack of effective communication and coordination between different levels of the hierarchy at the Chernobyl power plant. The plant's operators and managers often had different priorities and goals, and there was a lack of clear communication channels between them. This lack of effective communication was particularly evident on the night of the disaster. The plant's operators were conducting a test of the reactor's safety systems when an explosion occurred. The operators initially believed that the reactor had shut down as intended, but it soon became clear that something was seriously wrong. However, there was confusion and indecision among the plant's managers and government officials about how to respond to the situation. There was a delay in reporting the accident to the relevant authorities, and emergency response measures were slow to be put in place. The failure to respond adequately to the warning signs and the delay in responding to the disaster contributed to a much wider contamination than would have been the case if the authorities had acted more quickly and effectively. Additionally, there was a culture of fear and intimidation in the Soviet Union that made it difficult for workers to speak out about safety concerns or to challenge the orders they were given. This fear and intimidation made it challenging to establish open lines of communication between workers and managers. The disaster at Chernobyl was not just a failure of technology and design, but also a failure of leadership and communication. The warning signs were there for all to see, but they were ignored or dismissed by those in positions of power. In the aftermath of the disaster, there were significant efforts to improve communication and coordination in the Soviet Union's nuclear industry. The government introduced new regulations and safety protocols and established an independent regulatory agency to oversee the country's nuclear industry. However, the disaster at Chernobyl remains a stark reminder of the importance of listening to warning signs and premonitions and responding effectively to potential crises. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the dangers of complacency and a failure to take potential risks seriously. In summary, the warning signs of the Chernobyl disaster were there for all to see, but they were ignored or dismissed by those in positions of power. A failure to respond effectively to these warning signs and a lack of effective communication and coordination contributed to one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a cautionary tale of the importance of listening to warning signs and responding effectively to potential crises. The immediate aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was characterized by confusion, fear, and a sense of overwhelming tragedy. The explosion had occurred in the early hours of the morning, and it was not until several hours later that the full extent of the disaster became clear. The first reaction of the plant's operators was to try to contain the damage and prevent further explosions. However, their efforts were hampered by the scale of the disaster and the lack of effective communication and coordination between different levels of the hierarchy at the plant. Furthermore, 
there was a lack of clear protocols and procedures for dealing with a disaster of this magnitude. The Soviet Union's emergency response system was not equipped to handle a disaster of this scale, and there were delays and confusion in putting emergency response measures in place. The first responders on the scene were the plant's firefighters, who bravely worked to contain the damage and prevent further explosions. However, they were not equipped with the necessary protective gear, and many of them were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. The disaster quickly became international news, and there was a sense of shock and horror around the world at the scale of the tragedy. Governments and organizations around the world mobilized to offer assistance, and aid began to arrive from countries such as France, Germany, and the United States. In the immediate aftermath of the disaster, there was a lack of accurate information about the extent of the damage and the level of radiation exposure. The Soviet authorities were slow to release information about the disaster, and there were concerns about the accuracy of the information that was provided. Furthermore, there was a lack of clear protocols for dealing with the long-term effects of radiation exposure. The full extent of the health risks associated with exposure to radiation was not fully understood at the time, and many of those who were exposed did not receive adequate medical treatment. The immediate aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a time of confusion, fear, and tragedy. The explosion had exposed the vulnerabilities of the Soviet Union's nuclear industry and emergency response system, and highlighted the importance of effective communication, coordination, and preparedness in the face of potential disasters. In the aftermath of the disaster, significant efforts were made to improve communication and coordination in the Soviet Union's nuclear industry. The government introduced new regulations and safety protocols and established an independent regulatory agency to oversee the country's nuclear industry. Furthermore, international cooperation was strengthened in the aftermath of the disaster, and there was a renewed focus on the importance of effective emergency response measures and the need for clear protocols and procedures for dealing with potential disasters. In summary, the immediate aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was characterized by confusion, fear, and tragedy. The disaster exposed the vulnerabilities of the Soviet Union's nuclear industry and emergency response system, and highlighted the importance of effective communication, coordination, and preparedness in the face of potential disasters. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. Chapter 2 the explosion, first-hand accounts of the catastrophic event. The Chernobyl disaster was not just a technical failure of the RBMK reactor and its design, but also a catastrophic fire that threatened to spread dangerous radiation over a vast area. The effort to control the blaze and prevent further damage was a heroic and often harrowing task, carried out by thousands of firefighters, soldiers, and emergency workers. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant had ignited a fire that burned for 10 days, releasing large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere. The fire threatened to spread the radiation over a vast area, endangering the lives and health of millions of people. The immediate priority was to control the fire and prevent it from spreading further. The first responders on the scene were the plant's firefighters, who were quickly joined by firefighters from the surrounding area and soldiers from the Soviet Army. The task facing the firefighters and soldiers was immense. The fire was burning at extremely high temperatures, making it difficult to extinguish, and the radiation levels were dangerously high, posing a significant risk to their health. The firefighters and soldiers were not equipped with the necessary protective gear, and many of them were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. Despite the risks, they bravely continued to fight the fire, using a combination of water and sand to try to extinguish the flames. As the fire burned out of control, it became clear that more drastic measures were necessary to prevent the spread of radiation. The Soviet authorities made the decision to create an exclusion zone around the plant, evacuating all residents within a 30-kilometer radius. The evacuation was a massive operation, involving thousands of buses and trains, 
and it was carried out under extremely difficult conditions. The evacuees were forced to leave their homes and belongings behind, not knowing when or if they would be able to return. In addition to the evacuation, a massive containment effort was undertaken to prevent the spread of radiation. This involved the construction of a massive concrete and steel structure, known as the sarcophagus, to cover the damaged reactor and prevent further radiation leaks. The construction of the sarcophagus was a monumental task, carried out by thousands of workers under extremely difficult conditions. The workers were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation, and many of them suffered from long-term health effects as a result. Despite the risks and challenges, the effort to control the blaze and prevent further damage was ultimately successful. The fire was extinguished, and the containment efforts were effective in preventing the spread of radiation beyond the exclusion zone. In the aftermath of the disaster, there were significant efforts to improve safety and regulation in the nuclear industry, including the introduction of new safety protocols and the establishment of an independent regulatory agency. The effort to control the blaze and prevent further damage at Chernobyl was a heroic and often harrowing task, carried out by thousands of firefighters, soldiers, and emergency workers. Their bravery and dedication prevented a catastrophic spread of radiation, and saved countless lives. The Chernobyl disaster remains a stark reminder of the importance of effective safety protocols and emergency response measures in the nuclear industry. The Chernobyl disaster was not just a technical failure of the RBMK reactor, but also a catastrophic event that forced the evacuation of thousands of people from the surrounding area. The evacuation was a chaotic and harrowing experience, as people fled their homes and belongings and left behind everything they had known. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant had released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere, posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The Soviet authorities made the decision to create an exclusion zone around the plant, evacuating all residents within a 30-kilometer radius. The evacuation was a massive operation, involving thousands of buses and trains, and it was carried out under extremely difficult conditions. The evacuees were forced to leave their homes and belongings behind, not knowing when or if they would be able to return. The evacuation was chaotic and disorganized, with many people left without clear instructions or guidance on where to go or what to do. The roads were clogged with traffic, as people fled in all directions, often without a clear understanding of the extent of the danger they faced. Furthermore, there was a lack of effective communication and coordination between different levels of the hierarchy, leading to confusion and conflicting information about the extent of the danger and the best course of action. The evacuation was particularly difficult for those living in the city of Pripyat, which was located just a few kilometers from the power plant. The residents of Pripyat were given very little warning of the danger they faced, and many of them were not told the full extent of the danger until several days after the disaster. The evacuation of Pripyat was a chaotic and frightening experience. The residents were forced to leave their homes and belongings behind, not knowing when or if they would ever be able to return. The streets were crowded with people and vehicles, and there was a sense of panic and desperation in the air. The residents of Pripyat were taken to nearby towns and villages, where they were housed in temporary accommodation. Many of them suffered from long-term health effects as a result of their exposure to radiation, and many lost their homes and belongings as a result of the disaster. The evacuation was a traumatic experience for those who lived through it, and it highlighted the importance of effective communication, coordination, and preparedness in the face of potential disasters. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, and significant efforts have been made to improve safety and regulation in the nuclear industry. In summary, the evacuation of the surrounding area in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a chaotic and harrowing experience for those who lived through it. The evacuation was disorganized and difficult, with many people left without clear instructions or guidance on where to go or what to do. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned 
and the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of effective safety protocols, communication, and coordination in the face of potential disasters. The Chernobyl disaster was not just a technical failure of the RBMK reactor, but also a catastrophic event that exposed thousands of people to dangerous levels of radiation. The fallout from the disaster was felt for decades, as those who were exposed to radiation suffered from a wide range of health consequences. The initial health effects of radiation exposure were immediate and severe. Those who were closest to the plant suffered from acute radiation sickness, which can cause symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and severe fatigue. In some cases, the exposure was fatal. However, the long-term health effects of radiation exposure were even more significant. Exposure to radiation can increase the risk of developing certain types of cancer, such as thyroid cancer and leukemia, and can also cause other health problems such as cardiovascular disease and cataracts. The health consequences of the Chernobyl disaster were particularly severe for those living in the surrounding area. The residents of the exclusion zone, who were evacuated from their homes, suffered from the trauma of displacement and the loss of their homes and belongings. Furthermore, there was a lack of clear protocols and procedures for dealing with the long-term health effects of radiation exposure. The full extent of the health risks associated with exposure to radiation was not fully understood at the time, and many of those who were exposed did not receive adequate medical treatment. The health consequences of the Chernobyl disaster were not just felt in the immediate aftermath of the disaster, but continued for decades. The long-term effects of radiation exposure can take many years to manifest, and those who were exposed may continue to suffer from health problems for the rest of their lives. Furthermore, the health consequences of the disaster were not limited to those who were directly exposed to radiation. The disaster had a wider impact on the environment, and the food and water in the surrounding area were contaminated with radiation. As a result, those living in the surrounding area were forced to change their diets and lifestyles as they tried to avoid exposure to radiation. Many farmers in the area were forced to abandon their crops and livestock and the economy of the region suffered as a result. In the aftermath of the disaster, significant efforts were made to provide medical treatment and support to those who had been exposed to radiation. The government introduced new regulations and safety protocols and established an independent regulatory agency to oversee the country's nuclear industry. However, the health consequences of the Chernobyl disaster continue to be felt to this day. The disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of effective safety protocols and emergency response measures in the nuclear industry. In summary, the fallout from the Chernobyl disaster was not just a technical failure of the RBMK reactor, but also a catastrophic event that exposed thousands of people to dangerous levels of radiation. The health consequences of the disaster were severe and those who were exposed to radiation suffered from a wide range of health problems. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. The Chernobyl disaster was not just a technical failure of the RBMK reactor, but also a catastrophic event that left a city in ruins and its residents traumatized. The city of Pripyat, located just a few kilometers from the power plant, was particularly hard hit by the disaster, and its residents suffered both physically and emotionally in the aftermath. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant had released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere, posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The Soviet authorities made the decision to create an exclusion zone around the plant, evacuating all residents within a 30-kilometer radius. The evacuation of Pripyat was a chaotic and frightening experience. The residents were forced to leave their homes and belongings behind, not knowing when or if they would ever be able to return. The streets were crowded with people and vehicles, and there was a sense of panic and desperation in the air. The city of Pripyat, which had been home to around 50,000 people, was left in ruins. The streets were empty, the buildings abandoned, and the once thriving community was now a ghost town. 
The damage caused by the explosion and the subsequent fires was extensive, and the radiation levels were dangerously high, making it impossible for anyone to return to the city. The emotional toll of the disaster was also significant, particularly for those who had lived in Pripyat. The residents had been forced to leave behind everything they had known, their homes, their belongings, and their community. They were left with a sense of loss and grief that would stay with them for the rest of their lives. Furthermore, there was a sense of uncertainty and fear about the long-term health consequences of radiation exposure. The full extent of the health risks associated with exposure to radiation was not fully understood at the time, and many of those who were exposed did not receive adequate medical treatment. The emotional toll of the disaster was particularly significant for those who had been involved in the emergency response efforts. The firefighters, soldiers, and emergency workers who had worked to control the blaze and prevent further damage had been exposed to dangerous levels of radiation and had suffered both physically and emotionally as a result. The impact of the disaster was felt beyond the immediate area surrounding the power plant. The international community was shocked by the scale of the tragedy and the devastating impact it had on the lives of those who had been affected. In the aftermath of the disaster, significant efforts were made to improve safety and regulation in the nuclear industry. The government introduced new regulations and safety protocols and established an independent regulatory agency to oversee the country's nuclear industry. However, the physical and emotional toll of the Chernobyl disaster on Pripyat and its residents can never be fully repaired. The city remains a ghost town, a stark reminder of the devastating impact of the disaster and the importance of effective safety protocols and emergency response measures in the nuclear industry. In summary, the Chernobyl disaster left a city in ruins and its residents traumatized. The physical and emotional toll of the disaster on Pripyat and its residents was significant, and the impact of the disaster was felt beyond the immediate area surrounding the power plant. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. Chapter 3 The Immediate Aftermath, Chaos and Confusion in the Reactor's Wake the Chernobyl disaster was not just a technical failure of the RBMK reactor, but also a catastrophic event that required an immediate response from the authorities. The first hours after the explosion were critical, as the initial response would set the tone for the disaster's management. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant occurred in the early hours of the morning, and the initial response was led by the plant's employees and the local firefighters. They worked tirelessly to try to control the blaze and prevent further damage. However, the full extent of the danger was not yet fully understood, and the initial response was hampered by a lack of clear communication and coordination between different levels of the hierarchy. There was a sense of confusion and uncertainty about the best course of action and the extent of the danger. Furthermore, there was a lack of clear protocols and procedures for dealing with a disaster of this scale. The full extent of the risks associated with exposure to radiation was not fully understood at the time, and there was a sense of improvisation and experimentation in the initial response. As the extent of the danger became clear, the authorities began to mobilize a more comprehensive response effort. The Soviet government established a special commission to oversee the disaster response, and the military was called in to assist with the response effort. The first hours after the explosion were critical, as the authorities worked to establish a clear plan of action and mobilize the necessary resources to contain the disaster. The response effort was complicated by the dangerous levels of radiation, which posed a significant risk to those involved in the response effort. The response effort was a massive operation, involving thousands of people from various agencies and organizations. The firefighters and soldiers who worked on the front lines of the response effort were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation, and many of them suffered from long-term health effects as a result. Despite the risks and challenges, the response effort was ultimately successful in preventing a catastrophic spread of radiation. The efforts of those involved in the response effort were heroic and often harrowing, 
as they worked tirelessly to control the blaze and prevent further damage. In the aftermath of the disaster, significant efforts were made to improve safety and regulation in the nuclear industry. The government introduced new regulations and safety protocols and established an independent regulatory agency to oversee the country's nuclear industry. The initial response to the Chernobyl disaster was a critical moment in the management of the disaster. The response effort was hampered by a lack of clear communication and coordination, but ultimately successful in preventing a catastrophic spread of radiation. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, and the disaster remains a stark reminder of the importance of effective safety protocols and emergency response measures in the nuclear industry. In summary, the initial response to the Chernobyl disaster was a critical moment in the management of the disaster. The response effort was complicated by a lack of clear communication and coordination, but ultimately successful in preventing a catastrophic spread of radiation. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. The Chernobyl disaster was not just a technical failure of the RBMK reactor, but also a catastrophic event that required a significant effort to contain the damage and prevent further radiation leaks. The immediate response to the disaster was critical, but the ongoing effort to contain the damage was equally important in preventing a catastrophic spread of radiation. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant had released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere, posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The initial response effort had been focused on controlling the blaze and preventing further damage, but the ongoing effort to contain the damage was just as critical. The authorities established an exclusion zone around the power plant, evacuating all residents within a 30-kilometer radius. The exclusion zone was a critical component of the effort to contain the damage, as it prevented further exposure to radiation. Furthermore, the authorities worked tirelessly to try to prevent further radiation leaks from the damaged reactor. The damaged reactor was covered with a temporary structure, called the sarcophagus, to prevent further leaks of radiation into the atmosphere. The sarcophagus was a massive engineering feat and it required a significant effort to construct. The structure was designed to contain the damaged reactor and prevent further radiation leaks, but it was a temporary solution, and it was known that the sarcophagus would eventually need to be replaced. In the years following the disaster, efforts were made to construct a new containment structure called the New Safe Confinement. The New Safe Confinement was a state-of-the-art structure designed to provide a permanent solution to the problem of containing the damaged reactor. The construction of the new safe confinement was a massive engineering feat, and it required a significant effort to construct. The structure was designed to be strong enough to withstand natural disasters and other potential hazards, and it was equipped with advanced technology to monitor the radiation levels inside the containment structure. The effort to contain the damage at Chernobyl was critical in preventing a catastrophic spread of radiation. The exclusion zone prevented further exposure to radiation, and the sarcophagus and new safe confinement structures prevented further leaks of radiation from the damaged reactor. The effort to contain the damage was not without its challenges. The initial response effort was hampered by a lack of clear communication and coordination, and the ongoing effort to construct the containment structures was complicated by the dangerous levels of radiation in the area. However, the determination and perseverance of those involved in the effort to contain the damage were remarkable. The construction of the new safe confinement structure was a testament to the engineering and technological expertise of those involved in the effort. In summary, the effort to contain the damage at Chernobyl was critical in preventing a catastrophic spread of radiation. The exclusion zone, sarcophagus, and new safe confinement structures prevented further exposure to radiation and prevented further leaks of radiation from the damaged reactor. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises.
The Chernobyl disaster was not just a technical failure of the RBMK reactor, but also a catastrophic event that required a thorough assessment of the damage and a search for answers in the wake of the disaster. The scale of the disaster was unprecedented, and the authorities were faced with the daunting task of trying to understand what had gone wrong and how to prevent a similar disaster from happening again. The initial response to the disaster had been focused on controlling the blaze and preventing further damage, but as the scale of the disaster became clear, attention turned to assessing the damage and understanding the causes of the explosion. Scientists and engineers were dispatched to the site to try to understand the extent of the damage and the causes of the explosion. The investigation was complicated by the dangerous levels of radiation in the area, and those involved in the investigation were forced to work in hazardous conditions. The investigation revealed a number of critical flaws in the design and operation of the RBMK reactor. The design of the reactor was known to be inherently unstable and the safety systems in place were inadequate to prevent a catastrophic failure. Furthermore, there were significant problems with the culture of safety within the nuclear industry in the Soviet Union. The drive to meet production targets had led to a lack of attention to safety, and there was a culture of secrecy and cover-up that prevented the sharing of critical information about safety issues. The investigation into the Chernobyl disaster was not just focused on understanding the technical causes of the explosion, but also on assessing the human impact of the disaster. The health consequences of radiation exposure were significant, and those who had been exposed to radiation were in need of medical treatment and support. Furthermore, there was a significant impact on the environment and the local economy. The contamination of the soil, water, and food in the surrounding area had a devastating impact on the local agricultural industry, and the effects of the disaster were felt for years to come. The search for answers in the wake of the disaster was not just focused on understanding what had gone wrong, but also on preventing a similar disaster from happening again. The lessons of Chernobyl were learned, and significant efforts were made to improve safety and regulation in the nuclear industry. New safety protocols and regulations were introduced, and the authorities worked to improve the culture of safety within the nuclear industry. The disaster also led to greater international cooperation on nuclear safety, as countries worked together to share information and best practices to prevent similar disasters from happening in the future. In summary, the search for answers in the wake of the Chernobyl disaster was a critical component of the disaster response. The investigation revealed critical flaws in the design and operation of the RBMK reactor, and it highlighted the need for greater attention to safety in the nuclear industry. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. The Chernobyl disaster was not just a technical failure of the RBMK reactor, but also a catastrophic event that required a significant effort to manage the chaos that ensued. The disaster posed significant challenges to communication and coordination, and these challenges were compounded by the dangerous levels of radiation in the area. The initial response to the disaster was hampered by a lack of clear communication and coordination. The authorities were slow to respond to the scale of the disaster, and there was a sense of confusion and uncertainty about the best course of action. Furthermore, there was a culture of secrecy and cover-up within the Soviet government that hindered the flow of critical information about the disaster. The authorities were slow to share information about the scale of the disaster and the potential risks to the public, leading to a sense of distrust and confusion among the affected population. The challenges of communication and coordination were further compounded by the dangerous levels of radiation in the area. The response effort was led by emergency workers and soldiers who were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation, and many of them suffered from long-term health effects as a result. The dangerous conditions in the area also made it difficult to coordinate the response effort. The infrastructure in the surrounding area was damaged and the roads were often impassable, making it challenging to transport supplies and equipment to the site of the disaster. 
Despite these challenges, those involved in the response effort worked tirelessly to try to manage the chaos that ensued. The response effort involved thousands of people from various agencies and organizations, and the effort to coordinate their activities was a significant challenge. The authorities established a special commission to oversee the disaster response, and the military was called in to assist with the response effort. The establishment of clear protocols and procedures for dealing with the disaster helped to improve communication and coordination, and the response effort became more effective over time. The challenges of communication and coordination in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster were significant, but they were not insurmountable. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, and significant efforts have been made to improve safety and regulation in the nuclear industry. New safety protocols and regulations have been introduced, and the culture of safety within the nuclear industry has improved significantly. The disaster also led to greater international cooperation on nuclear safety, as countries work together to share information and best practices to prevent similar disasters from happening in the future. In summary, coping with the chaos in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a significant challenge. The challenges of communication and coordination were compounded by the dangerous levels of radiation in the area, but those involved in the response effort worked tirelessly to manage the chaos and improve the response effort over time. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of effective communication and coordination in the face of potential crises. The Chernobyl disaster was not just a technical failure of the RBMK reactor, but also a catastrophic event that took a significant human toll. The disaster resulted in casualties, injuries, and a lasting emotional impact on those who were affected by it. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The immediate response effort was focused on controlling the blaze and preventing further damage, but the long-term impact of the disaster on human health was significant. The health consequences of radiation exposure were severe and those who had been exposed to radiation were in need of medical treatment and support. The exposure to radiation had caused acute radiation sickness, a potentially fatal condition that requires immediate medical attention. Furthermore, there was a significant emotional toll on those who were affected by the disaster. The residents of the nearby town of Pripyat were forced to evacuate their homes, leaving behind their possessions and their way of life. The emotional trauma of the evacuation and the uncertainty of the future were significant, and many people struggled to come to terms with the impact of the disaster on their lives. The effort to provide medical treatment and support to those affected by the disaster was a massive operation. The hospitals in the surrounding area were quickly overwhelmed with patients, and significant efforts were made to transfer patients to hospitals outside the affected area. The treatment of radiation sickness was complicated by the dangerous levels of radiation in the area. The medical staff who treated the patients were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation, and many of them suffered from long-term health effects as a result. Despite the risks and challenges, the medical response effort was remarkable. The medical staff worked tirelessly to treat the patients and significant resources were dedicated to providing medical support and assistance to those affected by the disaster. In the years following the disaster, efforts were made to address the long-term impact of the disaster on human health. The authorities established a program to monitor the health of those who had been exposed to radiation, and significant resources were dedicated to providing medical support and assistance to those affected by the disaster. Furthermore, Efforts were made to address the emotional impact of the disaster on those who were affected by it. Psychologists and counselors were dispatched to the affected area to provide emotional support to those who had been traumatized by the disaster. In summary, the human toll of the Chernobyl disaster was significant. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant had resulted in casualties, injuries, and a lasting emotional impact on those who were affected by it. The effort to provide medical treatment and support to those affected by the disaster 
was a massive operation, and significant resources were dedicated to addressing the long-term impact of the disaster on human health. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. Chapter 4, The Evacuation, The Rapid and Chaotic Flight from Pripyat The decision to evacuate the town of Pripyat in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a difficult one, and it was influenced by a number of factors and challenges. The evacuation was a critical component of the response effort, as it was necessary to protect the health and safety of the residents of the town. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere, posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The authorities were forced to make a difficult decision about whether to evacuate the town of Pripyat, which was located just a few kilometers from the power plant. The decision to evacuate was influenced by a number of factors. The high levels of radiation in the area made it clear that the health and safety of the residents of Pripyat were at risk, and there was a concern that the radiation levels could continue to rise if the situation at the power plant was not brought under control. Furthermore, there were logistical challenges to consider in the decision to evacuate. The town of Pripyat was home to more than 50,000 people, and it was necessary to provide transportation and housing for all of them. The decision to evacuate was not without its challenges. The authorities were faced with a difficult balancing act, as they had to balance the need to protect the health and safety of the residents of Pripyat with the logistical challenges of evacuating such a large population. The evacuation effort was a massive operation, and it required significant resources and coordination. Buses and other forms of transportation were dispatched to the town to evacuate the residents, and efforts were made to provide temporary housing for those who were displaced. The evacuation effort was not without its challenges. The logistical challenges of transporting and housing such a large population were significant, and there was a concern that the evacuees would be exposed to dangerous levels of radiation during the evacuation. Furthermore, the emotional toll of the evacuation was significant. The residents of Pripyat were forced to abandon their homes and their way of life, and many of them struggled to come to terms with the impact of the disaster on their lives. In the years following the disaster, efforts were made to address the long-term impact of the evacuation on the residents of Pripyat. The authorities established a program to provide support and assistance to those who had been displaced by the disaster and significant resources were dedicated to providing emotional and psychological support to those who had been traumatized by the evacuation. In summary, the decision to evacuate the town of Pripyat in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a difficult one, influenced by a number of factors and challenges. The evacuation was a critical component of the response effort, necessary to protect the health and safety of the residents of the town. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. The decision to evacuate the town of Pripyat in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a difficult and complicated one. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant had released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The authorities faced a difficult decision about whether to evacuate the town of Pripyat, which was located just a few kilometers from the power plant. The decision was influenced by a number of factors and challenges, including the high levels of radiation in the area and the logistical challenges of evacuating such a large population. The health risks associated with radiation exposure were significant, and there was a concern that the radiation levels could continue to rise if the situation at the power plant was not brought under control. The authorities had to consider the potential health risks to the residents of Pripyat, as well as the risk of exposing emergency workers and other responders to dangerous levels of radiation. The decision to evacuate 
was also complicated by the logistical challenges of transporting and housing such a large population. Pripyat was home to more than 50,000 people, and it was necessary to provide transportation and temporary housing for all of them. The logistics of the evacuation effort were significant. Buses and other forms of transportation were dispatched to the town to evacuate the residents, and efforts were made to provide temporary housing for those who were displaced. The emotional toll of the evacuation was significant as well. The residents of Pripyat were forced to abandon their homes and their way of life, and many of them struggled to come to terms with the impact of the disaster on their lives. Furthermore, the decision to evacuate was complicated by the political and cultural factors at play in the Soviet Union at the time. There was a culture of secrecy and cover-up within the Soviet government that hindered the flow of critical information about the disaster, and there was a concern that the decision to evacuate could be seen as a sign of weakness. Despite these challenges, the decision to evacuate was ultimately made, and significant resources were dedicated to the evacuation effort. The authorities worked to transport and house the displaced residents, and efforts were made to provide medical and emotional support to those affected by the disaster. In the years following the disaster, efforts were made to address the long-term impact of the evacuation on the residents of Pripyat. The authorities established a program to provide support and assistance to those who had been displaced by the disaster, and significant resources were dedicated to providing emotional and psychological support to those who had been traumatized by the evacuation. In summary, the decision to evacuate the town of Pripyat in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a difficult and complicated one, influenced by a number of factors and challenges. The health risks associated with radiation exposure and the logistical challenges of evacuating such a large population were significant, and the emotional toll of the evacuation was significant as well. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. The evacuation of the town of Pripyat in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a challenging and dangerous journey. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant had released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere, posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The evacuation effort was a massive operation, and it required significant resources and coordination. Buses and other forms of transportation were dispatched to the town to evacuate the residents, and efforts were made to provide temporary housing for those who were displaced. However, the journey out of Pripyat was not without its challenges and dangers. The high levels of radiation in the area made it necessary for those involved in the evacuation effort to take significant precautions to protect themselves and others. The journey out of Pripyat was complicated by the logistical challenges of transporting such a large population. The roads in the area were damaged and the infrastructure was compromised, making it difficult to transport people and supplies to who and from the town. Furthermore, the journey out of Pripyat was complicated by the health risks associated with radiation exposure. The evacuees were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation, and there was a concern that the exposure could cause long-term health problems. The evacuation effort was led by emergency workers and soldiers who were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation, and many of them suffered from long-term health effects as a result. Despite the risks, those involved in the evacuation effort worked tirelessly to transport the residents of Pripyat to safety. The evacuation effort was complicated by the emotional toll of the journey out of Pripyat. The residents of the town were forced to abandon their homes and their way of life, and the uncertainty of the future was significant. The evacuees were traumatized by the experience, and many struggled to come to terms with the impact of the disaster on their lives. In the years following the disaster, efforts were made to address the long-term impact of the evacuation on the residents of Pripyat. The authorities established a program to provide support and assistance to those who had been displaced by the disaster, and significant resources were dedicated to providing emotional and psychological support to those who had been traumatized by the evacuation. In summary, 
the journey out of Pripyat in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a challenging and dangerous one, complicated by the logistical challenges of transporting such a large population, the health risks associated with radiation exposure, and the emotional toll of the experience. Despite these challenges, those involved in the evacuation effort worked tirelessly to transport the residents of Pripyat to safety. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. The evacuation of the town of Pripyat in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a traumatic event that left many people displaced and struggling to cope with the loss of their homes and way of life. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant had released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere, posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The decision to evacuate the town was a difficult one, but it was necessary to protect the health and safety of the residents. However, the emotional toll of the evacuation was significant. The residents of Pripyat were forced to abandon their homes and their way of life, and the uncertainty of the future was significant. The emotional trauma of the evacuation was compounded by the health risks associated with radiation exposure. The evacuees were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation during the evacuation, and there was a concern that the exposure could cause long-term health problems. Furthermore, the logistics of the evacuation effort were significant, and the evacuees were forced to leave their possessions and personal belongings behind. This added to the sense of displacement and loss that many people experienced. The emotional trauma of the evacuation was significant, and many people struggled to come to terms with the impact of the disaster on their lives. The evacuees were traumatized by the experience, and many suffered from anxiety, depression, and other mental health issues in the aftermath of the disaster. Efforts were made to provide support and assistance to those who had been displaced by the disaster. The authorities established a program to provide temporary housing for the evacuees, and significant resources were dedicated to providing emotional and psychological support to those who had been traumatized by the evacuation. Despite these efforts, the emotional trauma of the evacuation continued to have a significant impact on those affected by the disaster. The loss of their homes and possessions, as well as the uncertainty of the future, were significant challenges that many people struggled to overcome. In the years following the disaster, efforts were made to address the long-term impact of the evacuation on the residents of Pripyat. The authorities established a program to provide support and assistance to those who had been displaced by the disaster, and significant resources were dedicated to providing emotional and psychological support to those who had been traumatized by the evacuation. In summary, the emotional trauma of the evacuation of Pripyat in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was significant. The residents of the town were forced to abandon their homes and their way of life, and the loss of their possessions and personal belongings added to the sense of displacement and loss. The evacuees were traumatized by the experience, and many struggled to come to terms with the impact of the disaster on their lives. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. The evacuation of the town of Pripyat in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a traumatic event that left many people displaced and struggling to cope with the loss of their homes and way of life. In the years following the disaster, former residents have reflected on the evacuation and its impact on their lives. For many former residents, the evacuation was a traumatic event that left them with lasting emotional scars. They spoke of the sense of displacement and loss that they felt, and the uncertainty of the future that the evacuation brought. Despite the emotional trauma of the evacuation, many former residents expressed gratitude for the efforts of the authorities and emergency responders who worked tirelessly to transport them to safety. They recognized the challenges and dangers that were involved in the evacuation effort, and they were grateful for the support and assistance that they received in the aftermath of the disaster. However, for some former residents, the evacuation had a significant impact on their health and well-being. 
Many suffered from long-term health effects as a result of their exposure to radiation during the evacuation, and they spoke of the challenges of coping with these health issues in the years that followed. The emotional toll of the evacuation was compounded by the loss of their homes and possessions. Many former residents spoke of the sense of loss that they felt and the challenges of rebuilding their lives in the aftermath of the disaster. Despite these challenges, many former residents have found ways to move forward and rebuild their lives in the years since the disaster. They have formed strong communities with other former residents, and they have worked to preserve the memory of their former home and way of life. Efforts have been made to provide support and assistance to those who were affected by the disaster. The authorities established a program to provide temporary housing for the evacuees, and significant resources were dedicated to providing emotional and psychological support to those who had been traumatized by the evacuation. In summary, the evacuation of Pripyat in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster was a traumatic event that had a significant impact on the lives of those affected by the disaster. Former residents have reflected on the emotional toll of the evacuation and the challenges of coping with the loss of their homes and possessions. However, they have also expressed gratitude for the efforts of the authorities and emergency responders who worked to transport them to safety, and they have found ways to rebuild their lives in the years since the disaster. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. Chapter 5, The Emergency Response, The Bravery of the First Responders in the Face of Danger The Chernobyl disaster was a catastrophic event that required an immediate response from the authorities and emergency responders. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The immediate response to the disaster was a massive operation that involved emergency responders, firefighters, and soldiers. The authorities worked quickly to contain the damage and prevent further radiation leaks from the damaged reactor. The first step taken to respond to the disaster was to evacuate the workers at the power plant and the surrounding area. Emergency responders worked to contain the damage and prevent further radiation leaks from the damaged reactor. Efforts were made to provide medical treatment to those who had been exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. Medical personnel were dispatched to the area, and efforts were made to provide treatment to those who had been affected by the radiation exposure. Furthermore, efforts were made to limit the spread of the radioactive material by controlling the air and water in the surrounding area. The authorities worked to prevent the radioactive material from contaminating the local water supply, and efforts were made to limit the spread of radioactive particles in the air. The immediate response to the disaster was complicated by the political and cultural factors at play in the Soviet Union at the time. There was a culture of secrecy and cover-up within the Soviet government that hindered the flow of critical information about the disaster, and there was a concern that the disaster could be seen as a sign of weakness. Despite these challenges, the authorities worked tirelessly to respond to the disaster and contain the damage. The first responders and emergency personnel put their lives on the line to protect the health and safety of those affected by the disaster. In the years following the disaster, efforts were made to address the long-term impact of the radiation exposure on those affected by the disaster. The authorities established a program to provide support and assistance to those who had been exposed to radiation, and significant resources were dedicated to providing medical treatment and monitoring to those affected by the disaster. In summary, the immediate response to the Chernobyl disaster was a massive operation that involved emergency responders, firefighters, and soldiers. The authorities worked quickly to contain the damage and prevent further radiation leaks from the damaged reactor. Despite the challenges posed by the political and cultural factors at play in the Soviet Union at the time, the first responders and emergency personnel worked tirelessly to protect the health and safety of those affected by the disaster. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, 
but the disaster remains a tragic reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. The Chernobyl disaster was a catastrophic event that required an immediate response from the authorities and emergency responders. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The firefighters, who responded to the disaster, were among the bravest and most courageous individuals involved in the response effort. They put their lives on the line to contain the blaze and prevent further radiation leaks from the damaged reactor. The firefighters, who responded to the disaster, were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation as they worked to contain the blaze. They worked tirelessly to extinguish the fire, often working in difficult and dangerous conditions. Despite the risks, the firefighters worked tirelessly to contain the blaze and prevent further radiation leaks. They worked long hours in hazardous conditions, and many suffered from long-term health effects as a result of their exposure to radiation during the response effort. The firefighters who responded to the disaster were true heroes, and their efforts to contain the blaze and prevent further radiation leaks saved countless lives. However, their efforts were not without tragedy. Many firefighters lost their lives or suffered from long-term health effects as a result of their exposure to radiation during the response effort. Efforts were made to provide support and assistance to the firefighters who had been affected by the disaster. The authorities established a program to provide medical treatment and monitoring to those affected by the disaster, and significant resources were dedicated to providing emotional and psychological support to those who had been traumatized by the response effort. In the years following the disaster, efforts were made to honor the bravery and sacrifice of the firefighters who responded to the disaster. Memorials were established to commemorate their efforts, and efforts were made to ensure that their sacrifices were not forgotten. In summary, the firefighters who responded to the Chernobyl disaster were among the bravest and most courageous individuals involved in the response effort. They put their lives on the line to contain the blaze and prevent further radiation leaks from the damaged reactor. Despite the risks, they worked tirelessly to protect the health and safety of those affected by the disaster. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the bravery and sacrifice of the firefighters who responded to the disaster will always be remembered. The Chernobyl disaster was a catastrophic event that required an immediate response from the authorities and emergency responders. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere, posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The individuals who worked to clean up the damage and control the radiation were among the bravest and most heroic individuals involved in the response effort. They put their lives on the line to protect the health and safety of those affected by the disaster, and they worked tirelessly to clean up the damage caused by the explosion. The individuals who worked to clean up the damage and control the radiation were known as the liquidators. They were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation as they worked to clean up the contaminated area often working in difficult and dangerous conditions. Despite the risks, the liquidators worked tirelessly to clean up the damage caused by the explosion and prevent further contamination. They worked long hours in hazardous conditions, and many suffered from long-term health effects as a result of their exposure to radiation during the cleanup effort. The liquidators who responded to the disaster were true heroes, and their efforts to clean up the contaminated area and prevent further contamination saved countless lives. However, their efforts were not without tragedy. Many liquidators lost their lives or suffered from long-term health effects as a result of their exposure to radiation during the cleanup effort. Efforts were made to provide support and assistance to the liquidators who had been affected by the disaster. The authorities established a program to provide medical treatment and monitoring to those affected by the disaster, and significant resources were dedicated to providing emotional and psychological support to those who had been traumatized by the cleanup effort. In the years following the disaster, efforts were made to honor the bravery and sacrifice of the liquidators 
who worked to clean up the damage and control the radiation. Memorials were established to commemorate their efforts, and efforts were made to ensure that their sacrifices were not forgotten. In summary, the liquidators who worked to clean up the damage and control the radiation at Chernobyl were among the bravest and most heroic individuals involved in the response effort. They put their lives on the line to protect the health and safety of those affected by the disaster, and they worked tirelessly to clean up the damage caused by the explosion. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the bravery and sacrifice of the liquidators who worked to clean up the damage and control the radiation will always be remembered. The Chernobyl disaster was a catastrophic event that required an immediate response from the authorities and emergency responders. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere, posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The medical teams who responded to the disaster were among the bravest and most dedicated individuals involved in the response effort. They put their lives on the line to treat the injured and sick, often working in difficult and dangerous conditions. The medical teams who responded to the disaster were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation as they worked to treat those affected by the disaster. They worked tirelessly to provide medical treatment to those who had been affected by the radiation exposure, often working in hazardous conditions. Despite the risks, the medical teams worked tirelessly to provide medical treatment to those affected by the disaster. They worked long hours in hazardous conditions, and many suffered from long-term health effects as a result of their exposure to radiation during the response effort. The medical teams who responded to the disaster were true heroes, and their efforts to treat the injured and sick saved countless lives. However, their efforts were not without tragedy. Many medical workers lost their lives or suffered from long-term health effects as a result of their exposure to radiation during the response effort. Efforts were made to provide support and assistance to the medical teams who had been affected by the disaster. The authorities established a program to provide medical treatment and monitoring to those affected by the disaster, and significant resources were dedicated to providing emotional and psychological support to those who had been traumatized by the response effort. In the years following the disaster, efforts were made to honor the bravery and sacrifice of the medical teams who responded to the disaster. Memorials were established to commemorate their efforts, and efforts were made to ensure that their sacrifices were not forgotten. In summary, the medical teams who responded to the Chernobyl disaster were among the bravest and most dedicated individuals involved in the response effort. They put their lives on the line to treat the injured and sick, often working in difficult and dangerous conditions. The lessons of Chernobyl have been learned, but the bravery and sacrifice of the medical teams who responded to the disaster will always be remembered. Their selfless dedication to saving lives in the face of danger is a testament to the best of humanity. The Chernobyl disaster was a catastrophic event that required an immediate response from the authorities and emergency responders. The explosion at the Chernobyl power plant released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The first responders who rushed to the scene were among the bravest and most heroic individuals involved in the response effort. They put their lives on the line to protect the health and safety of those affected by the disaster, and their efforts to contain the damage and prevent further radiation leaks saved countless lives. The firefighters, medical teams, and other emergency responders who rushed to the scene were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation as they worked to contain the damage and prevent further contamination. They worked tirelessly to protect the health and safety of those affected by the disaster, often working in difficult and dangerous conditions. Despite the risks, the first responders worked tirelessly to contain the damage and prevent further radiation leaks. They worked long hours in hazardous conditions, and many suffered from long-term health effects as a result of their exposure to radiation during the response effort. The legacy of the first responders who responded to the Chernobyl disaster is one of bravery and selflessness. They put their lives on the line to protect the health and safety of those affected by the disaster, 
and their efforts to contain the damage and prevent further radiation leaks were critical to the overall response effort. The lessons learned from the Chernobyl disaster have been applied to future disasters, and the legacy of the first responders who responded to the disaster continues to impact emergency response efforts today. The bravery and selflessness of the first responders serve as an inspiration to future generations, and their legacy serves as a reminder of the importance of taking potential risks seriously and responding effectively to potential crises. Efforts have been made to honor the bravery and sacrifice of the first responders who responded to the disaster. Memorials have been established to commemorate their efforts, and efforts have been made to ensure that their sacrifices are not forgotten. In summary, the first responders who responded to the Chernobyl disaster were among the bravest and most heroic individuals involved in the response effort. They put their lives on the line to protect the health and safety of those affected by the disaster, and their efforts to contain the damage and prevent further radiation leaks saved countless lives. The legacy of the first responders who responded to the disaster continues to impact emergency response efforts today and their bravery and selflessness serve as an inspiration to future generations. Their sacrifice and dedication to saving lives in the face of danger will always be remembered as a testament to the best of humanity. Chapter 6, The Fallout, The Immediate Health Effects of the Radiation Exposure Radiation exposure is a serious health risk that can have significant long-term health effects. It is important to understand the basics of radiation exposure and its health effects in order to effectively mitigate its risks. Radiation exposure occurs when an individual is exposed to ionizing radiation, which is a form of energy that is capable of damaging the DNA in cells. Ionizing radiation can come from a variety of sources, including medical imaging procedures, nuclear power plants, and environmental sources. The health effects of radiation exposure depend on the amount of radiation an individual is exposed to, as well as the length of exposure time. In general, radiation exposure can cause damage to DNA in cells, which can lead to the development of cancer and other serious health problems. The most common health effects of radiation exposure are acute radiation syndrome and long-term radiation effects. Acute radiation syndrome is a serious condition that can occur when an individual is exposed to high levels of radiation over a short period of time. Symptoms of acute radiation syndrome include nausea, vomiting, skin burns, and other serious health problems. Long-term radiation effects can occur when an individual is exposed to low levels of radiation over a long period of time. Long-term radiation effects can include an increased risk of cancer, birth defects, and other serious health problems. Efforts have been made to reduce the risks of radiation exposure, including the development of safety protocols and regulations to reduce exposure to radiation in the workplace and in medical settings. Additionally, radiation monitoring and tracking programs have been established to monitor exposure levels and provide early detection and intervention when necessary. In order to effectively mitigate the risks of radiation exposure, it is important to understand the basics of radiation exposure and its health effects. This includes understanding the sources of radiation, the ways in which radiation exposure can occur, and the health effects of radiation exposure. In summary, radiation exposure is a serious health risk that can have significant long-term health effects. It is important to understand the basics of radiation exposure and its health effects in order to effectively mitigate its risks. Efforts have been made to reduce the risks of radiation exposure, including the development of safety protocols and regulations to reduce exposure to radiation in the workplace and in medical settings. By understanding the risks of radiation exposure and taking steps to reduce exposure, we can work to protect the health and safety of individuals and communities. The Chernobyl disaster was a catastrophic event that released large amounts of radioactive material into the environment, posing a significant risk to the health and safety of those living in the surrounding area. The first people to experience the effects of radiation sickness were those who were closest to the explosion at the Chernobyl power plant. The initial exposures 
to radiation occurred in the immediate aftermath of the explosion. The firefighters, who responded to the initial fire at the power plant, were among the first to be exposed to high levels of radiation. They were not initially aware of the severity of the situation and were not wearing adequate protective gear, which led to a high level of radiation exposure. As the situation continued to deteriorate, medical teams and other emergency responders were also exposed to dangerous levels of radiation as they worked to contain the damage and prevent further contamination. Many of these individuals suffered from acute radiation sickness, which is a serious condition that can occur when an individual is exposed to high levels of radiation over a short period of time. Symptoms of acute radiation sickness can include nausea, vomiting, skin burns, and other serious health problems. Those who were exposed to high levels of radiation also had an increased risk of developing cancer and other long-term health problems. Efforts were made to provide medical treatment to those who had been exposed to high levels of radiation. However, many of those who were exposed to high levels of radiation suffered from long-term health effects, including an increased risk of developing cancer. The initial exposures to radiation were a significant factor in the overall impact of the Chernobyl disaster. The first responders who were exposed to high levels of radiation were among the bravest and most heroic individuals involved in the response effort, putting their lives on the line to protect the health and safety of those affected by the disaster. The lessons learned from the initial exposures to radiation have been applied to future disasters, with greater emphasis placed on ensuring that emergency responders have adequate protective gear and are aware of the potential risks associated with radiation exposure. In summary, the initial exposures to radiation at the Chernobyl power plant were a significant factor in the overall impact of the disaster. The first responders who were exposed to high levels of radiation were among the bravest and most heroic individuals involved in the response effort, putting their lives on the line to protect the health and safety of those affected by the disaster. The lessons learned from the initial exposures to radiation have been applied to future disasters, with greater emphasis placed on ensuring that emergency responders have adequate protective gear and are aware of the potential risks associated with radiation exposure. The medical response to the Chernobyl disaster was critical to the overall response effort. The medical teams who responded to the disaster were among the bravest and most dedicated individuals involved in the response effort, working tirelessly to treat those who had been affected by the radiation exposure. The medical response to the disaster focused primarily on treating those who had been exposed to high levels of radiation and were suffering from radiation sickness. Radiation sickness is a serious condition that can occur when an individual is exposed to high levels of radiation over a short period of time. Symptoms of radiation sickness can include nausea, vomiting, skin burns, and other serious health problems. Those who are exposed to high levels of radiation also have an increased risk of developing cancer and other long-term health problems. The medical response to the disaster included a variety of treatments designed to alleviate the symptoms of radiation sickness and minimize the long-term health effects of radiation exposure. This included administering medications to reduce nausea and vomiting, providing supportive care to manage pain and other symptoms, and monitoring the health of those who had been exposed to high levels of radiation. In addition to treating radiation sickness, the medical response to the disaster also focused on treating other injuries and health problems that were not directly related to radiation exposure. This included treating burns, injuries from the explosion, and other medical conditions that were exacerbated by the disaster. Efforts were made to provide medical treatment to those who had been affected by the disaster, but the medical response was often hampered by the difficult conditions and high levels of radiation in the surrounding area. Medical personnel often worked in hazardous conditions, putting their own health at risk in order to provide care to those in need. The medical response to the Chernobyl disaster was critical to the overall response effort. The medical teams who responded to the disaster were among the bravest and most dedicated individuals involved in the response effort, 
working tirelessly to treat those who had been affected by the radiation exposure. In summary, the medical response to the Chernobyl disaster was critical to the overall response effort. The medical teams who responded to the disaster were among the bravest and most dedicated individuals involved in the response effort, working tirelessly to treat those who had been affected by the radiation exposure. The medical response to the disaster focused primarily on treating those who had been exposed to high levels of radiation and were suffering from radiation sickness, but also included treating other injuries and health problems that were not directly related to radiation exposure. The bravery and selflessness of the medical teams who responded to the disaster will always be remembered as a testament to the best of humanity. The Chernobyl disaster was a catastrophic event that had significant health effects on those who were exposed to the radiation released into the environment. The immediate health effects of the disaster were measured in a variety of ways, including tracking the number of individuals who suffered from radiation sickness and other health problems. One of the most significant immediate health effects of the Chernobyl disaster was the number of individuals who suffered from acute radiation sickness. Acute radiation sickness is a serious condition that can occur when an individual is exposed to high levels of radiation over a short period of time. Symptoms of acute radiation sickness can include nausea, vomiting, skin burns, and other serious health problems. In the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, a significant number of individuals were diagnosed with acute radiation sickness. The exact number of individuals who suffered from acute radiation sickness is difficult to determine, but estimates suggest that thousands of individuals may have been affected. In addition to acute radiation sickness, the immediate health effects of the Chernobyl disaster also included an increased risk of developing cancer and other long-term health problems. Those who were exposed to high levels of radiation had an increased risk of developing a variety of cancers, including thyroid cancer, leukemia, and other types of cancer. Efforts were made to track the number of individuals who developed cancer and other long-term health problems as a result of the Chernobyl disaster. These efforts were complicated by the fact that cancer can take years or even decades to develop, making it difficult to determine the exact number of individuals who were affected. In addition to tracking the number of individuals who suffered from radiation sickness and other health problems, efforts were also made to track the amount of radiation released into the environment. This was done in order to assess the overall impact of the disaster on the environment and on the health of those living in the surrounding area. Efforts were also made to monitor the health of those who were exposed to radiation in the aftermath of the disaster. This included providing medical treatment to those who were affected by radiation exposure, as well as monitoring the health of those who may have been exposed to lower levels of radiation. In summary, the immediate health effects of the Chernobyl disaster were significant and far-reaching. The number of individuals who suffered from acute radiation sickness was significant, and efforts were made to track the number of individuals who developed cancer and other long-term health problems as a result of the disaster. The bravery and selflessness of the medical teams who responded to the disaster will always be remembered as a testament to the best of humanity. By tracking the immediate health effects of the Chernobyl disaster, we can work to prevent similar disasters in the future and protect the health and safety of individuals and communities. The emotional and psychological impact of radiation exposure is a significant and often overlooked aspect of the Chernobyl disaster. Those who were exposed to radiation, whether they suffered from acute radiation sickness or not, often experienced significant emotional and psychological distress as a result of the uncertainty and fear associated with the potential long-term health effects of radiation exposure. One of the most significant emotional and psychological impacts of radiation exposure is the fear of developing cancer or other long-term health problems. Those who were exposed to high levels of radiation often experienced a sense of uncertainty and helplessness, not knowing if or when they might develop cancer or other health problems as a result of their exposure. 
In addition to fear and uncertainty, those who were exposed to radiation also experienced a range of other emotional and psychological symptoms. These can include depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and other mental health conditions. The emotional and psychological impact of radiation exposure was particularly significant for those who were forced to evacuate their homes and leave behind their communities and way of life. The uncertainty and sense of loss associated with displacement and relocation can be particularly challenging for individuals and communities and can exacerbate existing mental health conditions. Efforts were made to provide mental health support to those who were affected by the Chernobyl disaster, including providing counseling and other support services to individuals and communities affected by the disaster. However, the stigma associated with mental health conditions can make it difficult for individuals to seek and receive the support they need. In the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, there was also a significant effort to study the long-term health effects of radiation exposure and to develop strategies to minimize the potential health risks associated with exposure. This included efforts to develop protective gear for emergency responders and to develop protocols for responding to future disasters. By better understanding the emotional and psychological impact of radiation exposure, we can work to improve our response to future disasters and to provide better support to those who are affected. This includes efforts to reduce stigma associated with mental health conditions and to improve access to mental health support services. In summary, the emotional and psychological impact of radiation exposure is a significant and often overlooked aspect of the Chernobyl disaster. The fear, uncertainty, and loss associated with radiation exposure can have a significant impact on the mental health and well-being of individuals and communities affected by the disaster. By better understanding and addressing these impacts, we can work to improve our response to future disasters and to provide better support to those who are affected. Chapter 7, The Long-Term Effects, The Lingering Health Consequences of the Chernobyl Disaster. Radiation is a unique and complex health risk that poses significant challenges for those who are exposed to it. Unlike other environmental health risks, such as pollution or toxic chemicals, radiation exposure can have long-term health effects that are difficult to predict and may not manifest for many years or even decades after exposure. Radiation exposure can occur in a variety of ways, including through exposure to natural sources of radiation, such as the sun or soil, as well as through exposure to man-made sources of radiation, such as nuclear reactors or medical equipment. The health risks associated with radiation exposure are complex and depend on a variety of factors, including the type of radiation, the dose and duration of exposure, and the age and health status of the individual exposed. High levels of radiation exposure can cause acute radiation sickness, while lower levels of exposure can increase the risk of developing cancer or other long-term health problems. One of the unique challenges associated with radiation exposure is the fact that radiation can penetrate through barriers and can be difficult to shield against. This means that even small amounts of radiation exposure can be harmful, and that protective gear and other measures may not provide complete protection against radiation exposure. The health effects of radiation exposure can also be influenced by a variety of other factors, including genetics and lifestyle factors. This means that some individuals may be more susceptible to the health effects of radiation exposure than others, and that the overall health risks associated with radiation exposure can be difficult to predict. Efforts have been made to better understand the health risks associated with radiation exposure and to develop strategies to minimize those risks. This includes developing protocols for responding to radiation emergencies and improving safety measures for workers who are exposed to radiation in their jobs. One of the key strategies for minimizing the health risks associated with radiation exposure is to limit exposure to radiation whenever possible. This includes using protective gear and other measures to shield against radiation exposure, as well as minimizing exposure to sources of radiation whenever possible. In summary, 
Radiation is a unique and complex health risk that poses significant challenges for those who are exposed to it. The health risks associated with radiation exposure depend on a variety of factors, including the type of radiation, the dose and duration of exposure, and the age and health status of the individual exposed. Efforts have been made to better understand the health risks associated with radiation exposure and to develop strategies to minimize those risks. By better understanding the nature of radiation and its unique health risks, we can work to minimize the potential health impacts of radiation exposure and protect the health and safety of individuals and communities. The Chernobyl zone is a unique and challenging environment, defined by its proximity to the site of the Chernobyl disaster and the long-term impacts of radiation exposure on the natural environment and those who live and work in the area. Living in proximity to contaminated areas and environments presents a number of unique challenges, including the potential health risks associated with radiation exposure, the need for special protective measures and protocols, and the social and psychological impacts of living in a contaminated environment. One of the most significant challenges associated with living in the Chernobyl zone is the potential health risks associated with radiation exposure. Those who live and work in the area are at risk of exposure to both internal and external sources of radiation, which can have long-term health impacts, including an increased risk of developing cancer and other health problems. To mitigate these risks, individuals living and working in the Chernobyl zone must follow strict protocols and guidelines designed to minimize their exposure to radiation. This includes using protective gear, and following safe handling procedures when working with contaminated materials, as well as monitoring their own health and the health of those around them for signs of radiation exposure. In addition to the physical health risks associated with radiation exposure, living in the Chernobyl zone can also have significant social and psychological impacts. Those who live in the area may experience isolation and stigmatization as a result of the association with the Chernobyl disaster and may face challenges accessing social and support services. Efforts have been made to provide support and services to those living in the Chernobyl zone, including providing mental health support and resources to help individuals and communities cope with the social and psychological impacts of living in a contaminated environment. Despite the challenges associated with living in the Chernobyl zone, Many individuals and communities have remained in the area, either because of a lack of viable alternatives or because of a deep connection to the land and the history of the area. Efforts have also been made to reclaim and restore the natural environment in the Chernobyl zone, including efforts to mitigate the long-term impacts of radiation exposure on wildlife and plant species. These efforts have been met with some success, with the natural environment